sweet. So, um, is this your natural hair color? No. All right, can I ask you to tie it up? Oh, yeah, Thank yeah, you. of course. I'm gonna get you a cap, put you in a shower cap. <laughs> okay. We'll gray you out for the session, just to make sure that anything that's not naturally part of your coloring, we won't interfere with what we're doing. Okay. Okay. So, sorry, this is probably gonna be a funny look. <laughs> and I'll be putting a cape on you as well. <laughs> Is that comfortable? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so, where shall we begin? Shall we begin? I'll probably just explain to you what we'll be doing basically for the next good couple of hours probably. It will be lots of flipping the drapes, uh, but for you to, in order to understand what we're doing with the drapes and how we organize the colors and what we're comparing and how and why. I'm just going to quickly explain to you um, basically about colors a little bit and then the harmony groups that I work with. So colors generally people think of them as sort of like a solid thing like a paint or a pigment and uh, that is kind of correct partially but what most people sort of forget that color is just a reflected light so um, light natural light you know that comes from the sun it's basically a full spectrum light uh, and it's kind of like a whitish color almost pure white um, and it hits surfaces like it hits this drape hits all the surfaces and the surface absorb some of this um, some of this wavelength of light you know the full spectrum and it reflects some of the some of the spectrum back and whatever it reflects back like this wall this drape these these prints here whatever they are reflecting back it's basically the wavelengths that they haven't absorbed so ironically the colors the colors that we see when we see a color is everything that the item is not you know <laughs> all of the oh, wavelengths okay. that it is not because it's reflecting it back so that's kind of like an interesting little thing basically if you think of color space like similar to this globe but it's just not a perfect globe shape it's it's sort of like a, um, a irregular shape but in terms of talking about colors we tend to in this really 3d realm we tend to um, uh, think of the think of their properties in uh, three different dimensions one dimension is the type of hue angle or type of color fa family that is so basically what type of color of the rainbow it is um, aka you know is it red is it yellow is it green is it blue so that's the color family or the or the um, the color type but let's say we pick one hue angle or one color family yellow here um, what's really interesting here is that this is all the same wavelength of light being reflected off of this surface but these are not all the same looking color to us right that's because the same wavelength of light can be reflected with different intensities so right here we've got full intensity where it looks like let's say pure pigment uh, but sometimes we can have lighter intensities darker intensities or just less and less colorful intensities so basically if we were a painter and think in terms of pigment this would be a case of uh, adding a little bit of white to a pure pigment adding a little bit of black to a pure pigment or adding gray aka both black and white you know to not to change the darkness level but the, but just to get the color uh, grayer and grayer and grayer until we reach a complete grayscale so and then what's really interesting here as well is that if i told you think of dark yellow you wouldn't necessarily necessarily think of olive green would you yeah. <laughs> like people think oh that's a green color when you look at them out yeah. of context right but it's just a dark intensity of yellow that's why dark yellow doesn't actually exist in our vocabulary and in our mind because we named it wrong we named it green but if oh. we're looking at green <laughs> dark green you know it's a different it's a different color it's not olive is it so olives are yellow <laughs> Whoa. just a little interesting thing okay Ooh. sorry okay so that's basically the three dimensions of color so it's the type of color family it is and how light or dark it is and how colorful or gray it is right so mm -hmm. the three types of dimensions 
And then based on that, um, we order them um, in this work that I do uh, into different intensity groups at different temperatures. So here we've got them named uh, according to the 12 seasons and the only purpose of the 12 seasonal or the seasonal naming, not necessarily really too kind of for you to think of it very rigidly that it has to be summer colors that appear in the summer because in the summer we have fruits, right? Which are supposedly spring color, right? So like we don't need to think of them in a rigid way in terms of seasonality. Um, but uh, they just give us like very quick reference points uh, for, you know, how to think of like a color space that is really luminous, like very warm and bright colors, you know, like if I said to you, oh, think of warm, neutral, medium intensity uh, and high chroma colors, y your brain is going, oh, uh, what, what am I computing? <laughs> but if I say bright spring, oh, suddenly a picture can pop up in your mind. So if you can almost like use the, the seasonal namings, like little codes, you know, to kind of a quick reference for types of intensity and, and temperature combinations. Um, any questions so far? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think I'm okay so far. I didn't ever realize that the, the seasons didn't mean that it was like necessarily things you saw in that season. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more, um, yeah, just groupings, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they give you feelings, right? Like, let's say yeah. if you think of winter, it's got a sort of starkness. So it's more like the qualities of the seasons give you sort of certain emotional, mm -hmm. psychological associations. And then that kind of corresponds, you know, it's sort of like there are some qualities that we can overlap and kind of correspond, but it's not a direct rigid system because you know winter palettes like bright winter we'll have you know bright fuchsias and things like that you know and just just we'll have a whole range of colors you know which will be a little bit springy some of the cuts some of the colors in there a little bit too vivacious for it to be like a stark winter day when yeah. everything all the leaves are falling you know <laughs> so um yeah so basically Okay, so I talk you through how this the twelve season system here with on the, that's based on the SIA method, um, how it's divided up on the temperatures and the intensities. So, you remember with the colors we had uh, for the same type of colors we had light light and dark dimension and soft and gray dimension. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we have two axes. This is like a light and dark. So colors on this page go lighter this way and darker that way. And then this is the, our other axis, which is the softer and brighter direction. So colors going this way, you know, towards spring, let's say, or this side of the page, they go more colorful. And then going this way, they go, just go a little bit muted. So that's why autumn is a little bit more muted generally than spring. And that's why summer is a little bit lighter and generally than winter. And anything that's a mixture, you know, like colors that are a mixture of autumn and summer, they'll be softer because they're more muted and they're lighter. Therefore, they getting a little bit of gray and a little bit of white. So they kind of become basically softer intensities than say, if it was a mixture of autumn and winter, which gets a little bit of starkness, so a little bit of darkness, but a little bit of muting, you know, so we, we experience these as sort of deeper, darker intensities. So yeah, so the, the neutral tones in, the, in between, so these are basically the sort of, let's say traditionally true seasons, you know, okay. like, a winter, a summer, a spring and an autumn, but there are kind of in between, let's say mixes or neutral categories that we call them. Uh, and they normally are just a mixture of, so say if you are mixing spring with winter, then you can, dependent on how much of each you're mixing, you can, you can get bright winter or bright spring sort of intensities. If it's still a little bit too cool tone, you know, more wintry directions, then you get into bright winter space and so bright winter in intensity. If it's a little bit more warm tone still and lighter, then you would be getting basically into the bright spring intensity. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the intensities that we're working with is light, you know, so colors that are, you know, not pure pigment, but just with a little bit of whitened kind of appearance, but still very clear. So they're not super grayed down. Um, and then we've got the soft intensities, which are colors that, you know, they are getting grayer, you know, like they can be sort of more light rather than dark, but they're always a range, you know, it's not like, oh, the soft seasons only have very medium gray tones. No, they have a range of light and dark colors. It's just the overall appearance of each category that we, we're talking about when we're talking, you know, light intensity or soft intensity. And it's always 
because we're comparing it to all the other types of intensities, not just uh, not as a standalone rule. So we've got light intensities, soft intensities, bright intensities, which is basically very chromatic, very pigmented, uh, dark intensities that feel a little darker and richer. Um, and then within that, we get, we get warmer ones, cooler versions of the same intensity. So what's really interesting about the true seasons is that they're actually more medium intensity. So they're not as dark, they're not as grayed or soft, they're not as light, they're not as vivacious or vivid. They're actually a bit more medium in intensity and true autumn and true winter, they're a little bit darker in intensity than true summer and true spring. So even, even within the medium intensity space, we get a little bit darker mediums and a little bit more lighter mediums basically. So if you can think of these, the neutrals as they are more neutral in temperature, but they're actually more extreme in intensity. Whereas the trues, they're a bit more neutral in intensity, but they're a little bit more extreme in their temperature. So that's their kind of main differences. Okay, does that all make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> it's, sort of. It's probably a lot to take in, to be yeah. honest, at first. Um, but um, it will be actually much easier once we start draping. I ju I'm just explaining this to you at the beginning so that you can kind of start referencing some of the things that we're, we're doing. Yeah. And then all we're going to be doing is comparing two things. Like let's say we, we'll probably start with comparing light summer and light spring drapes to each other. Okay. So what they have in common is that they're both light and they're both clearer. So they're on this side of the, the, the grayness and colorfulness axis. So they're a little bit on the clearer yeah. than the soft, for example, but they're on this half, on the bottom half of the lightness, darkness axis. So they're also lighter. So they're lighter and clearer colors, generally speaking, the whole palette. And when we compare them to each other, their difference, the main difference will be is that one group of drapes will be a little bit cooler the other group of drapes will be a little bit warmer, you know, because okay. these will be the warm neutrals, these will be the cool neutrals. And then we compare those two and then we move on to the softs, the brights, the darks, we repeat the same thing. And we're looking to see when we're comparing them, you know, when their intensity are fixed, let's say, you know, they're very similar, but we're comparing their temperature. We're just looking for temperature related cues, basically, to see if we can pick up something quite obvious and if it's repeating on every type of intensity. Um, yeah, and then we'll compare the trues as well to each other. Um, and then once we've seen examples of everything, then we kind of create almost like a personalized strategy based on what we've seen uh, uh, that, that far. Um, yeah, so I think we should just begin and it will be easier to see when we, yeah, when we, when we get excited. to that. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to get the light summer and the light spring drapes. And I will just hold them up behind you so you can see their differences. But like I explained to you before, they will be lighter colors and clearer colors. So they don't look particularly gray. They don't look particularly, you know, dark or anything like that. They're fairly colorful, but they're as if we added like white to pure pigments, you know, that sort of quality. I put them together. You can see they're both like almost like ice cream colors or something like that. These, these light season colors. But this is our warmer set. This is our cooler set. So what you can observe is that the warmer set has like slightly more yellowed tones. So like the, the reds are peachier here. They're a bit more raspberry here. And then here's the greens. This is kind of like, I don't know what, like appleier. <laughs> and this is a little bit cooler tone. And then same with the blues. This one is a little bit tealier or turquoiseier, and this one is a little bit more regular kind of sky blue. So this is our cooler bunch, so the light summer colors, and this is our warmer bunch. Um, and I test with a red, green, and blue example from each category because they are kind of like the easiest type of colors for the brain, for the, like for, as an exercise for the brain, because we've got red, green, and blue cone receptors in our eyes. So yeah, it's just an easier, simplest exercise. Colors like whites, yellows, blacks, other things. We've got loads of examples of, but they are not as easy as, as, a, as a straight, like as a quick exercise, you know. So it will be always a red, green, and blue for everything. So let's begin, shall we? So. <laughs> okay. This takes a little bit of jigging pick up the drapes. Okay, 
so that's the peach here it, and it's a little bit lighter of course you know this is this the spring one and the behind it is is our summer drape okay <laughs> and this will be basically what we'll be doing for like the next couple of hours just <laughs> just testing different colors yeah. and then trying to learn something from them okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna like hover down kind of like near your level so I can see very similar light reflection angles as you okay. okay so this is the warmer color on the top and this is basically our blank canvas or starting point you know whatever this is reflecting is is how we think your face is until we flip it and then you stay with your face we're just gonna be seeing now how did the appearance of your face change and I'm gonna flip it a few more times and then our job is to keep looking at the face each time and then see if we can spot good and bad from both of these sets basically because that way we know that we are kind of cancelling our bias or like we're trying to you know not think whether we like this color oh, or whatever uh, you know we literally want to be straight looking at your face okay, okay. okay so that's the cooler one and i flip it a few times to give us the, uh, the opportunity to look and then I start talking about the differences that I see and then please try to find like with your eye as well something good and something bad about both because then we know that we're okay be, be, we're being strict here mm, interesting okay so I'll talk you through what I'm seeing here so the good thing that this drape is doing is that it's actually evening your skin tone a little bit more than the other drape. Mm. For example, when I'm, lift, when I'm going to lift this off, just see what happens to any sort of imperfection on the face. You get a little bit more redness like around the nose, anywhere where you've got like little bits of uh, redness, dots, whatever. They just get a little bit more kind of pulled into focus. Mm. Your skin also sort of gets a little extra sort of shine here where this one kind of like it just gets a little bit more like dewy or look but yeah it evens the skin tone a little bit better this one this one gives you a little bit better contrast but it does gray your skin a little bit and kind of increases the sort of range of colors because if you think about like if you've paced your eyes from like here to there to there to there just go just follow your eyes and the different areas of your skin basically and then see the evenness like how easily they flow into each other and then do it here it's just kind of like you already have a tinted moisturizer in here you know it's sort of blending the skin tone much more evenly here plus i feel like it does kind of have an uplifting feeling this color in a way even though it's really really light it's just kind of there's a fresh feel about it mm -hmm. this one has a sort of sterner feel you know something a little bit more severe about it but it does kind of chisel like it does give you a nice uh, narrow face and uh, this one maybe possibly because it's a little bit light i'm not sure but it's a little bit rounder face so like i i'm guessing this one is just giving a little bit more definition but almost too much because it's at, at the expense of kind of putting some discoloration basically mm -hmm. on the skin okay maybe turn your face slightly at an angle yeah and then 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 just observe like what happens to the color transition and just generally your features slightly more under eye circles here can you see and just a bit more redness yeah. coming to the surface like wanting to separate out can you see yeah especially on my cheeks mm -hmm. whereas here it's almost like we just applied something right oh, that's so cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so let's see if we, we're gonna get the uh, a similar kind of experience with the greens okay So on top is the uh, warmer green. So this is the spring green. Okay. And then underneath it is the summer one. Mm. Okay. And I flip it a few times to give us the opportunity to keep seeing how the reflection changes. Because basically what happens is that the light hits the drape, the drape absorbs some color, reflects some on, on your face, and then your face absorbs some of that reflected wavelength. And then whatever it leaves is basically what's creating an optical illusion on your face. So what we are aiming here um, uh, is that we kind of want the colors to be fully absorbed, like fully harmonious with your coloring so that it, into, so that it absorbs fully and there's no leftover noise to kind of create these optical illusions. This is, this is obviously not how your face looks like, you know, with all these 
uh, kind of uh, accented out, you know, imperfections is just an optical illusion, right? Because your face is a morphing, you know, back and forth, back and forth each time, you know, it's always an illusion, right? But here we see a lot more redness. Can you see in the face? Mm. All of the textures are throwing apart, you know, more shine, sort of like a more stern look just generally. Whereas here we see the skin evening, brightening up, you know, and we're not really concerned here whether this is exactly the light kind of lightness level or brightness level or grayness level, or whatever. Their difference is their temperature and we're looking to see how that's affecting your skin. But this is not yellowing your skin or anything like that. You know, this is actually evening your skin tone, whereas this one is reddening your skin, graying it in some areas, a little bit more under eye circle noticeable mm -hmm. here, you know, just, just kind of dragging the features. Whereas this one is kind of allowing them to stay more level. Mm, interesting. Uh, shift your face slightly so we can see it from another angle because it's just a really nice large surface to look mm. at. But yeah, you can see the redness like yeah. really pop up, right? Yeah. And then here also your hair color looks like very bright with this drape, whereas this one here, it just kind of allows it to look a bit more normal looking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a green in contrast. Hmm? My hair suddenly looks so green. Oh yeah, let me just pull the cap down a little bit more so we see a little bit less. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, this would not be a problem because it, because if your hair was natural, then we could just tie it back and it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But because it's got hair dye on it, we don't know if it's, you know, whether it's too warm or too cold for yeah. you or too bright or too, you know, gray for you or something like that. So it's best to kind of leave it out of the equation. What do you ever do if, like mine are natural, but what do you do if people have dyed their eyebrows? Well, I've had this before. <laughs> uh, it's not easy. Um, it's, I didn't have anybody who dyed their eyebrows, but I had somebody with makeup tattoo. Oh. Yeah, that was very difficult. So we probably spent about half an hour at the beginning with a tiny little brush and a concealer, me kind of brushing the hairs down and going with the concealer, like dotting on top of the, the, the makeup, you know, the yeah. sort of tattoo uh, until we got it out. But she had it on, as a rim around the eyes and also the eyebrows, you know. So the eyes was, of course, easier because we could just kind of dot it around. And it, we had to be careful not to put too much because we don't want makeup. We want the rest of the face to be kind of responding. You know, we just didn't want that to interfere. But the moment we actually finished putting on the concealer just on those areas, her, her eye color changed. So her eye color looks sort of like a almost like a stormy blue and suddenly it became a turquoise color like a like a tealy turquoise color I was like oh my goodness you've got tealy eyes and she said oh yeah and I was like I think your makeup is changing your you know the tattoo is changing the appearance of your eye color it was insane wow, yeah just like the subtle differences mm -hmm. yeah and it, it did turn out to be that it was actually a little bit too cool for her that makeup mm -hmm. tattoo but you know it was mostly faded you know so yeah. you could apply makeup on top but yeah yeah so it's all of yeah, all of that does affect does affect your coloring. Okay, so the last colors uh, on these on these rings is the blues. So let's repeat the same exercise. One. Okay. Just tuck it in. Okay, so this is the warmer one on the top and we're comparing the effects of this to the cooler one underneath. And because this is a lighter color from the cooler set, it's not as severe looking as the others. Yeah. It's hard to not be biased because I really like blue. Mm -hmm. But every category will have blues, you know, like yeah. there's just their kind of blues. But this one is still pulling red to the, the face, can you see? Yeah. More so than this is casting any sort of yellow that would look unnatural. So, you know, it's not like the redness disappears, but it just kind of looks a bit more sitting well in your face, like sitting a little bit more comfortable. Whereas here we just get drawn to the sort of textures of the face, you know, and then yeah. it just pulls it to the surface. Hmm. Yeah, and it's also kind of like, again, it's not a stark and stern look like with the darker colors, but it still feels a little bit disconnected maybe from you. Like I feel 
there is just a little better balance between the energy flowing up and down between you and the color here you know just there's a little bit a better union going on here this feels a little bit almost like masculine in a way or something yeah, a little I agree. yeah <laughs> i was actually thinking the same thing like it's a different look, it's a different yeah. you, right? So yeah, every single color will, will create, that you add to your context, will create an optical illusion. So our job is here is to narrow down to the types of intensities and types of temperatures that you absorb so well that it's not gonna leave all these kind of weird optical illusions that don't look right, you know? <laughs> yeah, okay, so that was the light set. Uh, light summer, light spring. So I'm just going to move on to here, make some notes. So these are the two that we compared. And we thought that the light summer one was a little bit stern at, 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 at some point and also a little bit kind of pulling red and throwing textures apart on the face. So we actually preferred the spring one here. So we're going to move on to comparing soft intensity colors. Again, warmer and cooler ones. Soft autumn, soft summer. Okay, soft autumn, soft summer. So very similar kind of thing, but they're not gonna be as light now. Uh, they're actually mm, more kind of grayed down pigments rather than like white, white and down. They're still not full intensity, of course. There's quite a lot of gray in here, but the main difference is, is that of course the summerier ones will feel a little cooler tones, so more terracotta reds in the autumn, a bit more rosy pinks. For the reds in the summer the greens are a lot more yellow here and then interestingly here my blue drape in the autumn is actually almost like a uh, like a slightly more tealy version to to this and this is quite a bit more gray okay let's start with the reds so So that's the warmer one on the top. That's the cooler one. Okay, and this is quite a bit lighter than this one. And we're just observing the differences and seeing what we might be able to find. Mm -hmm. So very interestingly, you kind of make this pink almost like a very grayy kind of color. You know, you don't make it very fresh looking. You possibly make this drape a little bit more colorful and maybe you are also a little bit more sort of vibrant looking here. I feel like there's a co-paling going on. You know, you pale each other in a little kind of weird way. Uh, it's not giving you so much redness like the, the, like the light set did. So this cool drape is not actually pulling all that red to the surface, so that's good. You know, that means that either the intensity is better here now, you know, that maybe all that pigment was just like pulling it to the surface. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that that's the case. Um, so maybe turn your face slightly. Okay. Tiny little bit under eye circle -y, like a little bit, maybe a little bit more like feeling drained maybe, but I'm not noticing any kind of optical illusions that are very severe or bad. If anything, this feels almost dark, you know, like mm. just feels a little kind of starting to get heavy, but it's still even on the skin. Like I'm liking, you know, that it's doing less redness. Um, yeah, maybe this is, they're doing two opposite things, almost like this is paling a little bit and maybe this is now a little bit too much. So I'm going to move on to the greens and see if maybe they give me a slightly better reading. And sometimes this happens on some levels, you know, where like, Ooh, you know, their differences are like either too small or they are too diff like, you know, maybe one is too pale, but the other one is too colorful or something, you know, like maybe, maybe they're doing different things. And then now we're trying to reconcile that. So sometimes I just like leave it and then move it into the next color and see if it becomes very difficult with each color, then of course we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on, you know, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it's just one color pair. 
Okay, so that's the autumn one. A little bit lighter this color, so it's actually much fresher. Mm -hmm. That's the summer one. Is it, is it weird looking at your face? <laughs> I don't know if I should smile or like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <know>. Anything like. <laughs> Just relax, you know, we're basically just, this is a great exercise for you to just see what happens like, oh, this reflection, oh, that reflection and how it morphs your face basically yeah, each time. I never really studied myself in such detail, especially mm -hmm. without my hair. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. Well, the hair can be useful, but yeah, if it's not natural, then it can be also useless, you know, so yeah. it's best to keep it out of the equation until, and later on we'll have a look at that. Okay. Okay, so this is now not as light a color as the pink one was from the cool set, so it's actually not looking so paling or anything like that. It's actually a fairly relatively good intensity and it's not doing the redness. So I think, I think maybe this level or this, you know, it's not doing the redness. This one is doing a little bit of a sticky shine or something like that. I'm not sure about the, uh, the warm set on this, on this intensity level. It's very possible that they're both off in some way and then we're trying to reconcile it. Maybe this one gives you a better glow, perhaps, you know, like a sort of slightly more natural glow, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure at this point yet, you know, whether this shine is um, to do just with the lights here or whether that's like just too much reflection from this color. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Well, between these two, again, they're doing slightly different things. To me, this one is relatively even and I'm, I'm actually not unhappy with it. Oopsie. Mm, but I'm lucky. <laughs> um, that one is fairly even as well. Maybe it's just the shine that I'm, I'm not sure about. Maybe a touch red, like maybe a touch, but that could be just natural pinkness amount. So like I wouldn't want to make too harsh judgments based on that yeah possibly a little bit more luminous here but there's that trying to reconcile as well okay let me check the blues as well Be between these two like when it becomes a little bit too difficult when you're doing a comparison to reconcile i'll leave it and then we'll revisit it later basically when it's hard to see the difference then either we need to look at more colors mm -hmm. or uh, we need to do a different comparison because right now we're comparing them on their temperature but maybe it's easier maybe the exercise becomes easier to see whether either of these is good or not when we're comparing them in a similar temperature but maybe a different intensity level or something like that you know so maybe we just switch the type of comparison but for now this is interesting learning, you know, because in the first set, it was so easy to see how much redness the colors were casting. So it will be different. With, this is why I like repeating them on different intensities, different scenarios, because it just helps with, um, um, you, you know, getting our bearings if there's a pattern to be seen here. Okay, this is the autumn one on the top. So this is slightly warmer. One. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is not bad. Like I'm thinking this is fairly even on the skin, not doing any of that. Um, here, maybe I'm seeing that shine again a little bit, possibly. Um, hmm. Can you turn your face slightly to one side? Yeah. So I'm just looking to see if this might be graying a little bit or if this might be yellowing because of course we're comparing them on temperatures. So I'm looking to see like is this a better relationship with, between the drape color and your, and your skin tone? Like are they, are they more harmonious looking together? Or is this a better relationship? Maybe here I'm seeing a little grayness or something in the neck. Can you see? It's not yeah. quite, not quite a, sort of as a fresh looking skin next to the item. This feels a little cleaner. So my thinking is temperature wise, this, the, the autumn one might be better because it is giving us kind of quite a nice glow. I'm not sure if it's the right intensity at this stage. It's very possible that the shine is just from all this extra studio light. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, and maybe this does feel a little drab in your context, like you're not making it look as nice mm -hmm. as you are doing with this drape, you know, you kind of feel fresh and so does the drape. Yeah, but this this level was actually quite tricky, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The first one was a lot easier. So so to easy to see. see. Perhaps maybe when we maybe when we have a lot of pigment, because their differences is one is a very pigmented category, the other one is a fairly grey down. So maybe once we tone it back, the tone back the pigment, maybe then the differences become really little. So that could mean that we are in a really good intensity here because the differences get really small, or it could mean that yeah, it could mean that perhaps something that's really pigmented just gives up all gives all of that data you know that's easy to work from mm. um yeah so i'm i'm umming and ahhing with these i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold on to both of these for now i think i think because they were so similar and they were doing slightly different things I just want to look at them a little bit, a little bit in more detail, or compare them to something else. You know, like I want to compare something like soft autumn to dark autumn, or soft autumn to you know light spring, or you know just shifting mm -hmm. the intensities w between the, the the warms, just to see if that gives me a better information than sort of trying to compare it this way. But since pigment was helpful for us, we're going to move on to the bright level. So we're going to compare uh, the cool neutrals and the warm neutrals from the bright intensity next and see where we get with that um, here we go so <laughs> this is the warmer set this is the cooler set so the winter colors are also a little bit more dark or sort of start, slightly starker feeling because the, the whole color space is a bit darker and starker and yeah this is kind of fruity and fresh because the springy spaces are very much like that but overall you can see that it's still kind of warmer poppy or poppy or watermelon or green this is more berry colors again back to the sky sort of blue colors and the royal blues here and even the greens again back to that sort of fruity um kind of feeling you know whereas here we're back into sort of darker you know piney tones you know mm -hmm. so these look like food colors you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i always think that the spring the spring categories are very like edibles you know <laughs> yeah they are very sort of bright colors mm. yeah reminds me of fresh fresh yeah. food okay yeah. so here you can see them behind you so they're similar intensity they're very pigmented quite crisp but of course one is warmer one is a little bit cooler so that's what we're looking to see um, and hopefully with these having a lot of pigment <laughs> it will be easy enough to see okay that's the warm one on top mm, okay yeah, it, it is easier to see with, mm. with the bright colors. Okay. So I'm going to switch to you. Let's see. Let's test you on what you what you learned, picked up on the phone. Yeah. So is your skin more even here or is it more even here? I think the first one mm -hmm. makes it less. Red. Yeah, yeah, mm. it doesn't pull up the red to the surface so much so that it kind of allows it to blend and, and flow, uh, the colors flow into each other easier. Yeah, and then this one brings out all the pink. Colors yeah, too. it separates it out, exactly. And then it just kind of creates almost like little like areas that just want to like separate out, you know, whereas this one allows it to kind of like smoothly flow all the color tones in your skin. Okay, what else? Let's see if you shift your face to the side again let's see if there's a better relationship going on between your skin tone and the drape here or if this is a better relationship between the skin tone and the drape here i feel like we're seeing that grayness again here a little bit can you see yeah whereas here this feels like a cleaner relationship between the two very interesting right yeah yeah oh, wow you're right about the yeah, just next to this color, your skin has a sort of like a grayish tint to it. That's basically something that it's a, an optical illusion and it's reflecting a little bit more of that coolness back. Yeah, whereas here it's able to absorb it much nicer. This is, for me, this is an easier one to see. 
Yeah. Mm. And then this one just feels a little bit more tired as well. Yeah. Just a bit more redness and, and circles around the eyes, whereas this one is sort of a little bit more neutral, so that's good. Okay, let's have a look at the green ones. Let's see if we find the same. It's very interesting, isn't it? It is. <laughs> okay, so these are the two greens. They're actually quite different in darkness level. The winter one is quite a bit darker, but the winter category is quite a lot darker than the spring um, type of harmonies. So I like to sometimes have a little bit higher contrast with some of the, the pairings just so that we can see you know like and the spring is very colorful so i wanted to see like you know when you're very colorful or when you're really dark you know like how does the difference yeah. appear on the face <laughs> okay that's the green one on top which is the spring drape that's the winter one so big very difference different, yeah, yeah. So I feel like immediately we have quite a lot of redness on the face. So that's like the first thing that I noticed that the whole, the whole face is sort of red, whereas this one feels a lot more natural looking skin tone. Mm. Look healthier without. Mm -hmm. That one is red again, just kind of a bit more nervous looking, inflamed looking. Yeah, yeah. Like, super. Mm -hmm. That was healthy. Yeah, whereas that one just feels like fresh and open, right? Like it just has the impression that it's just kind of a bit more effortless. Because this one just feels a little stuffier, isn't it? Mm. Okay, let's check the blues as well. I think that could probably seal the deal, but I feel like we're probably going to see a similar thing. Oops, dropped it. So this is the spring one on the top, which is, this is the warmer one, but immediately as soon as we put it on, it's a nice sort of like healthy glow. The redness is back immediately. And now that we've gone into a deeper, but really stark vivid color, it's not even a very like sort of dark, dark color, you know, still very colorful, but immediately we're seeing that extra redness. Okay. And then if you shift your face slightly, we can then see like the relationship that's forming between the drape color and then your skin tone. And then here, but immediately like we're being, we're still being pulled back straight into the center. We can't even look at this area because this is so red, right? It's so red. <laughs> Whereas this one, it really does disappear almost. right it's almost like you put a cooling gel or something on your mm -hmm. face or or you know like a tinted moisturizer or something that's already kind of dealt with the problem mostly you know Amazing. whereas that one is just like oh i'm flaming yeah, <laughs> yeah and then it just really draws attention to like and any 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 areas that like the skin is sort of like uh, dealing with you know it will just pull it out you know it will separate it out whereas here it just kind of calms it all down so that the skin is just basically as it is you know mm. very interesting okay well yeah with this again this is a more colorful set like the lights were and it was much easier to see that these when were pulling the the cool tones were pulling quite a lot of redness to the surface quite a lot of uh, th pulling the colors apart, you know, separation in the areas, lots of texture. Whereas these ones were sort of fairly nice and blending, weren't they? Yeah, they were really nice and contrast. <laughs> okay, so that's the spring ones, that's the winter ones. So, okay, so here the winter ones were a bit too reddening and the spring one was our better candidate again. So let's check the dark intensity again. So last time it went more muted, it, it became harder to uh, see the difference. I'm very curious to see, is that gonna repeat again? Or because now we're a little bit darker in the intensity, you know, we're gonna have a, see a little bit more pigment on the drapes. I'm wondering, is it actually gonna be okay to see? So let's find out, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, winter bunch here, autumn bunch here. So they're both very dark as you can see. 
uh, but their color sets are still slightly different as you can see here the autumn one is warmer in the reds in the greens and also in the blues okay let's check this Okay, so this is the warmer one on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a less intense then again than the, the brighter set, but I think it's still easier to see than what we've seen with the softs. So this is again the more even skin here. Yeah. Especially this middle area really reacts here. Can you see? It's just really reddening and that little bit of graying going on again. Plus you make the color look kind of grayish, not kind of clean in tone. Whereas here you allow the color to sort of be clean and fresh looking. And so does it the same to you, basically. It's allowing you to be cleaner and fresher in tone. It's a two-way relationship, isn't it? Yeah, it's really interesting. You, because yeah. of course you're bouncing the light back and forth between each other. So you're affecting each other in each other's context. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check the greens. So is it is it easier to see than you imagined the differences or? Um, I still think the ones over this side of the spectrum mm -hmm. are easier to tell the difference, but this is certainly easier than was it these two that were mm -hmm. really hard? Yeah, this yeah. Seems a bit easier. Yeah, to see. and in general, like before we begin the session, did you think it, it might be difficult to see all these visual differences? Yeah, but it's not that difficult, is it? You I think the redness actually. I know you mentioned that. It's I helping. I was worried about all my acne. It's actually really helping me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's helping to sort of see where it might want to kind of uneven the skin even more and mm -hmm. and push you into the um, yeah to kind of focusing on these things, you know. But that's not where the focus should be, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. All right, let's carry on on this dark level. Yeah, people often worry at the beginning, oh, what if, I, what if I can't see all the things that you're showing me? And I'm like, mm, we'll deal with it then, but I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to see a lot of it. <laughs> okay, so this is the warmer one on the top. That's the cooler one, but same story all over. We get the redness there, a bit more tired, that draggy mm -hmm. kind of face, and then just much brighter and clearer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the energy of sort of like also dropping downwards here. Whereas it's a little bit more level here, can you see? Yeah. Like immediately as soon as I move it, it's just a sort of, mm, you know, we're dropping in the frequency. <laughs> okay, let's check the, um, the blues. So we've got a tealy color from autumn and Sort of like a controller blue or something like that, you know, <laughs> a work, a work, an office blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool uniform vibes. Basically. <laughs> okay. Let's see if you looked good in school uniform or if you would have done better with a colorful uniform. <laughs> yeah, mine was maroon, so. <laughs> oh, okay. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> okay, so that's the warmer one on the top. Mm. Mm, redness back, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. didn't go to a school with that color. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We sad. Okay. Yeah. It's not no. great. Okay, cool. So that was still easier to see than the soft set. Yeah. So the yeah. soft set was basically the hardest to see. I mean it's very possible because there was barely any pigment, you know, they were they are the most grayed, grayed down uh, type of colours it's possible that it just became harder and harder to see and we were just at the beginning of the exercises you know so like our eyes didn't necessarily know where to go and look you know they didn't have the quick references of like oh why not to look here because it always does that or i know to look here yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah at the beginning normally the brain just sort of learning the exercise okay so that goes there that one goes there so we compared dark autumn and dark winter test drapes and again we thought that the dark autumn drapes, the slightly warmer ones were just a bit better and the winter ones were just a little bit more reddening. It was less easy to see, oh, 
No, I'm not drawing. Come on. Mm. Maybe it ran out. <laughs> okay. All right. You just have to imagine that I've got a line here. <laughs> Across. <laughs> it was fine there. Yeah, it was at the start. <laughs> sort of. It was already very faded. Um, okay. But yes, so with the uh, dark winter colors, we could see the redness coming onto the face with some of the colors more so than, than with other, other colors. But here we kind of kept the illumination here. The energy was dropping. We could see a little bit more under our circles. So we've done the four neutral sets. So we've got the lights, the brights, the softs and the dark. So what we've got left is basically the medium intensities, which is, which is the true season. So we've got true autumn and true winter, true summer and true spring. So these are our darker medium intensities and these are our slightly lighter ones. So I'm going to be comparing true autumn to true winter because they're both sort of darker, but similar in intensity. What you will see is that between these two, they are actually much more separ separated out in terms of they're not so close in temperature. They're actually further away from each other in temperature. So that's going to be the main difference that they, they're going to look similar in intensity, they're medium, but now we're pushing the temperature a, a little bit further away. And then we're going to repeat the same thing for, for true summer and true spring. They're actually, they're actually quite far away in temperature as well, but they are both a medium intensity. So let's start with the winter and the autumn set. Okay. So here is the true autumn, that's the true winter set. And if I pull them together, you can just see that their intensity is very similar, right? Mm -hmm. Like it could be all one wardrobe and you wouldn't like, it all looks kind of similar. But as soon as I separate the mat, you can just see, wow, these are nice and toasty, really warm toned, mellow colors. And these are actually quite stark, clean, uh, you know, very sharp type of colors. But interestingly, they're not too dark. So they're not as dark as the dark intensity colors that we just looked at. They're a little lighter than that. They're, they're definitely more muted, but they're not as muted or gray as the softs were. And certainly not as bright as the brights were or as light as the lights were. So this is why we call them me medium intensity because they're not in the extremities. But this is, the, this is our sort of slightly darker medium pair. But as you can see with the reds, much bigger gap right like you know that's mm -hmm. basically a purple and that's we are in a terracotta that's like a full teal and now we're in this kind of royal blue or i don't even know what kind of blue that is and then with the greens as mm, no these were the blues okay and then with the greens as well that's that's our um uh, almost like a yellowy green nearly and this is we're still in the in the sort of piney zone so they're much more further away from each other in terms of temperature but they're much closer to each other in terms of intensity okay so this will be just an interesting thing to see um, in terms of temperature are the cool ones going to throw a lot more texture or because if they're not so bright does it mean if they're a bit more medium intensity does it mean that it won't bother us as much you know all the redness so we'll find out this is why the looking is sort of like the fun part you know because we won't know what we're gonna find but we're looking and testing and they're like ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's the autumn one on the top That's the winter one. So it's definitely got the stark look, not as red as sometimes we see it, but still we, we notice that coming to the surface. Okay, so that's definitely still a little bit more evening. Mm -hmm. It's got a stern, like you've got a stern look in this color, isn't it? It's yeah. just like a... <laughs> like face line becomes really clear. Mm. Very sort of, but almost in a sort of like, over sharpened way, right? Like yeah, a, like a, yeah, almost like a constipate, way. like a, ooh, yeah, yeah. like a, oh. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Handy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's nice. So can you just shift your face slightly? Yeah. This is also always a good angle to have a look at, isn't it? Mm. 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 So a bit more under our circle, a bit more redness going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's definitely more even. And, you know, it's very possible that this isn't perfect, you know, but we're looking to see where are we going to get a little bit closer to where the skin tone is even, you've got a nice radiant glow. But here I feel like we're dropping away from it. We're seeing the grayish kind of skin tone color again, the redness come, you know, the tiredness pulls in. And that's kind of like stern look, isn't it? Like the strict school teacher, you know, like, yeah. oh, don't want to be mad with her. <laughs> 
<laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So next lot is the greens. And the other way to compare these um, true seasons uh, would be to compare something like true winter to true summer and true autumn to true spring. You know, that's another way where you just compare, you know, they have the same temperature, but you compare lightness, darkness. So it's, it kind of doesn't matter. As long as you compare everything to everything, eventually you'll eliminate all the worst ones and keep all the better ones. <laughs> this is the warm one on the top. Okay, that's the cooler one and just back to that sort of discoloration here, that grain, can you see like almost like the bluey bits and grey bits sort of coming, it's almost like these really cool tones are starting to like yank up anything that's similar to them at, at to come to the surface of your face, whereas here of course all these veins and everything still exist in your face but it's just not being sort of separated out, you know, everything is remaining even. So we're not like drawing to them. That sort of stern look as well again, isn't it? Okay, and then with the blues. Yeah, I'm thinking with the uh, medium intensities, the, the intensity is forgiving, but of course the temperature is not. So let's see what we find here with the blues. And here they're going to be quite different because that one is very, very electric and this one is very, very sort of toasty. But that looks just as a first glance nice and even looking on the skin. Mm, no. And you almost have to start like squinting a little bit to look at you, you know. So as soon as we kind of go into the crisp sharpness of the winter, it's also becoming a little kind of um, piercing. That's definitely a little bit more smooth. Can you just shift your face slightly? That's it. So we're going to be looking for uh, the skin coloration and the drape next to each other. Is your skin appearing more natural looking next to this color or there? It's not too bad here, but I'm being drawn to all the redness in the face. So it's almost like my eyes are skipping the neck and then just going straight to the face because it's pulling the redness to the surface. Maybe, t maybe a touch gray, but it's, it's too hard to see. Whereas here, everything sort of is much more even between the coloration of the drape and then the neck and then the face. Here, it's sort of separate little areas. It's a very stern look. Can you see how your face looks kind of like strict and, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just a little bit more open and warm. Okay, so that was true autumn and true winter. So I would say that with these two again, it was lesser the, the sort of reddening effect and all of that, but it was definitely still visible that this one was discoloring, the true winter was discoloring your um, facial kind of even the tone evenness more than true autumn. It's very possible that the true autumn is too warm, like too warm in intensity, too much pigment or too muted, but it was still doing more evening overall and just a little bit more in harmony with you from just first appearance. So, um, oh, pen's working again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to repeat that with true summer and true spring. Okay, so true summer and true spring. So here we've got two uh, medium intensity sets again, but these are lighter. So these are lighter than the true winter and the true autumn were, but still not as light as the light seasons were. Do you remember they looked very much like like milky colors, you know, like like ice creamy sort of stuff. Yeah. Definitely not as gray as the the softs were, or as bright as the brights were. Certainly certainly not dark. Um, so yeah, that's the cool set, that's the warm set, and in their intensity, 
they are really really similar can you see they're basically matching intensity is and it could be completely a lot of the times when i when i get clients who end up being a true season they have other true season clothes in their wardrobes from the opposite temperature like this sort of way because they matching the intensity and that's already working for them really well so um yeah and then sometimes there's just a bit of discoloration issue if you know they got the wrong temperature but they're already getting like half of it right so that that's often workable for most people but as soon as i pull them apart like we did earlier you can really see that wow these are really fruity springy colors and these are not you know like they're very different types of temperatures so let's compare them right Okay, so we've got the spring one on top. Very nice and even looking just as a first glance. That's the summer one and we're seeing that sort of redness coming back. A little bit of that graying as well, like around the eye, just, just generally seeing a little bit of gray on the skin. The intensity feels good, can you see? Yeah. So the intensity feels like, oh, it's a friendly intensity. It's not nothing strange, you know, but if I'm comparing it back to this, Here's where the skin becomes much more fresh looking. And can you turn your face slightly to the side? That's it. So we can do a sort of skin tone evenness test. So we look at the, the neck color or the skin color next to the drape to see that relationship, very nice relationship. Here we get that slight graying effect next to this. Um, and then let's put this back and we just look at the sort of evenness from like say the temples, down the cheeks, you know, down to the chin, just to kind of see how smoothly evening um, um, the skin this color is versus that. But yeah, here, this, this area gets inflamed immediately. Here we definitely see more redness. Definitely that kind of pops to the, the foreground a lot more. And that stern look again, right? You know, that's sort of like, you're really sort of like, almost like a mean look, you know, the mean girl look, you know, <laughs> this one feels so warm. <laughs> You know, they're just so kind of friendly. <laughs> mm, yeah, very lovely. Let's check the greens. Okay. Okay, so this is the warmer one on the top again. That's the spring drape. That's the summer one, same story. We get the graying around the eyes, also around the chin as well. Can you see it's starting to sort of cast as like, almost like, like a gray type of feathery effect. The redness here. And then suddenly it just sort of clears up much nice, much nicer. Back to the graying, a little bit of redness. And just more luminous looking here, right? Mm. Can you just turn your face slightly? That's it. Because from this angle, we see a large sort of sample of skin all the way from the neck, up the jawline, the cheekbones, basically all the way up to the temple, the nose. So it's just kind of easy to see the, the transition from different areas of your face and how even the skin tone appears. So imagine if you were doing like say a concealer, say you're a makeup artist and you're, here's your model and you're just checking her face like, okay, let me see what I need to prep with this face. Now imagine if this is what she's wearing when you're checking her face and you're looking at all these areas versus imagine if she was wearing this, you're thinking, oh, okay. So, I'm, so it feels like a lot less job to do here, right? Like in terms of trying to even the skin. Whereas here, she'll be putting quite a lot more to sort of get it all even. You get a little bit more tired here with, under the eyes as well. And then just kind of, this one has a sort of like a bit more lifting kind of look just overall. Can you see all that? Yeah, yeah, I really see it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm expecting this to be the case with the blues as well, but let's just double check. So the blues of the spring are really kind of nice and turquoisey. And the blues of the summer are very much back into that sort of, oh, I'm not quite sure. It's not quite cornflower, but that type of blue, isn't it? Like a nice, yeah, 
almost like inky color. <laughs> okay, so that's the spring one. Mm -mm, no. So as soon as we get into the blues, we really are seeing that, okay, you know, there's all kinds of disconnect going on. So we get the redness, we get this weird relationship between you and the drape. Can you see like, it's almost like a completely different category of thing than, yeah. than up here. Can you see, it's just like, oh, what's going on here, right? <laughs> but then here is like, okay, yeah. Okay. They're speaking the same language, right? A lot, a lot more, you know? <laughs> Whereas this yeah. one is like, I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're saying. You know, like your face is going, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it, does, it really doesn't match. No, doesn't doesn't really want to work together. Whereas here we can just see it kind of evening the skin. Of course, that's very important because that's basically how we check that there's no optical illusions kind of lingering around from uh, leftover, you know, reflections. Here we get the redness, you know, attention going to all these bits, the stern look, you know. But yeah. now we're getting a sort of head separate, you know, and then then there's the drape, you know, like it's there's definitely almost like a cut. And then just look how warm you appear compared to this drape. Can you see? It's just like, oh, I don't know if I have anything in common with you. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Whereas he's like, <sighs> I like this one. <laughs> yeah, works much nicer. <laughs> okay, so I feel like with the true summer and true spring pair, it was even easier to see the temperature differences than with the autumn and the winter set. So that's again another indication, to be honest, that all the way through we've been finding the warm one being better than the cool one. The only time when it was very difficult to reconcile what we've been seeing was in the soft pairing, do you remember? Yeah. So it's very possible that either that pair they, is just really off, like maybe the colors are too gray and therefore they just can't really pull their weight, you know, even if it's a good temperature. So that could be the reason why. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm guessing that's possibly why that was the hardest to reconcile because let's say if you need a lot of pigment then the grayer the color is technically the worst it will be. So even if let's say you end up something warm toned, uh, but if the color is not really present then you need a lot of color then it doesn't matter if it's warm toned it will still be struggling to give you what you need, you know. Mm. Okay, so that was the spring one, summer one. So we said the true summer was doing a bit of redness and the true spring was the better one. So basically we get to a point where we've seen everything now, like we basically have seen it at least once, uh, every, every type of category when we compare them to each other. So this is basically the part of the uh, consultation where we are going to create a strategy based on our current findings to figure out like how we're going to do the next steps. So what we found so far is that the cooler tones were always pulling a lot more red, different amounts depending on what we were comparing, what intensities, uh, but ultimately they were always feeling just a little bit more disjointed, disconnected. So um, that leaves us with the warm categories, the autumn and the spring. My instinct says that the autumn categories are possibly a little bit too muted because they were always harder to give us you know, information um, and I don't know if, like just from the, from my memory, it feels like they have been not quite as radiant and glowing as some of the spring options that we've seen. So my thinking is going, I think we're heading towards spring, one of the springs. So how I would go from here uh, is I would probably compare over this way, you know, so the difference between spring and autumn is their color, is their amount of color, right? The colorfulness. Yeah. So I would probably want to compare something like Dark autumn, if the pen drew. <laughs> I definitely need a new pen. I think I'm gonna have to get a new pen after this. <laughs> so imagine this line going here. <laughs> but dark autumn basically and bright spring, they both have a touch of winter added to them. So they're not true seasons because they're a little bit more in the neutral category because winter is influencing both of them. So they're both warm neutral, they both influenced a little bit by winter, so they both have a little bit of that crispness, sharpness to them, but of course not quite as much as actual winter. But comparing the two, 
uh, would be very useful because we'd be comparing them basically just on how much how pigmented one is you know how colorful or bright versus how muted it is mm -hmm. same with true autumn to true spring and then soft autumn to light spring so I, I'm thinking this is the best way to test between autumn and spring is to compare them on their uh, corresponding levels because light spring and soft autumn are both lightened by summer and then the trues are just standalone you know so they're easy to compare mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we should do that next. And let's say that we do find that spring is better, then if we get to that stage when we're just left with the th three springs, <laughs> then it will be a matter of comparing them to each other to figure out which intensity and temperature from within that range that we like the most. So shall we start with dark and bright? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Dark autumn, that's it. And then a bright spring. Okay, so dark autumn and bright spring, you can kind of see that they're very similar, right? Like look at the reds and the blues. The greens are different. Uh, autumn has a lot more yellowier greens in it. It does have pinier colors as well, but so that's the different looking ones here. But look at the greens and the blues. They're very, very similar. This is just obviously a little bit darker, less kind of clear in the pigment department. So we have modified it from pure pigment, a little bit more muted. Let's see how they do against each other, shall we? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, the reds look really similar. Mm -hmm. So this is really useful when we go this way because then we're literally comparing them on their brightness level. Okay, so that's the bright spring. That's the dark autumn. I'm going to flip it a few times. So the closer we're drawing to sort of like where we're going to be, obviously the differences will get less and less and less. So we're probably not going to see so much redness anymore now that we eliminated all the cool stuff that was doing that. So we might have to start looking for different types of differences you know that we've yeah. seen before because we're now switching from comparing them on temperature we're now switching to comparing them on their intensity so they're matching their temperature now mm. but can you see that i mean they are very different looking still mm. so this one is still adding quite a lot of texture to the face i feel like it's a muddier kind of skin color maybe a pinch more reddish than here can you see yeah and then this skin here just feels so much more smooth, fresh, kind of naturally radiant and just really kind of like even looking. Here I'm still seeing a lot of texture, can you see coming up, a little bit more tired. Yeah, if you shift your face slightly then we can do a sort of side track. But look how much smoother and cleaner that is, right? It's a lot better. Yeah. That one is just allowing more redness to sit on the face, just more texture to kind of come to the surface, and maybe still a little bit of graying. And this was our, these were our better colors, the least graying ones from before, but this is definitely doing a better job. Okay, let's check our greens. Okay. This is the spring one on the top. So this is kind of like back to those fruity type of colors. <laughs> this is the autumn one, very similar kind of difference to before. It does allow a little bit more redness to the surface, a little bit more texture to the surface, more disconnection as well with you. Just much more smooth and clear looking on the skin. And then if you turn your face slightly, then we can basically do a sort of skin tone continuity test from the neck, from the temples round and compare it to here but a lot more textured, can you see? Yeah, mm. I want to see some yellows as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that one is just clearing it up as if by magic, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so imagine like you wake up in the morning, you throw on this t-shirt and like, oh my, my skin looks great today, you know? Versus like next morning I was like, oh, I was looking so good yesterday, what happened? Maybe it's the penis that I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like people can just 
uh, sort of like not think that it's the color that's doing some kind of reaction on the skin you know you might think oh my, I'm breaking out you know but the next day oh that cream's really working you know <laughs> you know and it could be just you're wearing different clothes <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that thought would have never occurred to me before mm. but yeah it really well, can be the clothes yeah one tip I normally say to people is that when if you're putting on makeup put it on in the clothes that you're going to be wearing because imagine say your pajamas are this color so you are now fixing your imperfections, let's say, according to the optical illusions that this color is causing on your face. So you might be putting a heavier uh, layer of foundation or something because you kind of want to counteract the unevenness. You might be putting a lot more concealer, maybe more blusher because you want to bring the color back. Whereas here, you know, you already have like a lot of glow. You don't need highlighting here. You probably maybe a tinted moisturizer or something is plenty enough because there's nothing to even you know so you might be completely um, changing how you apply the makeup on so imagine you put on your pajamas put a bunch of makeup on and then you get your clothes on and like suddenly you look too made up you know like too too heavy yeah. heavy looking makeup all the other way around you this is your pajamas mm -hmm. you know and like oh i'm looking great pat 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 a little bit and then you put on the clothes and then suddenly you feel kind of you know, a little pale or, you know, a little bit more sort of colorless and you catch yourself in a reflection like, oh, I don't look great, you know. <laughs> so yeah, wear the clothes that you're going to be wearing when you put makeup on so that you can adjust any kind of optical illusions according to that. So if your dressing gown is the wrong season, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's a really good tip. Yeah, whereas this one is just so smooth and evening. That's nice. And then it's just the blues left. They're very similar again, like the reds. Okay, see? Lighter, darker version of the same kind of thing. Same wavelength. Okay, this is the spring one on the top. That's the autumn one, same exact story, right? Mm -hmm. The mature, draggy, textured, slightly yellowed even, versus the cleaner, smoother, definitely more radiant, more even. Then here, yeah. it's just the texture just pops on. The darkness level wants to offer you something, you know, but it's just not evening the skin enough, you know? So you're better off going with something clear, but then using that type of tonality to select the dark colors from, you know? So it's just possible that even from dark tones, it just needs to be less gloomy, you know, less muted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bright spring versus dark autumn. The spring one is a better direction, it, it appears. <laughs> okay, let's see if the pen will help us. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think after the session I'm going to be ordering one. <laughs> okay, so let's do true autumn, true spring, and that. So, exercise is the same, and again the differences are very similar. That's the spring, that's the autumn set, and as you can see, the same type of colors, same type of wavelengths of light but just reflected at different intensities. These are a lot more clearer, you know, not as muted as these. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see who's going to give you <laughs> the right ones. Nice. Really that. Yeah, and this just, so the kind of difference between um, spring and autumn that I often say to clients who are spring and autumn is that the way to kind of look at a color and sort of like help yourself know oh, is it the right kind of peach or right kind of teal is that the springy colors always feel a bit more like fresh food you know like uncooked like this is like you know a papaya or something or something whereas the autumny colors even when they're very similar they still have a sort of spicy or cooked or something you know like a different kind of feel to them you know so like that sort of freshness is kind of like preserved into a little bit more toasted -y kind of look you know it just becomes a little bit more earthy that way so yeah i think that's kind of like my way of checking is it the spring yeah. <clears throat> that's the spring one on the top 
Very nice. I really like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Last time we put it on, I was like, ooh. <laughs> I think it's going to be a strong contender. <laughs> okay, let's see how it compares to the autumn one. Mm. Yeah. Same what we've seen before. That sort of graying almost on the skin. Can you see? Mm. Yeah. That's clearing it. Mm hmm. Mm. Not bad, like it's not as, it's not pulling the redness like the dark autumn colors did, so that's nice, but it's definitely doing a sort of tint, like an almost like an oily, mm. um, slightly muddy kind of texture. Like it doesn't look like, oh yeah, I just exfoliated my skin. You can't say that because I'd be like, really? It doesn't look <laughs> it, right? Whereas like you come and meet me and like, oh, I just been to my, my, my to see my clinician, you know, I just had a face, you know, treatment. I'd be like, oh yeah, your skin is glowing, you know? But if you said that here, I'd be like, Hmm, maybe don't go back to that place, you know? <laughs> and you could have literally just been, yeah. but if you're wearing this, I would be like, hmm, I'm mm. not sure. <laughs> not sure it did anything. <laughs> yeah, so that's how big a difference it can make. Very big, yeah. Mm. Okay, let's see the greens. Warm tone, both of them, but that's the sort of cleaner, you know, like almost like grass color, you know, and then this is like really, really deeper, you know, I'm just trying to think because even this is even too kind of muted for moss, you know, like even moss is kind of a bit more fresh looking, you know, but this is kind of more mossy, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you see what I mean about the sort of fresh, like uncooked and versus yeah. the sort of ready cooked, you know, <laughs> yeah. type it's thing quite easy to spot spring but autumn's harder to mm -hmm. recognize I think. Okay that's nice. Okay not bad but that like a little bit more texture on the skin and it's almost a little heavy feeling in your contacts can you see like it doesn't feel like oh you know like such a nice piece of garment you know it just feels a little bit mature a little bit kind of almost costumey in a way you know. Yeah. Uh, like you're reserving yourself or it's like a withdrawal kind of thing mm. oh yeah it's just like really open you know really approachable that's the kind of uh, uh, what do you call it uh, like an impression that you give out but also look how radiant the skin looks here versus here it's kind of like stealing a little bit of that glow can you see yeah and then this one is just putting it back on <laughs> <laughs> it's fun stuff, right? It is. I really like spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think spring likes you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the blues are the last from this set. Again, same wavelength, different intensities, the way they reflect. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Not bad, but a bit red, a bit heavy, that costumey look. Definitely textured skin, a bit tinted in the yellow or something. That's much more clean and natural looking. Not bad, but just kind of dragging the features down a little. Can you yeah, see? Yeah, like it's not awful. No, no. Some of the ones earlier were a lot worse. Mm. But yeah. Still not good yeah, well, we eliminated all the cool ones that were yeah. like pulling all this red straight onto the front of your face. Yeah, the, the bright ones definitely. Mm, so. Yeah, it just feels kind of more effortless, right? Like, oh, I'm flowing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I think we can start to see a pattern now, right? Like, I think we're really get, getting an idea where we're heading. So again, the autumn was, it was, it was nice, but it was just a little sort of like textured on the skin again. I would say a little bit muddier, like in some of the colors, you know, especially the darker ones, we just felt like, oh no, she needs to exfoliate, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Whereas this one definitely, you know, the spring set looked a lot more like, oh yeah, her skin is glowing, you know? She's, what is she doing to it, you know? <laughs> so, that's good, right? You want, you, want, you want that skin without having to do all the hard yeah, work, right? Yeah, put the makeup on, it would be nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just look good, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just walk on the street or anywhere, you know, and be like, how did she do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, true autumn is gone.
Ooh. Well, the pencil doesn't agree. Okay, <laughs> we're imagining that line. So <laughs> the last autumn in play is the soft autumn, which is possibly the weakest one of the autumns because I remember the softs were kind of a little bit hard for us mm. to uh, reconcile in between because there was just a lot going on with the greyness. But let's compare soft autumn to light spring. Give it one final chance. If it's not pulling its weight, then that's, that's all the autumn's gone. Soft autumn, light spring. So again, very similar as you can see, both of these are lightened down by summer. That's why they have this kind of heathery feel to them. They're both warm toned. This is the clearer set because it's got um, obviously spring as the base and this is the um, slightly more muted set because it's got autumn as the base but they both have this sort of like feathery heathery kind of feel to them because summer has said something you know it said mm. oh why don't we like smooth you a little bit you know <laughs> because spring colors are normally like oh juicy you know yeah. <laughs> and autumn colors are like oh toasty like let's cook spices you know but none of these are feeling like they're true sort of parent season or parent category because summer came and said just calm down a bit guys you know <laughs> you don't need to be so intense you know in their own ways but otherwise they're very similar you know looking this is just a clearer looking set and this is the this is the little bit more gray looking set this will be interesting so a different type of peaches that's the spring one So we're seeing that sort of yellowy tint come onto the face, a bit more texture. Maybe it's a bit draggy still, dragging you down. That's definitely clearer. It feels kind of light, so I'm, I'm thinking this is possibly the sort of the, the weakest of the springs because mm. it feels like you kind of are asking for a little bit more definition, you know, it's sort of not quite sort of shading enough underneath the skin. I mean, this is quite a see-through drape, but even if I fold it, double it's still a little bit on the light side it's better it's a little bit better defining but still a little bit on the light side but comparing it to here this is still the textured look that sort of unclean skin right because if you can like you came and see me let's say we were meeting up or something and, and this is how you look i would be thinking oh you know she's been jogging or she had a long, you know, like it doesn't yeah, feel like, it feels tired. like there's something on your, you know, like you need to cleanse your skin. Whereas here, suddenly when we've got the spring drapes on, it just feels like, oh yeah, she just came from the shower or something, yeah. you know, it just has a, that sort of cleaner, fresher type of appearance than here, which is a little bit more oily, shiny, textury. Yeah. Okay, let's check the greens. Mm. Okay, so it's bigger distance between the two. Of course, spring is very like luminous looking. <laughs> but again here, even though it's evening the skin, so it's really nice and glowy for the skin, it's losing a little bit of your chin, can you see? Yeah. So I'm just making a mental note so that even that this is good for the skin, I wish that we could sculpture a little bit better. So I'm thinking ahead for the other springs, but because here we're not losing your chin, but it's also texturing mm. a little bit too much on your face. That sort of mature look, the unclean skin versus that. But this one needs a little bit more defining. But we are comparing them on their intensity level. So we're seeing whether you need more clarity. So we're not comparing them on the darkness level right now. You know, we're just comparing an intensity and, and this, the clarity of this is definitely uh, more in line with your coloration than here where we do get little kind of separated separated out areas and just a bit more sort of I don't know that sort of muddy look isn't it a little yeah. bit a little bit more stuffy but not bad colors right we we're already getting like quite close you know yeah. <laughs> okay let's do the blues I remember like earlier on we were just seeing all this redness from like winter and all these other groups 
the stern look is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have your face back. <laughs> Okay, so that's the spring one on the top. That's the autumn one. This is not bad, but again, texturing the skin more, a bit more red even. Mm. That's sort of shiny, unclean, unclean, cleansable <laughs> skin. This is much more even straight away. It's needing the, the sculpting because it's trying to push color to kind of give you some shadow, can you see? So it's like, oh, I don't have darkness, but look, why don't you have some color? It's because it's gonna look a little bit glowy, you know? <laughs> so it wants to get there, it's just sort of like, oh, falling a little bit short in terms of darkness, you know? But it's nice and clean on the, yeah. on the clarity. So here we are just a little bit more textured. That's sort of all the look as well, tired, end of the day, you know? Mm. This doesn't feel like it's the end of the day. It's like, oh yeah, no. shh, shh, I'm ready. Let's do more. <laughs> cool. Well, but that autumn is out. Yeah. <laughs> so you're definitely a spring chick. Yay. <laughs> now we just have to figure out which is spring. Yeah, I think I want it to be spring or summer, something like yeah. Season-wise, that I know it's not necessarily related. But I no, mean, like but you, you like the season, idea. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a nice coincidence because sometimes <laughs> I get clients, you know, they sort of have a personality, let's say a spring personality, but let's say they're some kind of a summer. Like I recently oh. had a client, and I think she had she really wanted to be a bright spring. She was a soft summer. And sort of like the way she managed it was that she was kind of wearing slightly more muted colors than the bright spring. So almost like dark autumn category just to kind of get to her softness level in a way, you know, but that's how she was kind of bringing out that sort of springy feel in her. Wow. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so for her, it was a sort of almost like a shocker, you know, that like, yeah, oh no, you want to be spring, you know, <laughs> like, what am I going to do? Oh, nice. But no, I, she could see it, you know, and it, it, like once you see it, it's like you kind of know and your heart knows, you know, and it's and you want that, you know, that's exactly what you want. You want your clean skin and radiance and, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of approachable, effortless kind of impression, you know, that's basically what we're after. Yeah. It's just, you know, when you had an idea about yourself before. <laughs> and it's harder to accept. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're down to the last, the last basically group, which is all the springs. My feeling is that light spring is a little bit too light. I don't think it can support your depth enough. Mm. So for me, it's going to be really coming down between bright spring and true spring. I, I don't know really which one. I don't know. Have you got a, is your heart singing better with one? I think we'll just have to see, isn't it? Yeah, I've got no idea. Maybe bright spring? But I don't, Possibly. I don't know. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. They both look good. So. Yeah, exactly. So, but I'm thinking we can possibly lose light spring the easiest. Yeah. So let's compare maybe bright spring to light spring or something like that, you know, because they're both the same temperature, you know. Uh, and then, yeah, and then see if bright spring does win and then, <laughs> and then it yeah. can go up with our finalists. Okay. Bright spring and light spring. Okay, so here we are, bright spring and light spring. So you can see what I meant at the beginning that we've got sort of almost like pure colors, you know, very close to sort of true intensity, you know, like as intense as these colors get in terms of clarity, kind of like straight out of the paint tube kind of colors. And here it looks like we've added a little bit of white to them, right? Can you yeah. see that what we said right at the beginning about different intensities of the same type of colors? So for example, if you look at the reds, Oops. You know, you can just see like, oh, let's add some white to that nice red. And then we get this sort of, you know, peach, you know, we call it. Same with, you know, the blues. Oh, why don't we add a little bit of white? You know, that sort of, that sort of way. So yeah, let's compare them. Our idea is that this might be a little bit too light to support you, but let's see if that's the case. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Mm hmm okay. Okay, 
it's harder than I imagined it would be. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, this is going to be a clear cut. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah, that light spring one is nowhere near as bad as I expected it to be, if I'm honest. Yeah, this is very lovely. <laughs> But can you see what I mean? Like it's not supporting. I'm kind of going to fold this in half. Sorry, it's just because it's so thin that it's sort of not showing. Like, can you see it's sort of showing the drape underneath you a little bit more. So yeah. I'm going to do it this way. Let me just tuck it in. <laughs> just to give it like a proper chance, if you know what I mean. Okay. It's hard because it does look good. <laughs> Yeah, I d and, and we don't, this is why we, like, especially near the end, we have to be more careful because we're so close to home, all of them are going to look really good. So we're just really going to try and navigate these waters now at near the end, sort of a bit more carefully and slowly and just make sure that we not rush this last bit. Okay. How do, where do I put you here? <laughs> just trying to tuck it somewhere. Here we go. tricky very yeah. tricky because basically what happens is when light spring is better then these colors can look a little stirred maybe pull a little bit of red you know and if I'm looking I'm thinking okay yeah maybe I can see that you know the sternness and a little bit of red versus this you know but when somebody needs more intensity then these colors like look just a little bit pale you know and not quite enough but it's certainly pulling less red less stern and it's possible that both of these are not it, you know, it's possible that it's still yeah. the true spring. Okay, let's check it with the greens. I think we're thinking with the red that, oh, it's a sort of almost like a toss, toss up. Let's check these two. That's bright spring. Because it does feel a little bit luminous in your context. Can you see? Yeah. It's just possibly a little bit in front of you, a touch. Let's have a look. But that, 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 so yeah, that, that one does feel a little bit light. I mean, this is the hard part near the end. Mm. Quite no idea. And both of these, remember, are extreme intensities, you know, in, in their own right, you know, mm -hmm. so it's very possible if you're more medium, then we'll find that. But mm, can you maybe just turn your face slightly? Yeah, I just want to see. Mm. Because this one gives you a, light, a better contrast. Maybe this one is doing a little bit like smoother skin, but it's kind of very disconnected from you in a way that it feels a little bit, I don't know, almost neon or something. Can you see it? Just a little disconnected. It's possible that both of these are off, but we'll, yeah, but they, maybe this one looks a tiny bit more tired. Maybe, can you see? Mm. Yeah, tricky. Okay, let's yeah. do the blues. Um, I agree, I can't find that either is better than the other. Mm, it might be that they're both off. So I think what we'll do is if, if we think even with the blues that it's very inconclusive, then we'll compare light spring to say true spring. And then, you know, that sort of way, because maybe that's the kind of uh, angle that we need to see. <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah. This looks like a lot of the food colors they wear. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, this is too light for me. Yeah, it's it's too good, pale. Is it? No. The blues, this one's definitely better. Yeah. And then turn your face slightly. Yeah, it gives you a better contrast. This does do an evening, but I feel like you feel darker. Like if I'm looking at this drape colour and I'm looking at your neck colour, if I'm imagining, oh, I'm making this nice handbag and this is going to be the leather strap that I'm putting on it, it just feels like, I don't know if this is the best strap for it, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Whereas. Let's have a look here. That feels like a better pairing, right? You know, if that's yeah. the item and this is this is how I'm accessorizing it with leather, I feel like that just feels more, you know, unified, you know, like a better design. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, we can't really just call it on just the blues because I feel like we were just a little bit divided here. So I'm going to hold on to light spring and then com I'm going to compare it to true spring now, yeah? Okay. Okay. So. Let's see if this is gonna be more helpful. So here, we, the, the intensity jump is less. So here we got True Spring and Light Spring. 
And because True Spring is not, it's a medium intensity, so it's not as contrasting as say Bright Spring was, the difference between intensity is a little bit less. Yeah. So there's not a big, a big jump. But of course, this is a, possibly a little bit more pigmented than this. So let's see if the medium intensity with a little bit of extra pigment, does that work better? Or what do we think? You know, let's see if this is, this is helpful for us or not. <laughs> Okay, so here's the two colors. That's light spring. Yeah, this is this is a more more in line um, darkness level. Mm, yeah. Turn your face slightly, please. Hmm. This is still good though, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's look at the greens. <laughs> it, this is possibly the part where we have to pull out more colors. This is where sometimes the three main core colors is not enough and we just need to check with a lot more. Yeah. So, but we'll look with the core colors and, and figure as much as we can. Like it's up until this point, it was so helpful, wasn't it? It was yeah. just enough, but sometimes there comes a point where like, it's so close between them that it, ugh, you know. Okay, let's check the greens. Mm -hmm. Because that's nice on the skin, right? Like it's it's a good glow for the skin. Hmm. So is this too warm or is this too light is the question. <laughs> you should know, right? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Honestly, no clue though. Like they're both good in their own way. Yeah. So if you turn your face slightly, we can just look for continuity and just generally speaking, where do we find that, oh wow, this is like a really, you know, like a sort of, oh, we're really getting the energy. Hmm. The light one might have been better. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that too. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, because there's almost like a sternness again here, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's check the blues. Not what we were, not what I was expecting anyway. <laughs> I don't know what you were expecting. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was bright spring. So yeah. Well, and you might still be, it might still be. It might be just like, this is a really com complicated part because we're so close to home now, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, but I, I, I have the sense that we might have to bring out a lot more colors to kind of, you know, not just these test ones, just a lot more to get to the bottom of this story. But I quite like this. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost like there's a tint to the skin here, right? Mm. And maybe less clean looking possibly. Um, and to turn slightly, okay. Mm, yeah, just more texture. Yeah, and I'm looking at them making clothes again, you know, <laughs> looking at that and looking at that. That's nice. Hmm. It's, honestly, they're all really good. So, okay, I think this is the point where we looked enough now, I think, that between the springs, we haven't checked Bright Spring and True Spring against each other, so we could still do that. But I'm thinking it's probably worth just bringing out a few more colors to, to these are the sort of friendlies that I test with, meaning that they're uh, kind of like, like similar enough to each other so that it's easy to see small differences, but I feel like we might need to push into the, their individual spaces a little, little bit more, mm -hmm. like fully into the lightness of light spring, fully into the brightness of bright spring, and fully into the warmth of true spring to like really get to the bottom of where we are with you. Because really, for me, all these three springs, three springs feel like, okay, I can make a case for each, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
um, I'm still uncertain. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm vibing less with True Spring now that we've seen, I've seen it against another spring because so far we've seen it against summer and we've seen it against autumn. We haven't seen it against another spring. So now I'm thinking, oh, I'm losing the love I had for it. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to discard any of it. So I'm going to get them to the front making some space here <laughs> okay so light spring true and right So I've got all of the spring bunches here. I'm just going to show you each of them sort of like as a full, like, you know, what a full wardrobe kind of appears like. So we can see the characteristics, the difference between each three. So light spring has that sort of ice creamy look about it. Yeah. yeah. It's just sort of like, oh, we're adding a touch of white to everything and it makes it all pretty. And then true spring has a sort of mediumness, you know, it like we haven't added anything to it, you know, we just like it as is kind of, you know, like a bit more that medium feel. Mm -hmm. And then Bright Spring has almost like a little bit more of that electric, like super pigmented kind of overall effect. Yeah. So I think we'll just pick uh, two to work with at a time. And then compare a few more colors, you know, going into the purples, the neutrals, whatever, just to get our bearings a little bit more. Because you can kind of see that they are slightly different personalities, right? Yeah. Like the bright is definitely a very different personality. The light has that very different kind of milkiness. And then the true, definitely that mediumness, you know, kind of offers something as well. Almost like the most muted out of all of them, yeah. right? Because it doesn't get the extra push, you know, from from going closer to white or, or to keeping in the pure pigment. So yeah. Okay, I'm thinking let's compare uh, bright and light again, which is what we started with, uh, but just more colors from each just to see. Like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just pick colors that look um, comparable to each other, right? Like green to green, pink to pink, orange to orange, this kind of stuff. Um, so if I'm doing, let me just move true spring to the end. Okay. So we tested the test drape. So now we're interested in seeing some more comparisons. So let's have a look. So for example, you know, these two, mm -hmm. this would be a good, so I'm just going to pick out a few pairings and then we'll, we'll drape them on like as a set. Okay. So that's some hot pinks from the two and then let's see. See, maybe some um, maybe yeah, like an orange and a sort of pale one. do some purple department like that they're not exactly the same hue angle but let's see anyway I think 
I think this we can see that it's definitely brighter. It's just a little bit more red. Would this be more comparable? Yeah, I'll probably do that. Okay. So that's three sets. So I'm going to pick two more. I'm keen to do something sort of tealy. Because these are nice and similar, but you can just see this looks like you've got the white added and this looks a little bit more sort of cleaner. So that will be interesting. And then maybe let me get that. And okay, so that's one, two, three, four sets. Um, let's see what else could be useful. And I reckon maybe let's do some neutrals because Light Spring has these sort of nice, kind of like almost like a is it like a cappuccino or like like a really light type of browns you know not like properly chocolate brown or not even proper coffee i don't really know what to call it like maybe cocoa in a way or something you know but it's got that sort of these are a lot of the neutrals have this sort of red red undertone basically mm -hmm. whereas i would say that bright spring has some of those but it just has a lot more grays you know a lot more sort of like desaturated Kind of tone so i'm just going to try it on with this compare brown to this gray just to kind of get like one pair of neutrals okay and that with maybe this okay so we've got a, a bunch to start with <laughs> i reckon so it's like five one two three four five pairings and then once we had a look at those, then we can just like randomly also put on some random colors from each set just to kind of whatever takes our fancy, just to kind of see where we're feeling the vibe going. Hopefully this will be enough for us to get our bearings between these two. And then we will still have whatever, whoever like, whoever wins this one will still have the other one. So let's start with mm, red slash hot pink. <laughs> okay. So they're very similar, but this is the this is the light spring. That's the bright spring. Okay. Please show us. <laughs> Talking to the colours. <laughs> okay. So they might fall off more than the other bunch because I normally tuck the rest behind the chair and then <laughs> so, uh, okay. so we might get these falling off a bit more frequently but that should be fine. Okay, so this is light spring. This is bright spring and we're looking to see is this too intense or is this too pale between the two. So I'm going to flip it a few times. Is too weak or is this too severe? <laughs> it's tricky still, isn't it? So this one still feels kind of lighter on the skin, like nice and more even. I really like that about it. Here I definitely see a little bit more discoloration going on, maybe better um, sort of uh, structure to the face here, you know, like we get a nice clean jawline. But I'm imagining, okay, let's say this is the color and we're going to apply this on the lips and on the cheeks, you know, because that, you know, you're repeating the colors on you. Mm. Is that, is that going to look a little bit sort of like we're dressing a Christmas tree or is that better? And if we were to put this a little bit on the lips, a little bit on the cheek, or is this going to like, are we going to paste your out with that? You know, so like the difference mm. between if you're a bright spring and we put you in light spring colors, they'll probably pale you. If it's the other way around, you'll probably look a bit more severed. I mean, my instinct between these two is that I think this is the cleaner one. Me yeah. Interestingly enough, but I just feel like it kind of feels just a bit more imbalanced for me. So um, 
Okay, I'm going to put it on the table. So Light Spring wins this round. <laughs> Let's do orange. Okay, so here is the Bright Spring and the Light Spring version of orange. So here we would start calling it peach, of course, but that's just Light Spring versions of orange. Um, of course, there are peachier oranges in Bright Spring and probably brighter oranges in the light spring, but this is basically how, you know, their difference is, you know, that, I mean, the lightness and the sort of contrast. So let's see if we're going to find the same thing as what we've seen with the hot pinks or not. Okay, so that's light spring. Mm. Yeah, this is still kind of the smoother look, isn't it? Mm. Just it has that more relaxed vibe somehow. Here we get a little bit discoloration, not much, a little bit. And just as an impression, it feels like the color wants to push forward a bit. You know, it just wants to say like, get out of my way and come forward, you know, like walk into the room, room before you. Whereas I don't have that feeling here. And I'm thinking, but are you overpowering the color? And it doesn't look like you're overpowering it much to me anyway. So I'm thinking, okay, that feels relatively comfortable. Yeah, this feels a little intense, maybe tinting you a little bit. Can you see? Mm. Okay. Okay, that's a, another win for Light Spring. It's doing well. It's doing well, <laughs> yeah. What did I know? <laughs> and what did I know either? I right. Thought. Yeah. yeah, and I was thinking, oh, Light Spring is probably the weakest one out of all of the springs because I haven't seen it up against the other springs. Yeah. It was, you know, the springs were always against something else. Um, yeah, so that was just a guess, an extrapolation from stuff that I've seen, but clearly not a good one. Yeah. <laughs> this is why testing is basically the best and really only way to know how it's going to reflect off of your skin, you know, because mm -hmm. you can't just sort of like, oh, yeah, you know, your eyes are this color or your hair is that color, your skin is that color here, this is the color that's going to look on you until you check it against everything else. Mm -hmm. You can't be certain that that really is, your, is the best, you know. So that's why I like doing just testing, you no know, sort of assumption making based on any apparent traits, you know, what you look like, because what if what I'm thinking you look like is just a sort of computation from my head, but not a real thing, right? Because yeah. colors are in context of the other things in your face, right? You know, mm. so the, your eye color is in context of your skin color, your breath, everything is just in context, right? Yeah. So until I separate them out one by one, I can't even analyze them properly because they're affecting each other, just like how a drape is affecting your appearance, parts of your coloring affecting the other's appearance, basically. Okay, so I forgot two purple drapes here. <laughs> Light spring, bright spring. Okay, let's see if the pattern repeats or not. You know, are we going to have a turn of events or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's light spring. <laughs> No, this is still a cleaner look, isn't it? Because that gets a little red here, can you see? Mm. Also a bit sort of gray under the eyes, like a little bit under eye circle possibly. Plus it still has that sort of heavy look that it wants to push in front of you. Like you can't match its vibrancy, can you see? Like you're, mm. you're trying, but you're saying, oh, just wait up a minute, wait up a minute, you know? Whereas here, I don't see that sort of fight you know, they have, yeah. they're walking at the same pace, you know, they're like talking at the same pace, you know, they're just kind of in more harmony, a similar frequency of vibration going on here. Whereas I can see a disjointedness between like, you know, keep up, hang on, keep up, you know, like it's got that kind of feeling where it's, where it wants you to be a little bit more than you can offer it, offer it basically. Whereas here it's like, yeah, I'm happy with your offering. Yeah, so am I, la la la. <laughs> Okay, turn your face slightly. Let me just see like what happens from the side. Mm, yeah, and I'm kind of like some graying as well. I feel like because winter is influencing this drape a little bit, that graying sort of comes out a little bit more. This just feels cleaner and fresher and more lifted. Mm. Can you see it's the same way yeah. from there? Mm. Yeah, okay. Okay, wow. Now my mind is going. 
shouldn't have been guessing ahead. <laughs> That's fine. <clears throat> this is all part of the learning for everyone, isn't it? No matter how long I've been doing this for, every single time with every client, I learn something new. It's not always about colors, you know, sometimes I learn about my process, you know, like right mm -hmm. now I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I've been guessing ahead, you know, trying to jump ahead, you know? <laughs> yeah, Whereas, but, I mean, I did the same as well. It, it, yeah, because it just depends what it was compared against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I kind of forgot which one was which, which is good because uh, we will check the labels on them afterwards. So this way, like, oh, I really forgot, so. <laughs> yeah, it's good because we'll just make an unbiased. Yeah, so I think we can kind of com compare them really, truly, sort of like unbiasedly. So, yeah, let's see where we get. <laughs> and then we have to check the label and see if we'll be tricked. <laughs> okay. I don't know which one is on top. Okay. Okay, I'll flip it a few times, but I feel like this is the one that's pulling the redness to the surface. Can you see? Like this one is evening the skin a little bit more, maybe illuminating it as well. More texture here, can you see? Mm. Very little difference though, right? Very like subtle. slight. Maybe if you turn your face slightly and then we can just look all these areas under eye circle around the nose just everywhere mm. yeah that's clean and fresh no that one that one is definitely more gray so let's check what this one is yeah this one is the bright spring again so yeah we're, we're not bad <laughs> We're, we, we're consistent, yeah, but this was a good test. Like, this is probably the lesson we needed, or I needed, <laughs> you know, not to jump ahead. Okay, so let's test the neutrals, because we got a pair here. Now, they're not the same tonality, maybe. I mean, it's possible that this one has a red undertone as well as this, but this one contains a lot less pigment, can you see? So it's a lot, lot closer to the black mark, you know, to the gray mark than this. This has a lot more pigment to it. Mm. So yeah, if I'm just gonna jump in here for a minute. Like if I take out the red, it's either red or pink. Yeah, maybe here. Let me just bring it to the light. Um, yes, so as you can see, this is kind of close to grayscale and this is somewhere along, you know, the red line, possibly here maybe, mm. that, sort of, that sort of range. So it is still a red drape, but just a lot less pigmented, a lot less colored. So with springs, we had them sort of peachier, reddier here, you know, but we also get them grayer too, like in, like in here. So, we construct this. Okay, let's see what we get. Bright spring is this one, a little bit sharper, kind of in tone. And that's the light spring one. So you can kind of see, even though the light spring will have grayish colors like this and bright spring will probably have brownish colors like this, still in terms of quality, this has that heathery, feathery lightweightness to it from summer, whereas this one has that sort of slightly sharp looking undertone from winter because that's the different categories that influence these two springs. So let's see if even with the neutrals, we get a similar, similar reading. Okay. Okay, this is the light spring one. Mm, yeah, same story. Bit more texture, bit more red, bit more gray as well, like has that severe look to it. Just a little bit, but is there. This one sort of cleans it up a bit. Turn your face slightly. Yeah, more tired under the eyes, bit more red on the nose. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there again. Mm, yeah, more texture sits on top. Okay, well for me that's enough convincing that between bright spring and light spring, I like light spring more. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, that was good. So at least now we're down to two. <laughs> so yeah. Bright Spring is out. <laughs> Very interesting. It is a turn of events, isn't it? Yeah. 
Okay, so let me tidy up these bright spring drapes because we're gonna bring out true spring now to go up against light spring. <laughs> Ah, any questions on these? This is getting intense, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I don't know which one will win in the end. Mm. Maybe light spring, actually. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, not, I'm not going to be surprised if that happens. Yeah. But true spring can have a proper go, you know? Yeah, we'll give it a chance. <laughs> give, it, give it a good go. Okay, so let me see if from these drapes, if I can find good equivalents in the true spring as well, because then we would have been comparing very similar stuff. So I'm going to hang these back on the rail and see if I can find good matches. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, I've hidden true spring. <laughs> okay. Okay. And okay, then so let's see. That's damn similar, right? <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I should get like a slightly warmer, <laughs> just because otherwise we're probably making the job like super hard. Mm. Okay, that's also similar to this. But I wonder, no, that's too big a jump. Now let's keep it close. I, I like that there, because of course, true spring is more medium, you know, so the the contrast difference will be lower so mm -hmm. you know we are now reducing that contrast so hopefully that will still give us the chance to see the best temperature between the two this can be for the purple For the teal, I'm probably going to use this test one. Unless there is a warmer one here. Sorry, this is just sort of like seeing what I've got in stock <laughs> and trying to sort of get the best ones. Oh, yeah, and then neutral. That. And then we just wanted a pink. I mean, this is super similar, but I'm gonna see if there's a. No, we'll probably just have to use that one. Okay. Okay. All right, so. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've got the five pairs. These reds look very, very similar. So if we don't see much of a difference between the two, I would not beat ourselves up on it. <laughs> uh, there will be a slight more peachiness to this. Can you see like very faintly? I'm gonna bring it closer to the light. Can you see just ever yeah. so slightly? This has this is tiny little bit cooler so this is what i meant with the color space in color space colors just flow from one to the other so in terms of the colors of the rainbow this is just a little bit closer to orange like we're literally talking by a tiny amount you know because it's that much warmer but it's enough to push it into another category but honestly in a shop like you couldn't eyeball the difference you know yeah. so that's why i'm going to teach you later on how to swatch uh, like looking for harmony rather than trying to match exact colors because you will easily easily step over boundaries like this you know if you're trying to like find a match because it would look on a small sample they would look very similar mm. okay even in large samples like this <laughs> but can, can you see behind you there is a tiny tiny difference like let me bring it to the light <laughs> tiny 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 difference in temperature but this 
I mean, it's possibly too hard to see. <laughs> Anyways, if we don't see enough with these two, then I would not worry because they look so similar that we, we might be making the, the job like super difficult. Okay, so. Um, I'm not sure which one is on top, which is a good, good job. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. I know. I know which one is this. Do you know which one's this? This is true spring because it yellowed your face straight away. Can you see? So let me pull it, pull this one up. So that's your face color. Nice and even, just like we remember it. And then look to the tint. Can ah, you see? It's like, I can see if I stare at my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah like very slight. Okay, turn your face slightly because we'll probably see the same effects happening again. So that looks like a nice clean looking skin tone. Can you see just mm -hmm. a nice clean one? And then ever so slightly more like that kind of oily look. But I mean, they're so close that we wouldn't know. So I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that is the true spring. True spring dray, but I could only know it because it doesn't look like, oh yeah, you know, this is so different, but I, you could still create a different effect. Yeah, when it's against the face. Very subtly different. So I'm yeah. going to fl flip it a few more times. But that evens the skin better and it keeps your skin tone more natural looking, you know, not sort of tinted in this way or another. Yeah. That one just looks ever so slightly yellowed, ever so slightly. So cool. mm, very very but like if I if this was at the beginning of our session or something I would I probably wouldn't have picked up on that subtlety but now that we're basically down to like a magnifying glass yeah. you know this is how I'm this is how I'm kind of um, able to just see that light like slight little detail okay peaches slash oranges <laughs> okay um. Mm. Light spring, wow. That's light spring again. That yellowing again straight away, that, mm. that tint. Wow. Yeah. Such little differences, like so, yeah, subtle. so subtle. Okay, purple. Yeah, so if it keeps repeating with every color, then we can assume that it's the same for the rest of the space, but it, it just gives us more confidence now that we're seeing a wider range from the palette, you know, that we, that we are, okay, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's that kind of reassurance, isn't it? That, yeah, we, they can see. <laughs> <clears throat> so I believe this is the light spring one and yellowing right so it doesn't look yellower but the effect on your face is that it's a, a yellow filter kind of sits on top can you see yeah that's the cleaner look more yeah. even and more clean <gasps> wow yeah. Sort of oilier or something, yeah. How strange, right? <laughs> I'm amazed. Okay, let's do the teals. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so there's that disconnect between your tonality. It's a good darkness level, but it's tinting yellow. So, yeah, that's nicer. Wow, wow. Are you surprised? Yeah, I think it's quite ironic because I have a lot of the true spring and bright spring colors in mm. my wardrobe, but I can't really think of any light springs mm. that I own. Yeah. Ooh. So, I don't think I actually own any of these colors. Wow, that's interesting. But I think it's not uncommon because oftentimes what people do, normally your best colors like really even you, really sort of 
that make you radiant, but people didn't used to be comfortable with that, you know, like looking so open and radiant and glowing, you know, that's a sort of like, oh, I'm all out there, you know? So oftentimes their instinct is to kind of, you know, like go off a little bit, you know, like a bit more muted or a bit more, there's something that kind of puts almost like a, a little bit of a barrier, you know, so it's not direct, straight route direct to you, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. So I've noticed that, that people would be like, say someone is a true summer, but have been wearing soft summer clothes mostly, you know, to kind of t tone it off a bit or, uh, you know, a bright spring may, may be wearing a bright, bright winter shade because it grays them just a tiny bit. So it's not the full glory, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, that's a definitely a pattern, you know, like people, like that because it I, I guess it gives them more comfort or yeah. you know just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so close but not close yeah there. almost like a barrier you know just like mm, I don't want you to sh I don't I don't want you to have a direct access directly to me kind of thing you know mm. interesting understandable though it's, a, it's like a yeah. protection isn't it okay so that's the light spring one That's the true spring, and again, that yellowing effect. Yeah. Yeah, because this is not a natural amount of yellowing, because it looks like you're wearing like the wrong shade of foundation or something. Can you yeah. see? It, like something feels a little bit off with it. <clears throat> yeah, that definitely feels like more neutral looking in, in, in your context. Okay then, so light spring. <laughs> What? what about that? <laughs> yeah, I did not expect that about an hour ago. Yeah, me neither actually. I, I, was, I was thinking it will be one of the other springs. So I think what we should do is, I'm going to put a few more bright springs on you because obviously we were, we were both thinking, is that going to be best? But um, yeah, the ones that I haven't compared on you are literally the very brightest ones, you know. So the bright springs that we did put on you sort of are the ones that are comparable to light spring. But let me just show you a few bright spring colors. And then a few true springs, just so we can we can kind of seal the deal on these, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so here is the bright spring bunch, and we did f f uh, try a few things, but I'm gonna just uh, put on a few others basically that we didn't. So we tried that, 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 and the purple. So luckily, I've got them all on one end that we tried. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> because when I start piling them on we will really start to see when the, if they overpower you like so much that you can't keep up with them basically. Okay. Let's do maybe. Yeah, so they're good, but they look very strong in your context. Like they, they don't feel effortless and natural. You know, they're quite sort of stark and rigid, isn't it? Mm. So this should, these should feel more relaxed, basically, in your context. So let's do a black. Just gonna do like one more. This is normally nice on bright springs. Yeah, but we can see that it looks like we're decorating like buntings in the party, right? Like it doesn't feel like elegant, effortless. If I'm saying these words out and I'm looking at you and thinking, nah, mm -hmm. you know, it's not elegant, it's not effortless, it's trendy, it's trying a little hard. Can you see in your yeah. context what's going on? And they sort of swaddle you a little bit. Can you see they're like, like oh, you know, they're trying to push you like, be more, be more, be more, you yeah, know, be like us, be like us. Separate between the face. Mm hmm Body. Yeah, so yeah, not bright spring. Okay, goodbye, bright spring. <laughs> True spring, of course, is more medium in intensity, so it shouldn't overpower you so much. But the issue that we found with these colors is that they sort of cast a yellow filter when we put the colors on. So I'm thinking when we start adding more and more of the same colors on you, it's just really going to kind of re enforce intensify that sort of yellow filter that kind of keeps it unclean and oily so let's see that okay so 
and gold. A white. A green. <laughs> Pink. This is a camel, maybe? <laughs> That's sort of like a bronzy tone. Another purple. But yeah, we can see that yellow filter just sitting on top, isn't it? Mm. Let's do a nice light. So the intensity is not overpowering as much, so it's an easier cheat you know season or cheat category because yes it will yellow you a little bit but especially in the summer that might just come across as a tan you know um so that's like a less of a problem than it being loud <laughs> you know there can be some loud colors in the in the true spring as well so but there are certainly some less loud colors like these sort of the ones that are kind of one to lean towards almost autumn you know so that's possibly the better end like canary yellows also reside here. <laughs> but yeah, we can just see that there is this kind of yellow texture to the skin and you're not, you're pulling this palette together better than you did with the Bright Spring, but they're still not, not unified enough looking. Can you see they're still a little bit, um, almost like vintage clothes on you. Can you see almost like that sort of, like a, yeah, like a costume rather than, oh yeah, that's so her. Yeah. So let's see light spring, shall we? When we pile it on, that's, that's where we should think, oh yeah, these are adding up to something good. So if we did everything well, then that's exactly what we should find now. <laughs> okay. Here are the light spring colors, the ice creams. <laughs> we were joking about that in the beginning, didn't we? And now you're getting the ice cream palette. <laughs> okay. So let's do a peachy tone. Green tone. White one. Okay. Um, let's do yellow. You can see that you're pulling them together, the palette together, m much nicer already. Can you see yeah. that you're unifying it? Yeah. So that's a good sign because that's normally what happens that the colors just look comfortable with each other in your context. Mm -hmm. And then you get these like sort of silvery chalky type tones, very nice. So they're like an off-white, not so creamy like this, which is like a yellow undertone. This is a little bit cooler. Um, get some purples. So these are from the bunches that we haven't seen. And of course, behind us, we've got some others, but you can already see that this is pulling together much nicer in your context, isn't it? Yeah, a lot nicer. Mm. Okay, so let me just bring this teal in <laughs> just for another color and this pink and then maybe this neutral. I think that's probably enough colors. <laughs> so, how are you feeling? Yeah, I think this one looks best. Yeah just feels like they're unified together and they allow you to be you, you know, and they look rich and colorful enough, just the amount that it's not going to start overpowering you basically. Yeah. And even on their own, like, you know, that's plenty rich enough looking, right? You know, yeah. imagine combining that with that. That's plenty colorful. You don't need bright spring to look 
this colorful, right? You know, like, like as soon as you start combining with a little bit of contrast inside light spring, right? Because that's fairly high contrast, you know, that's fairly high contrast. So you can start combining in such a way like you imagine bright spring to be sort of like a contrasty springy tone, but you can do that inside um, light spring as well, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Even like super high contrast, like you can do, you know, combinations like that, you know, where it's just nice and really like high contrast. Yeah. I'm thinking that's nice. This is probably nice, kind of like the whites of your eye. That's probably, oops, dropping some. That's probably nice with some kind of uh, these sort of tones, like a bluey, <laughs> like a cool lagoony stuff. Yeah. But yeah, this is the experimentation part basically where you figure out what combines nicely in your context with what, you know, because maybe you don't combine green and red together. Maybe you think that just feels kind of almost unnatural, but maybe you combine, you know, green with blue and red with blue or something like that, you know? Yeah. So yeah, we can play around with that as well a little bit just to see what might look nice. So how could you combine like blues? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting too, but kind of like 80s -y a little bit. Um, I wonder if something like purple, that's quite nice. So in your context, this is a nice combination. That's good. Um, what about also, you know, going a little bit more sort of nature themed, like that's probably a nice combo as well, yeah. isn't it? You know, so yeah, greens and blues together. Yeah, that, that's pretty nice. This green as well, where it is? <laughs> um, with the blue, that's probably nice as well. So I think, I reckon sort of nearby tones are probably nice next to each other. So that will probably mean that things like red and yellow will probably work nice together. So let me remove this. And then, mm. A couple of shades of yellow and some red you know that's kind of nice and fresh as well isn't it yeah. and if you want it to be like more elegant then of course you reduce the number of color variations so then you just go something like that you know just a bit more fashion neutrally you know you don't necessarily have to especially if for your work you have to wear you know tone down colors or something yeah. like that then this is how you can do it easily you know where you just tone it down you know just have or just like that you know like something where it's where you're just kind of stopping at the number of colors that you combine together. Okay. I'm dropping half of these. Probably better put them back on the ring. <laughs> One sec. <Ooh. laughs> Falling over. Attacked by light spring. I know. <laughs> All these drapes. I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> just the drapes coming after me. You didn't think the we were big is good enough? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I definitely thought wrong, but now I think right, so. <laughs> See, it's easy to care, correct. <laughs> okay. And then these can go back. Yeah. So how are you feeling with that? I'm really happy. Like, it was really interesting seeing how when you had them against my face, like, all of them I just loved. Mm -hmm. Like I've never seen myself look good in yellow before. Mm. Yellow like would look good. What about this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, like I never wear this kind of color. But yeah. Yeah, I can imagine like that sort of thing working, you know, like imagine like a t-shirt or something with a, with a, that kind of a color on it or you know what I mean? Like that could, that looks so casual in your context. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm trying to drape this on, but it's escaping. You know, it's just kind of such a fresh feel together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your cape is, is, is like a summer tone, so that's why I was trying to put a, a, a better, a, war, a warmer tone, because you can see when I put it on, it has a slightly more warmth to it than that. So I just wanted to make sure you don't get grayed out by that too much. Okay, 
so that's probably everything that we need to do on the draping part and then yeah the next thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you a color fan so let me grab you a light spring fan so you can look at the colors light spring let me find one mm -hmm. bright bright light light mm -mm. okay Okay. So, let me remove this. You can fan it out and you can have a look. Mm. I can probably remove your cape oh, now. Yeah. Should I take my hat off? <laughs> you can take your hat off. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are relieved. <laughs> Maybe keep your hair tied back okay. because until like you can it doesn't have to be up in a bun but just away from your face because I, I think we noticed at the beginning that it might be a little bit vivid the, a color for your yeah. for your um, features it already looked quite sort of bright looking and I think maybe it's a little bit more bright intensity than what you need but yeah we can have a look at that later as well all the hair hair yeah, colors yeah because yeah. i think tonal tonality wise i think you've got the warmth right because it's very golden it might just be a little bit intense yeah. <clears throat> i think maybe even just like trying like a silver shampoo or something to see if it sort of like just uh lightens it a little bit that sort yeah. of i don't know try it on a small bit because i don't know if it's going to make it <laughs> cooler yeah. or something you know we don't want that but yeah what do you think of your fan? Yeah. So. <laughs> Are there any surprising colors in there? I think the yellows I'm always surprised by because I just like, I think with my hair color as well, like yellow just looks really like I really like yellow if I wear yellow mm -hmm. because it's like yellow yellow yeah it's too much of it but it didn't look like too much yeah too much. well let's um let's get that yellow back out I'm just gonna bring, bring this yellow back so we can see what it looks like of course your hair will look at separately but just mm -hmm. this like, I really like it. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. And you can see that it has a different intensity from the hair, you know? Mm. So we'll have a look at the hair and we'll see how we can kind of yeah. work on that. But yeah, I, I reckon yellow can be part of your life. Happy. Yeah, I wanted to wear the Lama Land dress for a party, but I, I thought it was too much. Yeah. It was too yellow. Yeah, so but it's, it's, it's also very possible that like if your hair is the wrong yellow, then you will notice the discrepancy with what you're wearing on you. Mm -hmm. And then it's very possible that you're discarding this rather than thinking, oh, it's the hair. Of course, you can't take your hair off. So, <laughs> you know. yeah. But long term, you can definitely work with that to kind of get it a little bit more of the right intensity. So it doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't sort of interfere too much with what you're trying to build with your wardrobe and everything else. Yeah. But it's very smooth on the skin, right? It's really nice. Yeah, mm. I'm going to put a few more colors back. <laughs> so these are the kind of red ranges. You've got a lot of these kind of, I don't know, different shades of these pinks. Some of them are darker. Like this is like the light red. Oh, I love it. So, so, so sort of happy. This is sort of from like the darker end. Yeah. Oh. Really so nice. you could easily combine like same tone like low contrast on you doesn't matter you probably have a naturally sort of low to medium contrast because your skin tone your hair color i mean your brow color your eye color you know they don't contrast as high so i think you can pro probably get away with this but if you did want to look a bit more bright springy a bit more vibrant you just increase how you apply the color you just increase the contrast so instead of doing sort of this kind of low contrast you probably just do something like like a lighter peach or something you know a lighter color basically oh, I love <laughs> and then but then you can combine it with something much darker you know like say that you know or yeah. that's very high contrast or even something colorful you know but like that that's definitely like a lifted look and here right now is showing your clothes through. So this is really where the color reference is. Can you see it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit fresh, 
fresher than what we see here because some of these textiles to achieve these colors they're actually quite thin so yeah with these light categories some of the drapes can get a little bit thin but yeah you'll get nice jewelry colors that are not too bright so you can definitely go into that sort of range and then it's got a warmer end and you get a cooler end that's sort of touching on going near light summer with that going into light summer that probably sits nice and comfortable as well yeah so i think the game will be is you will kind of basically play with all the palette but then you learn where your sweet spots are you know like for some people it will be right in the bright part you know for other people it will be in the warm part for other people it will be in the light you know so it will be just an experimentation because look at the the amount of reds that you've got you know they they range from sort of like hot things to kind of more neutral reds to kind of almost oranges yeah i wonder where this was sitting but that's basically like much more on this orange line rather than there and then these are probably in the middle, like the hot pink end. And then this is where, like, this is where you get like sort of slightly cooler. I'm, I'm thinking this is possibly already. Yeah, this is probably already on the sort of cool strip. Yeah, so you get a good range. Like this is before we flow over into true spring before we fly over into light summer you know in terms of coolness and same thing with greens blues everything yeah the yellows are fun and you get all these neutrals so like i said you do get grays they're a lot warmer <clears throat> but then you get these sort of yeah i yeah. don't know is it cocoa color i don't know what to call it yeah. <laughs> are there any surprising colors in there for you other than the yellow um, i mean I don't know if it's surprising, but like I never wear brown because mm -hmm. brown is just so dark. But I guess even in brown, there's like a lighter shade. Yeah, so never really bought anything mm -hmm. brown in my life. So it's nice to know it yeah. matches me if I find the right shade. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it will be a matter of finding the right shade. So that was the warmer, warmer part of the palette, and this is the cooler yeah. part. So this is the pinkier brown, the other one's the orangier yeah. brown. This is probably the nicer one, I would say, it's like nice. a bit more effortless. It looks quite classy, actually. Yeah. I've never associated mm -hmm. with that, which is nice. <laughs> because it's a very specific shade. Like, it's really kind of almost faded or something, right? Yeah. We, so we know it's a red base because we took out the, um, the red strip. I think this was the brand that we tested with um, and yeah we were looking here and we were somewhere around here with it can you see mm. so it's like a slightly so it's a red kind of like your peaches but dark and slightly and really desaturated it's kind of there yeah so you'll get colors that are in the in the lighter peaches but then yeah this brand mm. on this exact um, wave light wave it's basically an almost gray Mm. red yeah so it's not really a brown is a red or an orange or a yellow dependent on the on the shade because they they do graduate yeah from sort of pinkier towards orangier so this seems to feel like in the middle mm. because it's neutral yeah so light spring <laughs> okay great so um I think the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move over into having a look at some of the clothes that you brought. So we're going to swatch a few. I want to teach you how to use the color fan because just like the way we were draping, we weren't like matching colors like, oh, let me see if this drape matches your eye or hair. We didn't do that. Yeah. We put the drape into the context and then we were looking to see what kind of illusions, what kind of effects it's creating. So that's exactly how we're going to harmonize. We're going to put the fan on the clothes and we're looking to see how are they, how is the fan, how is the, how is the clothing communicating with the colors on the fan? How do they affect each other? Um, and then if there's any observations, you know, like, oh, it feels heavy, oh, it sits in the background, oh, it's too bright, oh, it's this, that, and the other, you know, like yeah. we will find very similar kind of vocabulary to what we've been finding before. Um, yeah, so, That's yeah. Exciting. Yeah, so yeah, we'll probably go and um, grab a few of your clothes now and then, yeah. great. Thank you. So, let's do this, shall we? Right, so here, so what I tend to do with the color fan, 
when I'm swatching clothes, because the clothes are larger than the fan, so like let's say I, if, if I was swatching these, these trousers, they're larger, so I actually fan out the pages with little gaps in between the pages. And like on my trousers, of course, it's not going to look as nice because they're not a light, it's not a light spring color. But basically sometimes I use these sort of extra pages to kind of create almost like a spine so that it's easy for me to lift it up, put it back down again. But can you see how I left little um, gaps between the pages? Yeah. Um, the reason why I do that, because this way I'm allowing the color to sort of like bounce the light in in between the pages and sort of come in so we can see the relationship that it's forming uh that is forming between the colors of the trousers and the colors of the the fan but it's quite easy to see when i'm putting it on there the, the color just sits behind it feels quite sort of stark and and dark and and possibly cool tone as well it's nowhere near matching the the freshness of of the colors from this palette from the light spring palette so it's dark looking like for example let's imagine that we're combining like this pink with that color and that green it just it looks kind of gloomy not as colorful as the trousers are actually quite colorful but here next to these colors they look sort of less colorful definitely sit separate in the background uh, if i was to compare it to a blue that does work with these two colors like here can you see how it just comes much more foreground and they yeah. have a similar quality quality to them uh, and as soon as I'm going to the trouser colors it just sort of like there's a dis disconnection uh, going on between the two so that's basically how I normally use the color fan I p place it on items and I I'm looking for relationships and sometimes I'm double checking so once I get my first impression like okay it looks like it's sitting in the background a little dark a little heavy looking Sometimes I notice, okay, it's too cool toned or something like that. But this, I haven't noticed it being too cool toned, but I definitely noticed that it's kind of harder, darker, heavier than the, than the overall light spring palette. But as soon as you start doing this, like, oh, can I combine this yellow with that gray with this color? It just doesn't feel like a nice color to add to the yellow and the gray, right? Yeah. But if I'm pulling a, a, a blue, that is a good one, right? Suddenly, it's a similar kind of you know, indigo-y tone blue, right? But because it's in the light spring tone, look how nicely it combines, yeah, it match. right? And the same thing will happen, you know, do you remember yesterday when we were putting things in your context? So this fan is now sort of a representative for your face because that's what we kind of match these colors to, that's what we harmonize it to. So think of the fan and the colors on it is, is a reference for you. So now I'm thinking, okay, so these are references for you because we know these colors look great on you. So if I'm adding this blue, is that gonna look great? And this is how it's going to look basically in your context, fresh, colorful, light, you know, nothing sort of crazy looking. But if I'm adding that color to the, to the gray and the yellow, you know, it yeah. just feels like that heavy, gloomy, tired, you know, it just disconnected in general. Yeah. So yeah, so that's basically how I use the color fan. Um, so I think um, we'll, we'll basically just go through the clothes that you brought. We check them for their um, level of harmony, what it feels like. Some things will feel really close where it's harder to decide. Others like this will be very clear cut, like, okay, that's it's in the background. That's too cool. That's too heavy. Others will be like, ooh, what is it? You know, so we'll go through it with different types of examples. So you kind of get to learn the whole range of relationships that can be formed and then yeah and then we we can give it a score as well uh for each item you know like how close it felt you know like how good it felt because that way you can start ordering your clothes in your wardrobe according to how close a harm you know how harmonious they are with your palette and then it will be easier to kind of know you know like to have a good pile and when it's important you know or when it's when you when, you, when it matters you know then you just grab out all your like you know high scoring items you know and that's what you dress from you know yeah, <laughs> in yeah. your wardrobe so instead of ordering them like here's my t-shirts here's my jumpers here's my trousers it will be here's my nine and ten out of tens here's my seven and eight out of tens and here is everything else you know <laughs> so you'll be basically ordering them in a scoring system because that way at the beginning you'll probably have very few in your nine and ten out of tens so of course you need like a, almost like a second best pile you know mm. so those will be the seven and eight out of tens so nine and ten out of tens will be basically clothes that are either light spring or mostly light spring like a multi-pattern item like let's say this dress you know mm. it could be that you know maybe the base color is off or there are some colors on it that isn't because with combined prints like combined palettes like this oftentimes it's not a, a 
pure palette you know like so okay. those can never be a 10 out of 10 those can only ever be a 9 out of 10 if it's mostly harmonious but there's just a few kind of distractions and then yeah and then the next level down will be things like oh it's a bit more true springy because it's a bit warmer or it's a bit more bright springy it's a it's a bit brighter you know so those will be the ones that still looked nice on you but um uh, but they were like off in slight ways yeah, um, so that will be your second best pile that contains either like light summer colors that are a little bit cool, you know, so we'll check, of course, before we score them on you as well. But yeah, that's basically how I like to sort of systemize it at the beginning, because it gives you a good starting point of how you're going to deal with your current wardrobe. And, and then once you've done that assessment, you can then figure out what does my wardrobe need right now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so is that all clear? Yeah, no, I'm really excited. Okay, cool. So, okay, let's move on to the clothes. Let's see what you brought with you. So, shall we, yeah. shall we get some of these items? Yeah, you pick, you, uh, you've got a lot of, yeah, you've got a lot of colorful things. I reckon we should, well, anyway, you pick, because what we're going to do is I'll probably show you three or four myself of how I swatch it, and then it will be you picking the rest up uh, and swatching them, harmonizing them. So give me the ones that you're most scared of. Most scared of. <laughs> yeah, in okay. a way that you won't be able to... Swatcher. Or and it doesn't matter what you give me. Yeah. Um, I guess this one's got quite a strong like pattern. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know how on earth I would. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So another useful little tidbit is that when you cl when you're swatching multi pattern items, I mean this one has a nice uniform pattern, meaning that the pattern is the same all over. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you will get patterns where like if some co some color is here, other colors are there. You know, like it's sort of like it's not a uniform pattern like this. Uh, so I normally fold the clothes on my lap uh, with the area that's kind of like around your chest you know that's going to be reflecting the most of its color onto your face mm -hmm. so that's the one I want to that's the one that I'm interested in the most so that's the one that we need to make sure that it is really good but if let's say here we had like another color near the bottom that's like on your waist or on your back or something that's a little bit less important if it's like slightly off you know mm -hmm. uh, because it won't be reflecting from like here down your hip all the way onto your face you know it, it will scatter around a lot more whereas anything right here yeah. has a direct line onto your face so they'll be having a bigger effect on you basically okay so what I do with the fan like I showed you at the beginning is open the pages with little gaps so I'm going to close it again so, so you can see it again so I'm going to um, use the um, the extra pages that don't have color samples on them as a, as a spine so i'm going to do that now and then i will fan it out just leaving little bits of gaps there's quite a lot of pages so okay, sometimes can't leave like two large gaps <laughs> okay let me move them around a bit more okay okay so here it is and so normally I start with first impression what is my first impression here my first impression is that I think this is off it's not fully harmonious possibly because a lot of the base color is quite sort of strong like you know these blues feel kind of a little bit dark and heavy uh, and the yellows feel a little bit too cool tone, like really sort of like in your face. So I'm thinking there's a lot of colors here that want to kind of overpower the colors on the palette. Sometimes what I do is I lift it up again so I can look at the item separately without my fan and back on it again just to see what happens. But I'm thinking, oh wow, no, it stays in the background. It doesn't really want to sort of play with the fan, let's say. You know, it doesn't yeah. really want to sort of work together with the fan pages and it has so many colors and we can start analyzing if there's any nice colors in there but everything feels just a little bit sort of no that your fan colors sit on top in a way almost like too ice creamy too light looking and this is sticking in the background feeling you know much more vivacious i would say but let's say let's say what shall we combine let's say we combine this green with a peach and let's see if anything else from this palette wants to kind of work with them. But can you see how stark those are? Yeah. You know, combining that, that, and like that, this doesn't work. What about that? It's a bit better, you know, maybe not as heavy as my leggings were, like ever so slightly yeah. uh, less sort of gloomy looking, but it's still heavy sitting in the background. It's just mm. not fresh. 
What about the white parts? No, I mean, everywhere I move, you know, this is quite a sort of small print. It just feels like it's much brighter. So my instinct is that this is a lot more into the bright seasony kind of category, some winter influence in here. Um, we don't even need to know exactly where it belongs. We can just see that, okay, it sits separately from the fan. Yeah. Now, let me just reach for a, yeah, like a light spring ring, just as an example of what happens when you've, when you've got a color. Let's say if that was the top, can you see we're putting um, it on here and suddenly we see like, okay, yeah, it wants to play together. You know, it wants to be sort of like the similar kind of intensity. It wants to come forward and be part of the fan. Um, Whereas here, can you see just like, no, and the colors look sort of like light and washed out and pasty. Yeah. So uh, the next step is like, once you kind of make this determination that, okay, something feels off here and you don't always have to be able to put your finger on it exactly. Later on that will kind of build. There's quite a lot going on with it. Firstly, too dark. Secondly, possibly too cool as well. Uh, just judging judging it be based on the kind of yellows and the kind of sort of royal blues there. They feel like possibly, I don't know, wintry more than springy to me. Uh, but yeah, we don't even need to know what that is. We can just see the first impression. It's not like you're going to have the, all, the, all the palettes, you know, to ch check everything. You yeah. know, the point is you need to know that with your palette, it's feeling a little bit off. Is it quite easy to see? Yeah, yeah, I can tell it doesn't match, mm -hmm. when, especially when you did it like this. Yeah, that's really, really helpful. Really helps. Yeah, that really helps. And then, yeah, once you do a few, like, for example, okay, what about my yellow and grey? Like, does it work with them? You know, and you just think, gosh, you know, that yellow is so soft and gentle and the grey as well and everything else is just like a sledgehammer, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, totally no, you would take this colour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after you've sort of decided, okay, I think I've got an idea of this, then I then I like to sort of check it with you as well, just to just to make sure that this is what we're reading with you as well, because the fan is a reference for your face, but I always like to double check what's going on with your face as well, because remember the whole fan is a sort of a wider range palette than your own natural range so uh yeah everyone will sit slightly differently within their palette so we kind of see as well you know what happens with you as well yeah. um i'm wondering if we should put your just hair back a little bit. Yeah, yeah like this is fine okay. yeah okay so let's have a look at this so and now we're putting it on you and i'm just pulling your hair back just to even help more just in case the hair uh, is a bit bright but can you see how it also feels just really stark and separate in your context it just feels really overpowering just like it did with the fan can you see it's just yeah. a, there like a sledgehammer right yeah. and if I bring back our sort of reference blue just as a sort of checkpoint so that looks so much better <laughs> you know I can breathe you know I'm there yeah, and this one is just pulling on the red. It's, it's doing a really stark look, like, oh, and then that stern, strict head teachery look. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, and this is the point where we score it, where we decide, like, how off it is. Is it a little bit off or a fair, fairly bit off? What do you think? It's fairly off. It's fairly off, yeah. So, <laughs> this goes in the off pile. Like, you don't want to be wearing clothes like this because it isn't just a little yellowing or a little this and a little that, you know, it's it's a big bit off, you know, yeah. so uh, could we find even worse colors? I'm sure we could, but like, you know, anything that's a score of five or less is just bad. Why do we want to deal with that? You yeah. Know? So here you go. Thank you. Right. So let's do a, a traffic light system. Green for good, nine and 10 out of 10. Yellow, slightly off, so mm -hmm. still wearable. You can still go, but just you have to be careful. And then the red or pink here, is a no don't use it unless you have to so i keep the sort of off clothes you know that are not so great for things like uh say they're really comfortable you know then then you can definitely use it just like casually if you don't have alternatives that are better yeah. better and also comfortable but sometimes they are a bit more like like for me it was like i had a ski jacket that was really not like a little bit off it was a fair bit off but how often do i need a ski jacket for you know so i thought mm, but I'm not going to um, sort of actively look for a replacement ski jacket because it's not like I need one, you yeah. know. And then I just have to deal with, you know, at the time if I need one, you know, like how much I care about it not looking so good, you know. Mm. So I had one that was a fair bit off, you know, maximum five or six out of ten kind of score, you know. 
But I just thought, no, I, it, it's fine for when I need it because I'm not a regular winter holiday person, you know. So there'll be uh, occasional items that you might use and things like shoes, trousers, blah, blah, blah. They're further away from your face. So it doesn't matter if at the beginning you don't coordinate them as well with the rest of your wardrobe. Like it's really useful to focus on the top half of your body because it will be reflecting more. Mm. So that includes all the you know tops, dresses, jackets, scarves, accessories, makeup. Basically, these are mm. the most important ones to sort of really focus on at the beginning. But yes, long term, it it is actually useful to kind of coordinate the rest as well because when you zoom out, when you we don't see you from close up. Yeah it will be visible that something is off, you know, like just like how I'm putting some colour next to another colour and it feels yeah. a little off. It, you will feel not holistically kind of flowing, you know. But most of the time people kind of focus on your face and your top half even when you're having a conversation, you know. So it's only when you're like further away when it matters, you know, like say if you were standing on a stage, I would be probably yeah. saying, hey, look, it's very important for those sessions, you know, that everything from top to toe is really in balance, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, sitting in front of a camera or like just most everyday kind of situations, people only taking the top half of you basically. Yeah. The rest is in the peripheral vision kind of blurred out. And like if I if I asked uh, asked you like, oh, what trousers am I wearing? Of course, now we switched it so you know, <laughs> but like you, you would have to look to know, right? You know, yeah. with most people you just wouldn't know, you know? Yeah. So, okay. Right. So the score, what do you think the score is? I mean, it's definitely not green. No, um, no, no, no. And it's not yellow either because yeah. it's not slightly off. So we said it's very off. Yeah. But like from a te- from a zero to ten scale. Like how off it is. Mm-hmm. So is ten the worst? Uh, no, ten is the best. Ten is the best. Zero yeah. is like, you're, you're deadly. <laughs> uh, I'd say like, what do you think? Like a four, four or five? That yeah. sort of score. Like when I Could, look at the rest of the clothes, I can tell this is probably one of the worst. Design. Yeah. So, yeah, like I mean, you, f- you feel into it, you know, like how you, how you but it was really kind of pushing, pushing, yeah. wasn't it? I think I like the pattern, just not the pattern on me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes like the shape of the clothes is really good as well. Yeah. So what you can do is keep, you know, the pile with the clothes that have good shapes or something like that, because you can deconstruct them later and buy some fabric. And when it's when, once it's deconstructed, you can take it to a seamstress, you know, like with the, the with the pattern that basically uh, is formed when you take out all the thread from this. Yeah. And then they can make up from a new fabric that you have harmonized nicely to your fan, you know. Just recreate the same top in good patterns and yeah. good colors for you, you know. And then so so if sometimes you find items that oh I just love this shape, it really suits me, you know. Then keep it even if it's a really bad color, but you know that you'll be deconstructing it. And, and making new clothes from the pattern that, yeah. you, that you create. So um, that's something is useful for, of course, maybe for tops, you'll probably just find them. But if especially if there are some dress shapes or specific things or anything that you often struggle finding a good cut for, those are the things that you definitely want to keep for, for this sort of purpose. Right. So I'm going to give you the, the, the pad, but basically you can write yourself notes uh you. you know whether you just want to put you know four or five out of ten and you, you know, any any notes you want for yourself because this is just for when you're at home and want to reflect back on what we found you know um the stuff we said about it <laughs> it was a bit stark wasn't it <laughs> yeah, stark um, yeah it, was stern. it was stern was very separate with the fan you know it just sort of stayed behind a bit overpowering and when we put it on your face, it was sort of definitely pulling up that redness and kind of created that, that really sort of scary look, you know, like the strict head teacher. <laughs> yeah, Miss Trunchbull. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to Miss Honey. Yeah. Okay, so we can we will create three piles basically with our with this system. <laughs> and then we'll see where we're at with the items that you brought, but then you will carry on the same thing at home with all of your wardrobe and see where you're at. That's this is basically how you're gonna analyze everything you got. Okay, next item. Uh, oh I'm quite interested in that. So I wear this turtleneck a lot, but I don't mm-hmm. think it actually goes with me very well. Okay, so let's figure it out. Interested to see. Yeah. Do you want to give it a go or shall I, shall I swatch it? Uh, maybe you. Okay, I'll swatch time. it. No, I'm happy to show a few examples, <laughs> definitely, because, you know, th- then you then once you know how the game goes, then you can do it. Okay, so I've got my fan. 
and this is my face, yes, so this is our woman, you know, if we mm-hmm. want to think separately from, from that, uh, and make sure I've got my little gaps. So remember the first step, first impression. So we're looking for what's the first overall impression. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, what do I see here? Mm-hmm. And the first impression is that it's so much better than the, the item that we just looked at, right? It's just, it wants to come forward, right? Yeah. So it says, oh, hey guys. You know, so it's got a sort of gentler, warmer, nicer feel about it. Um, is it perfect? No. I feel like there's there. it's slightly off in some way. Because if I'm looking at, say, you know, combining colors here, like let me just turn it sideways a little bit. So let's say I'm combining, you know, that pink and this green and that sort of, let's say, rusty color in the middle. It just feels, ooh, like, is it slightly warmer maybe? Or is it a little bit more muted? You know, there is, there is like a, you know, this feels a little cleaner um, yeah. sort of type of color. Even here as well, I feel like they're like milky and white. So can you see here? Like if I'm combining that with that and that, I'm thinking, oh, it's a nice color, but sort of sits a little bit in the background. And these colors look like they have more white content. Can you see? Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking this is the light season intensity because it has that whitish look. But the color in between sort of doesn't quite have enough of that to it. So yeah. it could be like maybe it's either in the soft autumn range. So it might be that that is just kind of on the gray side. Or it could be something like a true spring, you know. Mm. It could be that it's on the warm side. It's hard to tell, but it's definitely not a light intensity, right? Mm. And again, it doesn't matter to us where exactly it sits in the rest of the color space because we can still just with your fan see that it is almost good you know and with some colors it will look nicer than it will than it will with others like let's say if i'm combining it with this gray and that yellow that's oh that's almost wants to work and you see it's just like that's really close it still yeah. sits separately not quite as milky as the other colors but you know and with other colors it will be worse like with these two you can really see the difference right mm-hmm. There you're just like, okay, now that's that's now we're going further away from it because everything is a continuous flow in color space. So yes, with some of the brighter, less milky versions of the colors from your palette, it would work better. So I'm thinking this is only slightly bit off. Okay. Either in the autumn direction or if it is still within the spring range because it kind of want it kind of wants to feel clean enough, but it doesn't matter to us exactly how it is off. We can just we can just identify that okay, it's a little bit off. So, um, yeah, let's check it on you. That's the next step. So, and then we score it. <laughs> so put your hair back behind you so oh, that yes. we can see the reflection. And then you look in the mirror. So drape it on so that your other dress doesn't show. That's it. So let me come behind you. Okay. Okay, so my thinking now and I'm just gonna hide your hair a little bit, is that it has a slight muddy effect on your face. So I don't think it's in the spring range because the spring colors, even if they were a bit too bright or too yellow, they always cleared your complexion, mm. right? But this one has that sort of slight muddyish kind of look. So I'm thinking we're definitely in the autumn space with it. Okay. It's not pulling the redness to the surface like the color before, you know, that sort of really wintry looking one. So it is a little bit better, but it's not as good as, as I would like it to be. So it's a higher score than the previous one to, for me, but I'm thinking, hmm, sort of like, you know, maybe a six or, or a seven maximum, you know, because for me, for it to be sort of like, yeah, maybe now a seven, I, you know, for me to be a seven or an eight, it still needs to kind of create a glowing, clearish look, you know? Yeah. And this is a little bit muddy, can you see? Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm thinking, okay, it's not pulling red to the face, so that's nice, but it's not keeping it's not keeping your radiance sort of flowing, you know, it just sort of creates a little shiny, oily muddiness. So yeah, for me this would be something like a six and almost seven, you know, like if it was a bit more colourful, but I'm thinking yeah, that your that your off ones will be in the other springs, maybe a light summer if it was on the on, on the sort of warmer end or something like that. But this is telling me no, me we kind of need to be a little bit cleaner than this. Do you agree? I agree, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's fold it up and then you can... Um, so I think for me, this still gets a red sticker. Oh, yeah, it's a bit better than that. So you can wear this more, depending on what you find. If you want, you can 
you can put because it will have six out of ten you will know it's better than that right so yeah. at home you can break down your your red um, pile into further down into two maybe you can have a black pile or like a completely off pile you know that you don't yeah. want to wear um, but I think we're going to find some better off ones you know that are not perfect but still are going to be a bit more cleansing on your face yes this one is like muddy mm -hmm. it was a good intensity though so it wasn't sort of too overpowering it was just kind of not clear enough Do one more and then the rest you'll be doing and I'm just sort of feedbacking. Um, okay, this is a really tough one then. <laughs> okay, good, good. There's no way I can do this one. <laughs> yeah, you can. You, you're seeing how we're working, right? There's okay. so many colours. <laughs> yes, but again, this is a uniform pattern, right? And it repeats um, in very sort of like it's a small pattern meaning yeah. that it repeats quite closely so like you know we can just fold it this way and we know that this is basically how the reflection will be so i'll do the same thing as i do do always is look for first impression at at, at start hmm. okay so my first impression of course this has a lot more colors so my first impression is that might be some colors here that are friendlies, like the yellows want to kind of come forward a little bit and say hi. Yeah. But overall, it has a gloomy and grayish feel. Can you see? Yeah. Just overall, if I'm lifting it, looking at it separately, okay, this is how the item is. But as soon as I put these colors on, it just looks gray and gloomy. Mm -hmm. So my thinking is, okay, I think because it's not so stark looking, it's probably not winter, but it's definitely cool toned on the whole because it has that sort of grey look like look how colourful these are and then just everything else in between is so gloomy yeah. looking right um, same again here you know there might be the odd colour that wants to come forward like the yellows are saying hey I'm not too bad maybe some of the blues are saying like oh I'm also not too bad you know but overall when, when you add up everything it just feels grey and gloomy you know and we don't have to like analyze it color by color it won't matter because we will see it holistically on you and we see we can have a look at it holistically here and we're just thinking gosh that's going to be hard to combine that's just not a nice combo right so it will feel kind of grayish and gloomy on you as well so let's see it on you shall we drape it on with hair back okay just tidy your hair away. You have to hold this one because it's all yeah. straps. Yeah. Okay. So it's less gloomy than it is with the fan, so that's a good sign. Yeah. Because it's a bit more colourful than let's say the one that we scored just right before. I'm thinking, okay, so it's containing a few colours, like the yellows here want to come forward. You know, they're saying like, oh hey, I'm not so bad, and you and your colouring is saying, Yeah, I know, but what's all that other stuff doing there? You know? <laughs> So it's actually better a little bit than what we see with the fan. So, but it's still not great because it's still a little bit sort of like, let me use a reference color just so we can see what happens when we have um, colors that lift here. Like I'm putting it here and immediately we're getting an illumination. Can you see, imagine yeah. if these were the colors in the pattern, suddenly you'll be glowing more, can you see? Yeah. And I'm taking it away and that sort of grays down not too bad though so i'm thinking okay it's a summer category so it's got the lightness that you need mm. but it's a little bit cool tone so it's just pulling a tiny amount of red maybe a little bit of that kind of ashy look do you remember what we what we seen with your neck when the color was too cool it's got that sort of greeny bluey ashy kind of um tint to it versus when we got co colors that are sort of cleaner yeah, yeah then then suddenly we don't get that sort of exp expression and it just lifts your face a bit more can you see it's just suddenly glowing the face better so much better and then here just a bit more redness but it's more subtle it's not as bad as with the with the winter one right mm. that we can see this darkness also sits on the top you know it was just giving us a much heavier impression but for me this is still off enough you know yeah 
Um, what I like about it is that it's not as not as muted looking. Definitely not as muddy. It's not clean, but not as muddy. So for me, um, I would probably give it. What do you think? What What's your instinct saying on the score? Um, is, is it still a red? I guess. Yeah, for yeah. me, it's still a red because. But like, yeah, the high end. Yeah. yeah. So. That would probably be still a six, right? But it's off. Mm -hmm. So that one was fine in a temperature, but it was a bit mudding. Mm -hmm. This one is less mudding, but it's nice because it's kind of colorful, you know? Yeah. And it's got the lightness about it, which you can kind of carry off, you yeah. know? But it's still too cool toned, a little bit tired looking. Okay, so six. Yeah, here six as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just put that this is more Ooh, in the summer yeah. range or something, right? So that you remember. So the intensity was not too bad actually because it had a bit of softness about it but not in a sort of too uncolorful way which is which is why I wanted to work it and maybe a couple of the colors were sort of springier you know it's a very multicolored pattern you can even see that some of these colors clash with each other right like yeah that pink with like some of these clearer yellows it doesn't even doesn't even go together yeah. <laughs> it's quite sad because i think if i've had it for so many years i think over time the colors might have like spread in the wash you know and that does happen so it's very possible if it was a bit more luminous maybe if the background color was a fresher or something yeah. sometimes clothes will fade and for springs that that becomes a problem so mm. if you were a summer that often doesn't matter because the the fading is normally a graying effect and it it doesn't That's normally funny. change the temperature but i feel like for springs especially for light spring where the colors are so clear you know yeah it w that will be sort of like sign that you just have so to work sad. with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So okay. next item. Um, choose your first one that you are not scared of. Uh, I'll choose my favorite. <laughs> okay. Cool. This dress. Okay. I love this dress. But it's probably slightly off. But I can't. Okay. Well, you well you tell me. So <laughs> open it large enough. And do you remember how we open it? Which part of the pattern goes to the front? Whatever is near your face. Top, Obviously, yeah. it's a uniform pattern as well. You, most of your clothes seems to have a uniform pattern, so normally this will be all fine, but I just want you to get the habit to know that whatever is near the face is what matters the most. But yeah, it's all uniform, so it should be fine. Sliding down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to be strict, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to close it so you practice opening it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit fiddly, that's why. Right. <laughs> Remember I make a spine with the extra pages that don't have color? Just because then it's easier to lift it up and down. You don't have to, just... Put the cap. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. So maybe it doesn't match as much as I thought. <laughs> Okay, so first impression. Um, so it's like quite dark, I guess. Is it maybe the same kind of grey thing? It's uh, a little grey looking, isn't yeah. it? Sort of. Because it's got a few um, brighter colours in it, it, it's trying to offset the greyness, right? So if it was just this grey, I feel like it would be quite dull and gloomy. Yeah. But because it's got a few of these brighter colours, it's sort of trying to sort of counterbalance all that greying. Mm. So that possibly lifts it a little bit for, you know, for your fan. But the bright colours look very stark. Like that yellow does not look warm toned to me. Does it no, look to you? it doesn't. No. And even with the purples, they still feel quite sort of cool toned. So overall, to me, it just feels both a little bit too grey and a little bit too cool. Try and combine a few colours and see if you're enjoying yeah. the combination, but no, it is, right? It is grey, it's like the thing that comes through. Mm, yeah. So it will probably just feel a little bit grey and colourless in your context. Which is sad, because I feel like this probably used to be blue, but I think it's... A bit more colourful, you mean? Yeah, yeah, I think it's faded over time again. Yeah. It's really sad. Yeah. 
but that's that will happen but if you love the cut of the dress you know like these are probably simple enough shapes that yeah. once you've taken out the thread and created a pattern you know just on a on a like i don't know i think they use um that type of um well, I think you can use different kinds of paper, but something that doesn't tear easily, like a sort of greaseproofy paper. There's yeah. probably actually p- p- pattern cutting paper specifically for, for making patterns. Then you can just, each item, you know, this is the collar, you know, like once you folded it open, you know, and then draw around it and keep it and you know that that was your blue dress pattern because yeah. if otherwise the shape is good, once you start buying these type of fabrics, you know, fabric is not very expensive. You know, they mm-hmm. start from like five pounds a meter, to you know maybe 20 if it's like fancy stuff you know yes some of the designery stuff can be really expensive but there's so so many fabrics um and it's much easier to find the right fabric because yeah. then you're not restricted with the shape having to work you know yeah. so you've got more options you're widening your options and then if you've got a couple of patterns you just have to bear in mind when you're looking for fabric that this man might not work this shape might not work from all kinds of fabric like it might not work with a cotton drill you know that mm. might have to be some trousers or jackets or something you know yeah. so you, you know you just have to wear in mind like how it might fall you know the the type of fabric you're buying but other than that yeah you need you need to make sure that it doesn't look gloomy gloomy and gray so yeah drape it on you please mm-hmm. sorry i know we're a bit strict here but at least you're you're taking stock of where you're at with everything yeah it will be easier for you to build once you know <laughs> We still need to look at your hair, figure out where that that is. So it's not bad, but I can just see that there is redness. Can you see on the face? Yeah. We've seen that with the summer colours, you know, where it was. Because it's also soft, it's a little muddy as well. So it's like a, that greyish muddiness plus a little bit of redness. So let me grab, um, let me see, like some, like alternative. If the base of this dress was less gloomy color yeah then you know sometimes then it wouldn't matter if some of the little dots of color is off because as long as it pulls it together but let me just see like what other base it could have okay i mean that's probably the most similar i just don't have an example that's not that's not much much different you know not, not even that is yeah i'm gonna do this one the test ray just look how much your face lights up straight away yeah whereas it's much gloomier yeah muddier grayer redder i think it wants to almost like it wants to like communicate with your eyes but it's at the expense of your skin can you see mm. it wants to say like hey can't you see that you know i'm talking with your eyes but this one is talking with the eyes but yeah. also keeping the skin clear you know so and there will clear. be there will be grays there will be sort of darker blues and things like that that will work better for you than this sometimes when a color is off so, I mean, it's got a lightness to it, you know, it's in the summer range, so we're enjoying the, that it's lighter, but it's still a little grey and gloomy for me, so mm. I reckon this is probably another six. Another six. Sorry. <laughs> I did say, though, I, I don't think I actually own any clothes in my light spring. There might like, be an odd one, like, you might be surprised, like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know ooh. this, or I didn't think this, you know? Occasionally you find a surprising one, you know, and then yeah. in your head like, oh, that makes sense because I remember I, you know, I picked it up on a whim or I had it since I was little and always wore it or whatever. It's my yeah. favorite pajama top or something, you know, like you don't know what you're going to find. You literally swatch everything, your blankets that you cozy up in, you know, dressing gowns, pajamas, all this kind of stuff because you, something will make sense if you find a good one, you know, you will be like, ah, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Mm. yes because like a color like this here mm. can you see let me just see how close that is to the dress you know like that would be mm. a nice to clearer base so it still has that grayness to it but not quite as dulled down basically yeah so next to that some of those bright colors will be still separate looking because even it doesn't even go with that it's background very interesting yellow isn't it yeah <laughs> i mean whoever 
combine this pattern probably <laughs> wanted that little bit of a clashing kind of appearance you know it wanted that probably it's quite whimsical to kind of combine in this in this way when you're not looking for a sort of smooth harmony but almost yeah. like a sort of slightly I don't know almost like wanted to bring in like a touch of um um like controversy or something like that yeah <laughs> like bright and crazy mm -hmm. okay yeah. what's next Maria? yeah I think I thought it back up again. No, no. <laughs> as long as I just made you practice it, basically, so you know, time. so you remember. Yeah, but yeah, as long as you get little gaps, you should be fine. Mm -hmm. So, what's the first thing that we check? Um. How it the general like feeling mm -hmm. first impression the, yeah, yeah like an overall time. first impression yeah it's not bad mm -hmm. it's probably the best one we've seen so far right yeah but is it perfect good or is it still slightly off um, and it's got two main colors right so it's got the blue and it's got the white so we can check both of them separately but as an overall impression um, is it looking perfect like wow that's really cool. Or is it? Could it be slightly off still? I genuinely don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this I, is... the blue looks really good, mm -hmm. but I don't know about the white. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know if the white is not the right white. Maybe exactly. So this is it's that's exactly what I'm seeing as well. So oh, we're saying the great. same thing. So it's a sort of like oh, it, it could be slightly still off because the white feels like it might be a bit grey or something, mm -hmm. but the blue feels like that's pretty good. Yeah. So this is the point where I would probably try to do some combining where I'm looking at just the blue separately and then trying to look at the white separately as well, trying to reconcile like what is it that we're picking up on. Mm. But if I'm just looking at a general area here, I'm thinking, oh, there is something off about this, you know, like, yeah. and it, it seems to be the white, you know, so let's just have a look at that, shall we? Yeah. So. Down the white. And what do you think? Is it, the white's a bit grey. Yeah, so it's a bit grey, so it might be that the white base is a bit cool or something. Mm. Especially if you combine it with brighter tones. That, that definitely mm. looks grey there, can you see? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely got grey to it. Alright, and then let's look at the blue. Combine it with some unusual things as well. Blue vibes. Mm -hmm. So that's much clearer, better, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try it with some neutrals too. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to yeah, be quite happy. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, like, the the it's now so little. Like, even if the blue wasn't perfect, it's it's near enough it you know like w as much as the eyes can see so that's probably what we experience in your context but the white base is throwing it off a little bit mm. so i'm guessing that this is probably going to be not in in the um, the green light system because it's not nine or ten out of ten mm. it might be basically a strong eight but let's check it on you and then yeah. decide the scoring then because of course we can score it just with the fan but it really is the most useful when we see it with you because it might be a little bit better looking with you or a little bit worse looking with you than the, the totality of the fan because at the beginning you're still figuring out exactly how you sit in within the space but once you know like oh i know that you know these are my best yellows those are my yeah. best greens then you're checking it against those specific colors that you know they are your kind of sweet spot inside the palette yeah because that will give you more accurately how much of it will be with you right now we don't know yet because we literally just discovered that this this type of harmony is like your best kind of starting point you know yeah uh, but yeah let's drape it on you and then trying to fold the neck part oh no actually the neck part is the good, good color so so you can have quite a lot of that near your neck mm -hmm. and then we'll Put your hair away. Put it up on my 
内障です。うん Okay. So you, you talk me through it. So it's, clear, it's less muddy than before. Less muddy. But I can see the slight offness still, can you? I can, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and then the gray does, the, sorry, the, the white doesn't look as sort of clean. It has that sort of almost like washed look, you know? The blue、mm. is better, but even that feels possibly on the cool side. So we might、yeah. be just into light summer with this, you know? Like this、mm. might just be in the, in the light summer, so just slightly. In fact, if I grab some light summer drapes. You know, I'm going to put like some light summer drapes in here. Yeah. <laughs> and then it may not be, but let me just see. And then some light spring on this side.、Um, it, yeah, it feels much more this side. So、way. if I'm hiding the blues, if I'm just doing the, the green and the red, the blue does want to、mm. talk here more. So、yeah. I think the blue is, is definitely kind of warmer tone. So I think、That's、we're good. good with the blue. Um, yeah, and, but the white feels a bit disconnected from, from this side. Can you see? Yeah. So this is, this is a lucky one because this is off in a little way, you know, but it's in your kind of ballpark area. It's on the cooler end of light spring, which is probably not your end, but this is,、mm -hmm. this is a really good. This is a, like, for me, this is a strong eight. So,、okay. so it hasn't quite, because if it lifted you even more, you know, if it was like a, like a really strong, not the cool end of light spring, you know, from the blues, but like bang in the middle or something, then it would illuminate your face even more. And then we might cross it over into the nine out of ten, you know.、Yeah. But for me, this is a good eight. Like, this should be a good, good one to work with at the beginning, you know. Hope you like this top enough. I do, it's just a bit short. <laughs> yeah. It's、yeah. a crop top. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of have to like pull your belly in, you know? <laughs> yeah, but it's, Or, it's like thick for winter and yet it's a crop top, which makes zero sense well, to can me. Can you get those jeans that are sort of the high rise? You know? Yeah, like, I've got yeah, those. Yeah, I think. Very 90s vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe not like black. I think this could look quite cool with white jeans, actually. White jeans?、Mm. Mm. A nice sort of warm white, of course. Yeah. Because <laughs> that might kind of. Adds to the sort of the, the niceness of it. Yeah, I do really okay. Like、so, this is, yeah, definitely, definitely so far. Our、uh, room?、Uh, uh, yeah, so room. this is in、yeah. our orange or slash yellow, whatever color this is. It's not exactly perfect. <laughs> And it was eight? Or, yeah. yeah. I think for me it was a good eight because it was actually corresponding really nicely with you as well. The blue matches. The blue is from like the cool end of your palette because it did really want to talk more to the, the spring set of the colors than the summer. The white, we could tell that it wanted to be separate. It says that, no, guys, I'm not for chatting right now. <laughs> and a lot of your clothes will be sort of eight and nine out of ten. Like, this is basically how, you know, like. Those are the kind of compromises that people are happy with when you've got patterns because, ha and, and we have to consider cut, comfort, price,、mm. all these other things, you know. So, trying to always aim for 10 out of 10 clothes is、yeah. going to be a hard game. You'll be like spending a lot of your time <laughs> hunting that stuff, you know.、Yeah. Unless you go into sewing or find a seamstress. Clothes,、yeah. I think a lot more people are picking up like knitting, sewing, you know, just making some things for themselves. I've got a friend, she just buys yarns and makes like, you know, scarf, jumpers.、Oh, yeah. And then she actually does sewing as well. She makes jewelry. You know, she just likes、yeah. the crafty stuff, you know? It'd be great if you can do it and match it to your own palette. Yeah. It was a perfect wardrobe. Yeah, you can totally do it because when you buy fabric, you've got so much options, you know, so、mm. you just buy the right ones.、Yeah. But then you can make it to your cut, you know, to the shape exactly what you want. Same with yarn, it just comes as a yarn, right? So whatever you knit from it, you know? It's up to you.、Yeah. Okay, next item. Black. Oh, no, but not. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there's lots of different types of black, so we can just see which is, which is the best one out of all of them.、Yeah. So maybe we can do the three black items next. Yes.、Yeah, so, so let's do one by one.、Mm -hmm. That's a bit near my head.、Mm -hmm. And this one has a bit of white as well, so that's interesting. When you said, hmm, 
what were you thinking? So this part is like so irritating. That's exactly what I thought when you put it on as well, because some of these light colors, even they don't look as washed out as we've seen it with some other things. So even though it looks like it's probably sli it's probably off in some way, yeah. it's actually better than it looked that it would, right? Yeah, like I expected the worst. Mm -hmm. um, but like it's not horrible. No, so it's stark, right? So it's mm -hmm. too strong. That could be that. That could be that it's, you know, it could mean, because it's not so bad, it could mean that, okay, it might be warm tone, but might be just more intense than what you need. Because mm. we can definitely see that that's a little strong, right? Yeah. But the colors want to vibe with it, right? So I'm thinking, yeah. oh, could this have a nice warm undertone? Mm. Uh, but it's just, like, it could be a bright spring black or something like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, which would be probably a more workable one than a winter black. Yeah. The white is off, isn't it? Yeah. The white is not great, but that's a looks like a removable part. <laughs> yeah, so and I feel like all the reoccurring greys seem to probably be me washing all the clothes together. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> it's more of a me issue. Mm. Yeah, it is quite grey. Yeah. So funny enough, the black part works better than the the white. Yeah. yeah. But you can always remove that, and yeah. I reckon you could possibly add your own. Yeah. In place, if you bought if you bought that separately, or take it off, trying to dye it, <laughs> put it back on. <laughs> yeah, that's always tough. <laughs> you know, what can you, what can you lose? Yeah. Okay, so let's put it on you. It will have a similar kind of starkness, relatively speaking, as, as uh, what we see with you, but it could be slightly different with you. Mm -hmm. Let's come behind you. I'm just going to pull your hair back. Yeah, so it definitely has a clearish look. In your context so it's not as muddy mm. but it's definitely too strong because i'm seeing the red being pulled a little bit yeah the red is quite yeah fair. can you hide the white maybe for a second i just want oh, to yeah i want to see if maybe that's what's crossed like putting the redness on if it's too cool yeah like some of the redness kind of come come down a little bit mm. so i feel like the white is not helping this mm. is already nicer can you see yeah so i'm thinking like you you might have a bright spring black here it's still a little strong i feel like it's overpowering you mm. but let me just see what happens if you're trying to add like a um a color that like a lighter color you know what happens if you're trying to light spring it up a bit i don't know like let's say oh, if you re like if you replace the the things in the top with this kind of color you know if you found some um or you can maybe even just make a simple collar with it, you know? Like, it mm. doesn't have to be a crochet one or something like that. But this it already lifts it even more. Of course, it creates a lot of high contrast because bright spring or, like, winter mixed colors will have a more starkness. Mm. But I feel like it's immediately nicer. Mm. And this is the nearest thing to the face. So, literally, uh, if you were to make a collar, you have to make sure that you probably double... It's a double layer because the black will show through. But let me just try something. Right? Yeah, that color goes so much better. With that, that lifts it. Of course, it's still a little star contrast, but you know, on the black part, but not too bad. So this, if you wanted to go into alterations, you know, where you like play around with it, mm -hmm. this might be worth doing, you know? dependent on how much you love the shape of the dress and generally like how much you like it you know you might think oh no I, you know maybe i never liked it as much you know in, in which case it's not worth it yeah but if you feel like playing around and got the time for this kind of stuff then yeah finding small pieces of fabric and then just making your own collar <laughs> <Bless you. laughs> and then yeah and you can figure out maybe even you can make a few detachable collars too, you know? yeah <laughs> That's quite nice too, right? Mm. But now is we're like because we're on the cooler end and that's quite stark. I feel like maybe it's not doing as much uh, luminizing. <laughs> Let me see what happens if we add like a yellow. Yeah, yeah that's like quite nice. Yeah. I just really like this yellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I call this like a canary, canary type of yellow. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if some kind of a peach, it might be too high contrast again. Oh, not too bad actually, that's a decent contrast. So yeah, you could maybe improve this dress, but if you put the white one back on again, can you put the white in? 
that's what brings in a bit more muddiness. Can you see it, the yeah, redness and the patchiness on the face? So I would definitely, at the very minimum, remove that because it, it will just make it worse and not work as well. But mm-hmm. you could maybe this could be a play dress where you literally figure out a way of creating like clip-on collars or something. You know, if you yeah. can neatly remove this and find a way of like, you know, maybe it will be a Velcro on the inside or something, you know, and then you just, I don't know, like, it could be a cool project, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Going into a sewing class or something, you know. And yeah, I could, I could so do, yes. <laughs> I could, I could, yeah, I'd have to ask a friend, I think. It's probably, it's probably therapeutic, isn't it? Yeah, I can imagine, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do we think for the score as it is? With, if, with the one. Mm-hmm, if you didn't do anything to it. If because it's still got this one, it probably mm-hmm. has to be a red. Yeah, I feel like that pushes it to the red. If you take it off, mm. and maybe without adding something, it might still be a little too stark. It doesn't have much color. Mm. But if you were to modify it, you might be able to move it into the into the orange system. Mm. So for now, just put it on the red, but make a note for yourself that you know, uh, this is a good play dress to play with if you want to. You know, to, to kind of push it into the, the good the the, the workable pile. Maybe in. Oh, it's in the red, yeah. So like a seven or an eight in the red. No, so so sevens and eights are gonna be in your orange. Oh, I I see what you mean now. Yeah, so okay. you've got nine and ten oh. in your best pile, seven and eight in your off pile. So anything up to seven. Uh, yeah, so seven one to six. six. Yeah. Ah, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> then just say potential to move it to like let's say seven, so it goes into the workable pile, if you uh, do if you do something with the colors <laughs> and at home you can probably create a list of dresses that could be good project dresses and then yeah. figure out if like a lot of them like oh i've got three of them that i could play with the colors then you know that okay that might be worth investigating the color the color sort of situation you know because if you've got multiple that needs a similar type of playing but if one needs a dyeing the other needs a collar the other needs a knitting that's too many different types of creative directions you kind of want to see oh is there something that like a you know that could benefit like maybe three of my items or something okay so shall we save it blacks yeah let's see the next black mm-hmm. it's like a high neck oh, it's got Fluff, probably from my rug, sorry. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So, different black, isn't it? Yeah, very different. Way more in your face, right? <laughs> it's really, yeah, doesn't go. No. It's really stark and sits in the background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not friends in any way. No. And you could, I mean, they're not two dissimilar types of blacks from the other yeah. one, but this is not going to get, this is not going to be a workable thing. No. No. So what score are you thinking? Like red, like the first one was a four, I think. So mm-hmm. probably the same, if not worse. Yeah, four or five, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's put it on you and see if that's, that's how you think it is. Yeah, I think the the, the redness and the starkness. Yeah. yeah, I reckon it can be a five, you know, because with the very first one, there were so many of the same type of colors that were even, you know, all the patterns on the first one was just adding more to that sort of sternness because it was like, I'm putting these strong colors in a pattern that's even stronger in your face than just like a one color in your mm. face, if you know what I mean. So yeah. yeah, this could possibly be like a nice five, but it's... Is it a nice vibe? You know? <laughs> Maybe if you like this kind of item, you could see if this is like a good tie dye or bleach job or something like that. Like, you know, what else are you gonna do with it? You know. Yeah. So I'm thinking, what happens? I don't know how. I don't know if that's workable. I've never tried these things, but if you love the the, the shape, but it might be just yeah. easiest to buy something. Yeah. And not I, mean, I think it was very cheap online. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, and online shopping will be tricky. Yeah, because, because you won't know. the colors won't show up on the photos that they take. They might have edited the pictures already. Your screen monitor is going to be also altering it a little bit. Mm. So, 
you definitely want to be if you're ordering things online you want to make sure that they're returnable <laughs> yeah like the the returnable services you can just keep trying the one at home i guess exactly yeah okay all right then i've got one more black Yeah, this is trousers. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's worth swatching because if you do find good items for your legs, they will also balance better with the tops that you've got, you know. So let's see. Let's see what we've got here. Nice not as bad as the last one. Mm -hmm. but. Definitely not. Much lighter, less dark. Mm. Is it perfect? perfect no but it's not as it's awful. cool tone isn't it because these yeah. look overly warm and happy looking and this mm. one is saying oh shut up already you yeah. know like it's a sort of like i'm being i'm trying to read here in the library and you guys are chatting right because <laughs> these have a lot more that springy like ah, lightweight yeah. kind of feel to them and this one is saying Shh. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm i reckon it's probably another summer item but yeah. the intensity is better isn't it yeah so it's got that about it it just will probably feel a little bit gloomier possibly muddy let's drape it near your face i know it's a trousers but just for the exercise how's best to do this oh, it doesn't matter how just roughly mm -hmm. and then so that we see less of your dress because this could be a, ja a denim jacket right yeah. no, so. okay so immediately it's not as stark right so we like mm. that it is kind of uncleaning the face but not in the bad way like the black ones did the really stark ones yeah so we can see it's a summer color it's a bit better than the, the winter ones you know but it's still too cool tone because it's still pushing on that redness yeah. so yeah score probably in six of ten yeah Maybe i yeah. agree that's why i would score it too <laughs> i seem to have a lot of summers mm. But Lots not, of summers, yeah. Yeah, but not many springs. Because you probably knew your intensity more or less, you know, mm. that you needed a little bit of that softening. It's just that it kept making you red looking, right? Mm -hmm. Did you notice that, by the way? That did, did, did you used to think that you were more inflamed looking than you maybe might, might have been? Um, I don't think I've picked up on the redness before, As much. like from clothing. Mm -hmm. I think I've just thought it was a makeup thing. Oh, and not okay. really ever noticed. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I've noticed it if I put red lipstick on, mm -hmm. then I'm like, wow, look at all the redness on my face. Yeah, I'm a chili pepper. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's one of those like harmonica thingy thing. Oh, I see. Yeah, so one comes from this side, the other one looks like. Oh, that would be why. <laughs> I kept thinking, like, I keep losing it each time. Um, <laughs> okay. Take your pick. Um, right, so this is the head here. No? That's yeah, the but it's all a uniform pattern, so it won't matter with these kind of patterns, but just wanted to draw your attention because what if like there's a something here that isn't there, you know? Oh like, like a like, collar. Like a stuff. print or the collar, you know. So I just wanted you to get used to the idea that whatever is near your face is gonna reflect the most. Mm. But with these style of patterns it's basically all, all over the same. <clears throat> hmm. um, first impression? It, no. <laughs> yeah, good first impression. <laughs> good, I agree. Yeah, they they don't really. No. Match. So, what does it feel like? It feels like. Parts that are like maybe the yellows are still a bit too bright, but they're not awful. But then mm -hmm. I feel like all the rest is like off. It's heavy looking, isn't it? Yeah, it feels like similar to the first winter one. Yeah, and even yeah. if it's not a winter item, it could be like a dark season, like a dark mm. autumn or something. It will just have that heavy sitting feeling because no matter where you look, it's just mm. like heavy everywhere. So I reckon that's probably what we're going to experience in your context. Shall we have a look and check? Yeah. Yeah. 
it's a little overpowering again, isn't it? It's, it's it like is. a, what do they call it? That um, straight jacket, you know, like a little kind of like, oh, we're keeping her, confining her to this, you know, it's a very tight feeling, you know, like very sort of, I don't know how to express it. Can you see that? Like, like just, she's so like, oh, yeah, like yeah. stiff. I think with all of these, I can tell that I must have been focusing on my eyes and mm. how they're matching it, but nothing on my face. Yeah, but there's a dis there's a disconnection between mm. you and the item. Like it's yeah. really not wanting to work with you. It just says, "Yeah, we don't care." Yeah, mm, it's sorry. Fine. It's oh. all right. <laughs> but they served you well until now. Yeah, you know? it's a new it's a new chapter. <laughs> Right. So your score? It's going to be a red. It's just mm -hmm. how bad it was. Quite bad. Maybe a four? Mm -hmm. That's why I would score it as well. Let's see which way we're going. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this way. It's all right. <laughs> four out of ten. Very heavy. And it's really disconnected too. Like it just did not want to offer you anything anything to work with. It's kind of like, no, we're out of stock, kind of, from the things that you need. Mm. That sort of feeling, isn't it? You're like, can I have a bit more warmth or a bit more lightness or a bit more thinness? They're like, no, sorry, refresh out. Sadly, sadly, sadly. Next item, what would you like next? Hi. Yeah, I wear this one quite a lot as well. Mm. Let's see what you look like when you wear them. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm just yeah, uh, I'm just sorry. Sad. Yeah. It's fine. I I didn't expect any of this palette to be in my wardrobe really. It's good learning. Yeah. And hopefully this way, because you didn't have that many like perfect clothes in your wardrobe, when you start introducing them into your wardrobe you're actually going to probably see a, a, a more drastic a bigger transformation you yeah know, like a bigger difference it's more exciting than if i'd already had quite a lot yeah then you well that's also nice because then you'll be reassuring like sometimes i occasionally get a client who was just so instinctive with uh, their colors and we find like several you know um and then either banging their palette or just slightly off and not so many like super off ones mm. actually guys are a bit more like that generally oh, yeah. if i have guys they some of them can be like pretty decent you know and i'll be like oh okay but this is because they just sort of choose instinctively they're just like yeah that mom oh no don't know that one that one you know they're a bit more sort of precise they don't overthink it as much as we do because yeah. we kind of consider so many other like fluff yeah. <laughs> like all the things it goes with yeah First impressions is it doesn't match. Mm -hmm. um, it's not god awful, right? We've yeah. seen worse. I've seen worse. But it's sitting in the background, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, none of them. It match. just feels a little heavy, isn't it? Mm. Quite similar to one of the other blue ones mm. we had. I think that was just too heavy. Yeah. So it's yeah. not not a good or a slightly off. It's kind of off. Yeah. Shall we see it in your context? And then you score it up. <laughs> um, you just hold your hair back. Yeah, it's, it's not quite awful, but can you see that sort of redness going on there? Yeah. It looks like you you've been having a cold for like two weeks and you keep rubbing your nose. It's just yeah. it's just strange how it pulls all that redness to the to the front, isn't it? Mm. A little bit kind of grey on the hair as well. Yeah, you can see under my eyes, mm. yeah. No. Sorry. So what's your score? It's uh four? Yeah, or four five. or five. Something like that. Yeah, I was thinking the same. I reckon it could be worse, like more stuff, more sort of pushy, you know. Yeah, maybe so, we'll give it a four then. Y yeah. Be a bit nicer. Four is the lower one, so. Oh yeah, what am I on about? Yeah, I'll give yeah, it a five, five then. then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Is it 
useful, by the way, writing all these notes. And Definitely, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you got one more there. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very dressy one. Okay. It's very frilly. So we got two sort of main parts, the um, the, the tulle and the, the the main fabric. Okay. So first impressions. It's not that bad. Mm -hmm. But is it perfect? It's not perfect. No. Okay. But not as bad as all a lot of the others. No. So what impression? Like, what are you getting from it? What are you reading? Like, whereas the others had often had more grey in them, mm -hmm. this seems to have a lot less of it. Mm -hmm. which, less heavy. Yeah. So it's more brighter. Um, but is it fully clean looking, like clean, radiant? No, I don't know. <laughs> it's got a little bit of sort of heaviness or something. Can you see, like I'm combining those three and I'm thinking, mm, yeah. is it a bit dark or something? It could be like we're in the bright spring or, or maybe too yellow. Like there's a sort of yellow yeah. tint that I'm noticing like as an overall kind of thing. So it could be like we're in a true spring territory. Mm -hmm. Let me just work a couple of the other springs so we can see one spring... Three. So let's see which spring would wear it best. If you remove your fan for a moment, let's see if I um yeah if if bride spring likes it the most. Okay, so there's that. Take a mental note. It looks fairly clean, not as mm. dirty looking here. We of course seen it with the light spring fan, but here we can see that sort of strong look about it can you see that sort of it definitely has a sort of either a darkness or a where is the red here okay so um can you see it just feels a little bit darker mm. in the context of these colors it doesn't have that sort of whitish clean look and then there is true mm. spring so who wore it best is not it, light spring right is it this one yeah so that's pretty good and then we can let me just compare it to bright spring again Ooh. no probably bright spring right yeah. it looks clean luminous fresh mm. so i think the darkness of it is what it gets from winter what kind of makes it a little darker looking you know mm. with the light spring colors but it's also not too bad with True spring, but I feel like here is where it feels a bit fresher. Mm. Okay, so that means that it will probably just feel a little bit sort of strong and vivacious, but because it's a light colour, not quite as strong as the colours that we've been testing with, yeah. it shouldn't be like as overpowering, but we might read it a bit more colourful than it needs to be. So let's drape it on you. This is promising. Let's fold the tall the tool part because we haven't swatched that one yet. Just the red yeah, that's it. Okay, so it's luminous but it does have that like that kind of strong look about it almost, can you see? Just yeah. a little bit more colourful than it needs to be. But like much, much better than a lot of the other things that we've seen, right? Mm. Okay. So, score. Uh -huh. Just on this part. Just on this part. Mm -hmm. So you see one is uh, yeah, yeah. I think no. it makes it yeah like a seven, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not the best like option from Bride Spring for you to borrow, but it's decent, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, definitely better than other things. Let's watch this other part because it might be a little softer, gentler. Let's see if that kind of helps helps it or not. So when it's so see through, I literally just fold oh. several layers so we can put a few of the arm parts together to get a really good sense. Yeah, it's a bit grey. Yeah, so even so even that's not gonna lift it anymore, mm. is it? <clears throat> okay. So if you put it on now properly with some of that showing. Yeah, so it does look mm. grey in your context, can you see? Yeah. So that actually makes it better, but because this part is grey, yeah, it's, 
it's definitely just barely there, isn't it? It's, mm. it's barely. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as that top was, right? Yeah, yeah. that's the best so far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think you're getting really good at this, but if maybe we should just for like find a little bit of practice, swatch your dress oh, that yeah, you're wearing. That's good. Might as well, since you've got it. <laughs> okay. Again. Yeah, but not bad at all, isn't it? It's like mm. a sort of, I'm guessing it might be a soft autumn or something like that because it's got, it's definitely grey, greyer than your palette, but it's, it wants to be very much in line with, with the sort of warmth and that sort of lightness level. It's just mm. not quite as pigmented. Yeah. Mm. Out of curiosity, I'm just going to grab a uh, soft autumn palette. I just want to see if like that's basically where it would sit nicer on, on the person. Can you lift your fan up for a sec? Okay. Mm. Yeah, so on this person it would just have the right grayness, can you see? Yeah. It would just feel fresher on that person. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it definitely is just kind of like your, your softer, same intensity because it's light, it's warm neutral, it feels happy there. But yeah, it's it's yeah. too grey for your too palette. It just look how luminous some of these colours yeah. are. So, and then if you look in the mirror, because you're wearing this dress already, <laughs> it does actually look at next to your neck, for example. Look how much greyer it reads than your mm. your luminosity, your natural luminosity. And then, let's say. Here. Actually, let me put it on this side. Just look how much your face is lifting on that side already. Can you see it's clear? Yeah. Enough? So if we had a base color like this with a little purple and pink and all that kind of stuff, it would just and look how nicer, how much nicer it is next to your neck than over there. It just mm. you don't make this look gray, but you make that side you look kind of old warm washed a hand-me-down item right yeah that sort of that sort of almost like vintage look to it but it's a nice intensity which is probably why you reached for it you know like it, yeah. it's light it's warm neutral so it's connecting with you on a good level it's just you it's making you you making it gray and it probably is just muddying the face a little bit you know mm. so how do you score it um not as bad as yeah, it's, it's, hard. Hard. it's mm -hmm. probably an orange again yeah um let's see this one was a seven so maybe maybe a seven as mm -hmm. well yeah i reckon that's a good, yeah. good for a seven yeah i can't really put a post it on it because it's me but no <laughs> but you can probably write it down and you can yeah. just whatever you call this dress when you think of it in your mind you know mm. <laughs> the one with the lavender and purple flowers or whatever Probably you think of it. lacy dress mm -hmm. And you can soft put soft water, water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've just gone softer, but it's good darkness level, it's good temperature, just not good clarity. Okay, and then um, you had a jacket as well, didn't you? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. grab it for you. Okay. So here we go. And then, of course, we never see that part, yeah. so you can probably yeah, just fold the colour in a way. Let me hide that. Yeah, it doesn't go super well. It's yeah. not as bad as like some of the ones we've seen, but no, 
But is it Just worse than the dress you're wearing? Yes. Yeah, I agree. So it's back in the red. Mm. Yeah, it just looks kind of almost dark and dull, sits yeah. separate in the background. It's not really wanting to offer anything, yeah. anything to work with, so I feel like it will sit separately. Mm. Probably one of the autumns, but probably not soft autumn, because that, like your dress, you know, it kind of wants to give you something, you know. Mm. This one says, now nah, I'm fine. Yeah. So can you put it near your face? I should really just put it on. Oh, but then I've got the thing underneath. Oh, just, just drag it out. Let's, yeah. 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 Dull grey. <laughs> bit heavy even, can you see? Very, yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Interesting. Okay. So if you want to make a note of that as well, yeah. I know you probably wear this on the way back, but you know, at least you know, you know, and later on you can maybe even digitize your notes, you know, so you can, mm, definitely. You can figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to pl play yeah, it. It's probably a four or five, four maybe, no. I think five mm. is good. Yeah. It's too dark for it to, like... For it to kind of go into the six, it kind of want, it should give you something, right? Like it should it should give you something to work with, but there's nothing really going on here. Yeah. Could be Could worse, right? Something. But yeah. Okay, that's basically how you swatch clothes. So you open out the fan, place it on the item. Just make sure that other things aren't there. That's why I open it large enough so that the whole fan is on it. So you don't want to kind of like. You know have bits of table or, or whatever like your lap is showing mm -hmm. you know you just want the fan and the um, item to be sort of communicating but yeah that's pretty much how it is with clothes thank you it's really interesting yeah i think you'll be fine i think you you you, you were pretty good with the process and you're picking up how you um how you analyze basically that so just need to go through your wardrobe at home yeah with all of the clothes <laughs> and then i would not throw away the ones in the red pile definitely don't rush into it um because yeah i mean eventually you probably won't want to wear those you know like but at the, at the minute i don't know how many clothes you're going to have in the sort of often good piles you know mm. so you still need clothes to wear <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah yeah but if once you start having a decent amount in the sort of slightly off pile and a few in the good pile yeah and then you can probably just start letting go of the worst stuff from the, the bad pile yeah. and then just eventually reduce it. Anything that you love the shape of, of course, you can then start deconstructing once you don't need it. Mm. You can always be on the hunt for fa fabric and yarn and things like that. I don't know if anybody knits in your family, but you can just say, you know, hey, grandma or auntie or whatever, like, oh, look, I found this really nice yarn. <laughs> I know you know how to knit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm thinking of this scarf, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but scarf stops, anything that's near your face and you can start bring, introducing your colours, that will be so helpful. Yeah, it's exciting. So, that's basically it for clothes. And we actually do the um, jewellery and the makeup in a slightly different way because they're smaller items than the fan. So I'll teach you how we're going to do that separately. Thank All you. Right. Okay, so with jewellery... I open the fan up slightly differently than how we use it with clothes because with clothes the items are larger and then we open it with little gaps so we can see the item kind of interacting but jewelry is actually quite small so what I tend to do is open the pages so that we can see the colors but I leave no gaps because then I can rest the fan once it's all opened up on a surface like a table without the table interacting with the fan as well at the same time as the jewellery. So I'm just going to open it up without any gaps, like this. And you can kind of do it on the surface already, like here on the table. Okay, roughly like that. And then you move the jewellery item on there. So which one would you like to look at first? Um, maybe this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically what I tend to do is I just offer it, like place it on there. And these things will sometimes have a different metal or a different look where the pendant is and a different piece where the chain is. So sometimes you have to analyze them like separate from each other. This looks fairly uniform in terms of what the metal looks like. And then you just go and do the same exact thing that we did before. We look for first impression. And my first impression, it, it looks really nice. 
Mm -hmm. um, I reckon because it looks kind of elegant, doesn't feel heavy, yeah. it doesn't feel too shiny, like too in your face, doesn't look dull, like grayish. So it's actually a really good one. Maybe the only part, if I wanted to be really picky, is that little gold bit in the middle might be like a, a, a bit too dark kind of a gold, like a heavier kind of gold kind of a gold but it's so tiny yeah <laughs> that this is fine so like if it if it if that was on the, there or if the color of that was like a little stone in one of these colors then i reckon that would make it a 10 out of 10 but mm -hmm. for me this is probably a good nine and a half out of 10 <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah and then with jewelry the way you test it is i actually normally just use my hand so we can use your hand for that Basically, we just put the item on there and we just check if we get the similar kind of effect as what we see with the hand. But yes, it looks kind of nice and twinkly, elegant, not too shiny. Maybe it looks a little bit brighter or new actually than it is with the fan, but only just. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, it's looking kind of nice and elegant, not, not dull or grey, definitely not in your face. And that's basically what we're looking for, something that kind of looks expensive and nice. So let's see how this compares to some other items. So I'll put this on the side, put another one on. Okay, what do you think? So this is why I said sometimes the pendant part is different from the chain because they're yeah. just doing different things. So we'll probably have to analyze this in two parts. Okay. Shall we start with the chain? Yeah, I think it's definitely like picked up some color somewhere. So it's a bit more dark and... It's it's a bit okay. sort of cool tone looking, isn't it? It's a yeah. bit sort of like it's not too harsh, but I reckon it's too cool. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not sort of like too overpowering, but it looks grayer, darker. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't really want to be sort of sunny, shiny, or that yeah. kind of stuff. So I reckon that will that's probably how it will look on your skin as well. So if we use your hand, you can see it's kind of gray and yeah. dull and not too overpowering but it's definitely not looking sort of elegant and yeah sunny. look at that look how clean and more expensive that one looks in your context look at that mm. and look at that yeah you know and this could be like a really expensive metal and this could be a cheap one it yeah. won't matter because you're making this look nicer mm. you know it doesn't matter if this was like super expensive at tiffany's mm. if you can't make it look nice if you make because it, you make it look like oh the paint wore off or something right yeah <laughs> Whereas this one looks really nice and gentle and just belonging. Mm. Just leaves the skin nice and clear. This sort of like just brings in that sort of gloomy feeling. Okay. So let's analyze the... Um, I mean, even the stone and the, the gold metal is like two different things. But There's lots of different colors on this Yeah, one. lots going on with this. <laughs> and you feel free to move it around. Like I sometimes like, oh, what about on the... On that color, you know, you know how we're doing the combining mm. with the clothes. We can just move it to different parts. Like, oh, can I add this stone to this bracelet? Like, let's imagine this is our bracelet. You know, like, can I add that stone? Like, okay, there it works. What about here? Mm. Mm. Yeah. What about there? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it looks almost a little cool or gray. Like, we might be into light summer with it, maybe. Mm. You know, because it's just less sort of sunshiny kind of vibe. You know, a little bit kind of calmer, quieter. Can you see here as well? It just sort of tones it down a little bit, but certainly better than the chain, right? Yeah, definitely better than the chain. So let's see that part with your hand. Yeah, and, and immediately better, not as grey or dull or anything, but has that kind of reserved tone, right? Mm. Okay, what about the gold part? <laughs> Move it around. Mm -hmm. I find it looks a lot harder than the clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it's smaller, so it's going yeah. to kind of give you a little bit less info. I'm not this is normally sure. harder than the clothes. Yeah, I'm not sure it goes, but... Yeah, so I think, of course, it's hard because we're seeing it with the other chain, so I'm going to try and hide it. But if I'm just showing it, showing it to you this way, that's actually not too bad. Can you see? Mm. So I'm thinking, okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Like it, it doesn't look perfect. Like it's yeah. not like, oh wow, this is like as nice as gold can get. Mm. But it's not too bad. I'm guessing possibly maybe the other springs or maybe again light summer or something. You know, it's doing something a little bit differently from the fan, but again, not too bad. So and it's a very similar effect next to your hand, can you see? Yeah. It's not as nice as what's going on here. 
Yeah. Right? That's like a fresh, clean, radiant, elegant, like it has an effortless feel, you know? Mm. So that's really, really lovely. I'm glad we've got a strong reference point yeah. here. <laughs> it's doing really well, that one. Mm. Yeah. And you can see the difference between, like, if you put the two chains next to each other, that has a yellower, warmer undertone. Mm, yeah, this one's much, much more light reflective. This one is grayer, you know, doesn't push, like, reflect the light back as much. Yeah. Yeah, and even this gold, because this has a slight goldiness, right? But that gold is a different quality of gold, isn't it? Like, mm. not quite as lightweight and sort of airy. Yeah. Okay, what else have we got? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These ones don't look as bad as I thought they would, but... Okay, so let's do the let's start with the chain just in case it's different. Mm -hmm. Although this is a bit more uniform than than the, the last piece. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of the chain? Um, it's definitely lighter than this mm -hmm. like, dark so it, one. So it's not as dull. Like it doesn't. So it's not as grey as the other yeah. one is. Um, but not as bright as like something like mm -hmm. that. But it still feels a bit separate, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So that might mean that this. This is, you know, like a summer rear color, so it still reflects some light back. This could be like already falling into winter and it just gets really dull in your context. I'm not sure. Or this could be like a soft season that maybe is less soft, you know, less great. So it might be reflecting more back. Mm -hmm. But overall, it still kind of like just sits on top, isn't it? And it kind of takes away that sort of sunshine feel of the palette, right? So mm -hmm. I'm guessing it will do a similar thing on you. Okay. Yeah, it just... It just kind of overpowers a little bit, right? Yeah. If I'm comparing it to that, just look how nice and belonging that one looks. Yeah. Just feels prettier, right? Putting that one back, it's just like strong, isn't it? So masculine. Yeah. But nicer than that one. Right. So yeah. here it looks less grey. When I'm putting that one on, it just feels more grey. Mm. If I'm putting it in that separate, can you see? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so possibly not as cool tone as that, or not as grey. Mm. So do we think that the um, pendants, I reckon this looks a little heavy and it felt a bit heavy there, but mm. let's see if we can look at the little one on its own. <laughs> Move it around. The little one seems to look great. Yeah, the little one works better, isn't it? So it works better yeah. than the chain and it also works better than the large circle. Yeah. And I think jewellery often is made in this way, you know, that the clasp will be one metal, the chain another metal, mm -hmm. whatever they're hanging the pendant on is another metal, and then the pendant itself can be whatever yeah. it does. Yeah, it goes with quite a lot of the colours. Yeah. It's definitely friendly. I'm not sure. This looks grey, can you see this metal? But mm. that look, that looks much warmer. I'm trying to move it to the light a bit. Can you see? It's hard to obviously we can't take it separate, but if we took yeah. it, if we were to be able to take it apart, it actually is starting to get nice. So let's put it on your hand and see if we can yeah. sort of see that. Yeah, so if you hide that, then you know, that looks kind of okay, mm. but that looks already grey again. Yeah, can you see? see yeah. So even when we look at it together, you can see that this is the circle that isn't as grey. So they must have just you know, made it from a slightly different coating or a slightly different metal, you know, possibly mm. even sourced it from different factories, you know, like, can you imagine going into lots of bead and jewellery kind of mm. st stores and then, then combining, designing jewellery from various bits and pieces, you know? Yeah. Hmm, very interesting. What else have you got? The glasses. The glasses, yeah. <laughs> so the glasses will have multiple colours as well. Of course, you've got the frame. Sometimes this side bit can be different for you. It's the same. Sometimes that this sort of long handle type thing is a different, and of course the end is different. But that, yeah. that goes behind your ear, so that's our least concern. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and with glasses, like because you got all these pieces, sometimes I pick up the fan and trying um. to sort of just not have these interfering. You know, just like have a look at it this way. But that look, that looks good, right? Yeah, it does. So it doesn't look heavy, it looks just kind of nice and shiny, almost slightly pinky, can you see? Yeah, it's, it's like a pinky a gold. Tint to it. Yeah, but probably the right kind. 
because it doesn't feel gray or gloomy or bluey or anything mm. or not, not too strong so this is actually pretty good let's see it with your hand Now we move it around. Yeah, so you can see it in the light. Like move it around so that you can see it in the reflection. Um, can you see it with your skin? Yeah. Like I'm seeing it from this angle because I'm like just hitting it there. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's see. actually nice and clean. Mm. Of course, when it's in the shade, you can't tell as easily. Mm. Mm. So this probably looks really nice on you. Can I see it on your face? <laughs> So yeah, you can see that, of course, the dress is telling you a little bit, so I'm just going to get a drape. And just to kind of get a better idea of your appearance with these things. Okay, in the hair. So yeah, you can see that the glass is sitting kind of quite comfortably on the face. Now, if that was, if the frame was, let's say, this chain colour, I'm just going to put it near your forehead. Look how heavy that would be sitting, that yeah. frame. Just really like dull, dark, kind of dirty almost, can you see? Mm. So it wouldn't look like a nice metal, it would probably look a bit kind of like a dirty, like a faded item. And then this one. a bit better but still too dominating can you see yeah so imagine if that one was going around in a circle just wouldn't work mm. and then your first necklace should be fine a little bit brighter i think than the, the glasses that you've got here but that's nice and cleaner and twinkler isn't it you know yeah and of course this isn't the glass frame but you can just see how that would work nicer than the other two metals mm. so yeah this is basically roughly what you do with jewelry <laughs> And then here I've got another rose gold item, which is even pinker and darker than your glasses. Do you want to check that as well and see how that works? Let me give you the exercise of <laughs> no gaps because the table is going to talk. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just pop these off. I'm going to drop them. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you do it to have... So I, um, okay, let me put this on your lap. So the way I did it is like a deck of cards, you know, I just sort of uh, pull from the same angle and then, yeah, and then just sort of like as soon as the top colour was sort of separate enough, like that, that's as much as you can open it without the table starting yeah. to sort of have, have, a, have a say. <laughs> Okay. It's harder than it looks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different way of working with the fan, but when items are so small, you kind of, you can't really put that, the fan on it because whatever is in the background behind the item, you, it's so too hard to separate. They'll mm. be just affecting each other. So, all right. Um, yeah, it goes okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start combining it with some neutrals, some other things. Yeah, it's better over here, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does go. Good, and then check it with your hand. Yeah, that will be a decent looking metal, right? Yeah. Maybe not as nice as the glasses. I think the glasses yeah, were best. Yeah, darker than yeah, the glasses. Yeah, so, so it could be a bit cooler, like we might be into light summer with this, you know. Yeah. Uh, put it near your face as well. Yeah, so you can see that it's a little bit possibly cooler tone than mm. what your your but it's the right intensity it's not so heavy yeah. like if you put this next to your face yeah in contrast. it just feels really pushy right mm. yeah yeah so that's the exercises metals most of jewelry it's the same exact way we're looking for the effect the impact trying to combine a few things to see if the other combinations make sense yeah that's oh, really fascinating yeah <laughs> so luckily your glasses are really good because that's normally the expensive thing to buy and the hard one to kind of find a good shape and a colour all at once. Yeah, tattoo. yeah, I'm glad they match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at so, least the necklaces you can change each shape. Yeah, and like sometimes when a pendant is really good, you, you just think, oh, I like the stone in this pendant. Well, I'll just get a different chain if the chain is like looking really dull. You know, yeah. that's not so difficult. Yeah. yeah, I reckon that this one is good. You can definitely keep that. The other chains, I'm not sure. Like. Like here, maybe you can keep the stone bit, you know, mm. and then if you replace the, the chain itself. 
Um, with the other one, I don't know. <laughs> mm. um, it will just look a little too strong, I think. Yeah. But jewellery is so easy to pick up, you know, because it doesn't have to fit your body shape, you know, it's just kind yeah. of hangs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically what you do. And anything that's smaller than the fan, like smaller accessories, that's what you do. You know, if you've got like tiny little bags, you can place it on there, you know, tiny little like accessories, you know, like a belt buckle or something you want to check yeah. or a belt um strap or something you can place it on there uh, but as soon as it gets big like if you've got a bigger handbag this size you just put the fan on it you know just like on clothes yeah yeah oh. and then we'll be using the fan slightly differently again for the makeup <laughs> so let's move on to the makeup stuff um uh, shall we start with lipsticks what have you brought yeah so i only actually own three lipsticks okay that's fine <laughs> But yeah, I have one in like each vague like color that I thought suited me, but we'll mm -hmm. find out, I guess. Okay, cool. But I have like pink, and then I have these two are really strong like stains. They're like I think Korean ones, but mm -hmm. I really like them because they stay on all day. Mm -hmm. But I'm a bit scared if I put them on, it might ruin the rest of the lipsticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got red, pink, and orange. Orange. Okay, cool. So what I tend to do with lipsticks and blushers and any any kind of color cosmetics is I swatch them onto paper mm -hmm. I like using either sketch paper like this is a sketch pad or watercolor paper is even better because that's normally not bleach like you can see this looks a little bit gray because of the process they make it with watercolor mm -hmm. paper looks a bit more neutrally looking you know more kind of yellow even but I like these because they have a bit of a texture so they grab onto you know greasy and powdery um, makeup easier so you get to see the color a bit more true to life like a bit more intense so yeah i think what we'll do is we'll swatch the three lipsticks onto here i like leaving quite a bit of gap between swatch samples because we'll be opening the fan page at putting it either side so we just don't want to accidentally get get it like lip, the fan lipsticky basically so let me just can i just use it oh yeah, yeah. you go for it okay oh so this is a gloss yeah okay so i'll just put a little bit more okay but you just swatch like a large enough amount that it gives you a good idea and then what i tend to do with the fan is like of course we can't use the whole fan and we can't put the item on there mm -hmm. so i tend to pick not a red shade because we're choosing sort of shades of red so not a lipstick color let's say but something else that we think looks good so we really love the yellow on you mm. don't we <laughs> and maybe we'll choose like a blue so we're looking to see like oh so if this is our woman you know these two strips like do we love this lipstick like does this lipstick mm -hmm. look really nice on the woman what does it look like like especially with these two colors are probably going to be nice and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, that feels quite nice. Mm. It looks rich and colorful, but it doesn't look too cool. So it doesn't look like bluey or purpley. And it definitely doesn't look gray. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, and it also doesn't look too bright. You know, okay, it's not like, oh, wow, so pigmented that it's in your face. So this is, this is very promising. So this is the kind of stuff, like once I swatched it on the paper, I'd be keen to try it on because I'd be like, okay, that looks promising. Yeah. And then if it also looks good on the lips, then that's fine. Okay. So can I, can I ask you to try that on? Oh, like yeah. put, put some on your lips and then I've got some makeup wipes here so you can wipe it off afterwards before we look at another color. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, just put a little bit more. It's fine. It's fine if you have it a bit stronger. And I'm going to get some drapes because I know your dress is slightly off. Just to have you in a good colour. <laughs> hair back okay so just so we can uh, we haven't switched it yet we'll probably look at that after makeup you know. yeah. <laughs> okay so i'm gonna hide the hair because can you see as my, as soon as i move the hair the, the face does clear up so i think the yeah. hair probably needs a touch improvement i don't think the shade is 
off. It might be just a bit strong, you know. Mm -hmm. that's I don't think the temperature is wrong, but okay. So that's the lip color. I think that looks nice. Yeah. You know, it nice doesn't color. look too cool or bluey, not too bright. That's that's a really good match, and the fan told us it will be a good match, and it works really nicely on you. So well done on getting your pink one right. <laughs> that, was, that one was a gift. So I'm happy. <laughs> oh wow, good gift giver. <laughs> Maybe tell them like, hey, you were really good with this lipstick. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any of those? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, very very good. Right, let's watch the other ones. Thank you. Should I take this one off? Yes, please. If you wipe it off, please. And then we'll swatch and check the others. Okay, so it's not if it's not coming off very easily, then I've got a uh, stronger remover. Just needs combining. So you can put a tiny little bit on the on your t tissue and then just kind of pull the rest off. <laughs> Oh, you have to put, it's like a child lock, so you have to press down on it. <laughs> Sorry, okay. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'll reuse that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It cleans it off nicer, isn't it? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like a two phase. I think it's literally for very, like, tinting. Uh, makeup. Mm -hmm. um, it's two faced because you have to you have to shake it, but I can't remember exactly how it works. It's um, got it right off. Clinique. It says take the day off makeup remover for lids, lashes, lips, <laughs> and mm -hmm. lips. <laughs> yeah, well, it's really good. Got it off. Yeah, it's good for like one of those like um mascaras that are really like sticking you know because when you start like taking mascara off and you look like a panda yeah <laughs> and you just keep rubbing your eyes with this you don't have to rub your eyes so hard because um, you can just kind of give it a wipe and it just yanks it off like uh, really easily so it's, it. it's kind of kind of the skin that way yeah. um i do like to afterwards still wash it because i'm not sure exactly what's in it you mm. know so i don't want that to get stay on my skin but it's really yeah. like it helps that you don't have to rub let's see if there is so it's allergy tested, 100% fragrance free. Off, off, ooh, what's that? Off. Oh, I have no idea what that is. Okay. Ophthalmologist tested. Ophthalmologist. If we're, saying ophthalmologist? That, if we're saying that wrong, maybe like a skin expert? <laughs> it probably something like that. Allergy expert maybe? Yeah. Gently lifts stubborn eye and lip makeup to use shake well. Apply with a cotton ball, wipe off, rinse before applying makeup. So it does say to rinse. Important, mm. replace kept tightly, yes. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. that would be the lock on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll save that there because if your other lipsticks also stain, mm. then this will probably be useful. All right, do you want to do the swatching on the next one and just do it far away from the previous one so we don't like get the, the fan dirty? Yeah, and just put enough so that the paper doesn't like come through too much. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. And then choose a couple of colors from the fan. I normally pick the ones that I know like they're really strong colors in me because then they represent you uh, more fully. So I think I picked the yellow. The yellow. <laughs> yeah, and the blue. This, I think I picked the second yellow and then uh, I think it's it was blue. this this kind of blue, yeah, which was actually very similar blue to your top. Do you remember? Yeah, it's like it's the kind of blue I always buy. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I just really like. Yeah, it. I do think that these, these, these here are really good representations. So, what what are you thinking? Um, Is it as good as the pink? No, not as good as the pink. What's different think. about it? It's more of like a burnt orange, like compared to the pink. Like it's got more of a feels stronger right yeah mm -hmm. so i wonder if it's like 
maybe a bright spring or something that has a little bit more intensity because it doesn't look so gray like yeah. you know as if it was autumn it might still be a spring category mm -hmm. but it definitely has a like a darker depth to it so i'm thinking okay it's not a light intensity mm. um, it's something else so i feel like it will probably f look this kind of rich and strong on your lips but can we try it on and then have a yeah, look yeah going to get some drapes in the meantime. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay. So it's very much like the scene with the fan as well, that it just looks very strong, right? Like yeah. it doesn't look like it's gray. It's definitely mm. pigmented, but it just feels a little bit too strong for your coloring. So it, it kind of starts bringing on that mean look, you know, that strict, stern. Yeah. That's telling me it's probably bright spring kind of area because it looks like maybe winter is influencing this shade in some way. Mm. It could be an autumn color, you know, a really, really bright one. I don't know, but it definitely doesn't look gray too much so that it looks kind of dull on you but it, if anything it just looks a bit strong isn't it yeah it's very strong yeah so i think we can probably find shades of orange that is not so kind of in your face because this will be all about the lips isn't it mm. <laughs> yeah okay can you please write that off yeah. you, you might need to use this two phase oh, yeah. again <laughs> Yeah, feel free to just use more wipes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's staying on your lips. <laughs> mm, it's very stubborn. It's so good, this the remover, isn't it? It's really good. Yeah, it's still a little bit there. <laughs> like paprika lips, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's almost off. Yeah, maybe just get a fresh wipe, just yeah. just in case you're like putting some more back on. Um, and then the way I actually do it is like I put the wipe on top of the opening of the bottle, tip it over oh. and back that way, because that way you can just kind of control it easier. Yeah, that's looking mm -hmm. pretty good now. Yeah, we go. Okay. Okay, great. So, what else have you got? You've got the red one. Yeah. So, let's swatch that onto the paper again. Maybe far away again, here in the end. Ooh. <laughs> it's very red and very strong. <laughs> I was not expecting it to be so <laughs> so dark. Because the lid is much brighter, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, okay. It really stains your lips like all day. Oh dear. Okay, well let's let's swatch it. Let's use the fan and don't don't get the colour on the fan. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> be careful. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah this away. is this is why I, I, I swatch the lipsticks far away like quite far apart from each other because uh, I don't want to accidentally, want on the fan. yeah, <laughs> not this kind of hard staining one because regular lipsticks you can kind of wipe off with a makeup wipe and it should be fine. Mm. The top part is sort of coated so you can wipe off things easily. The back part is just regular canvas so mm. that will probably remain sort of stained. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so let's move it to these lighter ones which is where I think your nice colors are. But yeah, you do the analysis on this. You tell me what you think. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really go. Um, it's very, very dark mm. in contrast. Um, Possibly a bit cool as well. Yeah. Really yeah. heavy. Don't, you can almost see like some really dark colours coming through, like deep 
reds mm. or like yeah close up to you know what it reminds me of like vampire kind yeah. of you know like is, if yeah. you are having that on your lips it, it probably looks like you ate someone for dinner <laughs> <laughs> i think i have been told that before and i had it on because really um, i think at the style when i got it like it's been quite a, like a year or two years now was to put it in the center of the lips and have it like a gradient that like spreads out. Oh wow! Like the so Korean, it looks like, like blood. <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if it looks awful as a, like a standard nicening lipstick, <laughs> you can keep it for Halloween, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> or like very bold costume look. It will sell the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put it on your lips and see what happens, and then we just have to like remove it. Yeah, if I can never take it off. Yeah, we'll we'll try not to keep it on for too long. I do it with my finger so it's not as well. Okay, I'm gonna get some drapes. <laughs> my finger. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, it looks better on your lips than on the paper, so that's promising, but then you've applied it much thinner than you did on the paper. Yeah, I applied it quite thin. Okay, so let me just add. And I'm going to move your hair out of the way so we can really see the effect. Sorry. Okay. So, what's your analysis? Yeah, it seems to be, it's a lot more muted because I applied quite a thin layer. Yeah. Um, Still a little bit strong. Mm. Nowhere near as bad as it, it looks on the, pa on the paper. Yeah. So that's good. And this is why you always have to swatch it on paper, but then also check it on your face. Mm. Don't just assume if something looks good on the paper, it will look good on your face because it, it can go on your, you know, like there could be chemical you know, reactions with like whatever is in your on your lips, you know, with the item just so many things are at play so it's nice to try it on but for me it's still a little bit stern can mm. you see it's got that feeling but nowhere near as a sort of vampire is yeah you pro but if you applied it thicker like yeah on the paper, it could be you very could certainly red, do halloween with it yeah <laughs> but i wouldn't do it sort of like a daily thing for the office it's not as fresh is yeah. it it's definitely kind of yanking up red to the surface of the face isn't it mm. all right i think we should remove it first before it stains forever <laughs> <laughs> oh hang on i think it's separating can you oh, see oh yeah it does need shaking sorry i think something activates when you shake it and that's what kind of does so the sure shirt. Shirt. So like yeah just like i'm not scared of the lid like i don't want it to spill it's not an easy one I don't know what's in it but there's for some reason there's a child lock for it so it can't be can't be great <laughs> yeah it does get it off though mm -hmm. yeah I'm pretty sure it's formulated for this kind of like harder staining things that's kind of sticking on a little bit so it might take a few guns gosh Okay, so I'm going to bring in a few extra lipsticks just so we can try in a few more things. Right. I've got like a, I'm gonna put this here. I think these are mostly dry now, so it should be okay. Right, so. are just some examples that could work for the palette some some of them are softer leaning warmer leaning cooler leaning brighter leaning because just the same way as hair on the fan you know there's just different directions like that looks more cool tone mm. that's more in the middle that's a bit softer that's a bit darker you know so the whole range like color space just flows you know so there's a different 
like a, you know, a different um, uh, selection basically. Okay, so let's watch a few on here. Um, okay, can't remember what which one's which. I don't see that many light springs. <laughs> This one first, I reckon this is quite similar to that. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite stain. similar color. Yeah, so let me let me swatch that. You're basically doing a very similar thing, but it looks like a very, very similar color. Mm. Maybe a touch pinker. Like that one is a bit more medium, can you see? Yeah. This one is ever so slightly pinker, so a tiny bit cooler. So if we were to look at your red strips, then um, yeah, they both probably correspond to this warm end but this one is a little bit more pigmented like a little bit darker yeah. passively um, it could push it to the cool side for you like it could push it too near a uh, light summer but let's just see let's just see if it's a good temperature like if you can balance have you used a lip brush before <laughs> Um, I don't think so. But. You basically, it just helps you control the application, plus it's easier to clean because then you just have to clean the brush and you don't have to kind of sanitize your lipsticks all the time because when, when you keep putting it on your lips, like some you know bacteria just transfers and eventually it just expires the items oh. faster, you know, it oxidizes it faster. So I tend to use, you know, for easy sanitation, just a lip brush. Uh, and then that allows you to kind of control the level of application and you can just wipe with a wipe in between. So yeah, just yes. like a painter. <laughs> Quite fun. Wipe ready. Okay, so we'll put Thank a tiny you. little bit more. I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe in between. Okay, so we'll put a bit more on. Here we go. Just so we can see like a full application as if you were to kind of put it on from the tube, but you can balance how opaque you like it. But let me get some drapes. So that's right near the cool end, um, cool, a cooler tone pink, but still warm enough that it's got that sort of sunshine feel. Uh, definitely nowhere near as strong as like the orange and the red one was, so it's the perfect intensity. For you, possibly, I prefer to stop maybe where your lip, your lip gloss was, you know, like I feel like that's plenty on the cool end for you. Mm -hmm. Like if you were leaning towards light summer more, but I feel like you were really strongly in the springs. This is possibly like a little bit on the pink side, but if you do end up finding like, let's say, a dress that has like light spring and light summer colors, you know, like, then this is the kind of thing that might just kind of tie it together because it's right on the border. Mm -hmm. It's still very friendly. It's not yanking up all that red to the surface or any kind of discoloration. It's the hair that I feel like it keeps adding quite a lot of strength in. But when I tie it back, can you see? It just looks fine, mm -hmm. but it's definitely on the cool end. Like you couldn't go cooler than this. Yeah. But it's a good darkness level, it's a good colourfulness level, can you see? It just reads kind of naturally in that, in that way in the face. And then, yeah. What do you think of it? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it for like a fuchsia lipstick, this, this, is, this is the way you can do it. Like, mm. there's, yeah, there's, there's no other kind of proper fuchsia way to do it. This would be your version of the fuchsia. Mm. Yeah, and this one is a Revlon one. So these, I mean, some luckily a lot of lipsticks can be cheap. So experimenting with them yeah. is is quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, it's called Sweet Tart Zero Nine Zero. Is that in boots usually? Is it? I think so. Yeah, and I think a lot of these are sort of standard ranges, like not, you know, like where they carry yeah. it for oh, a long time. Easily too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of these. I don't keep staining ones because I just find them a bit too too much. Okay, so let's try this one next. 
Oh, that was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is a bourgeois one, which is also a boots, like a high street brand. Where's the color name? Um, ooh, where's, oh, it's here on the lid. The color name is Peach on the Beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a chubby stick. Of course, you just apply it normally like this, but I'll put it on the brush for you. Thank you. Um, okay. And then while I do that, can you swatch it with the fan and let me know what you think? So nice, right? It's really pretty. Mm. Yeah, it really goes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's see what your face says about it. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding, <laughs> slash in the face. <laughs> okay, we might have to do a few layers because this is like a creamy chubby stick basically, so not a proper full coverage Thank lipstick. You. So I tried putting on quite a lot. Yeah, that's a good amount. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow, it's really nice. Quite fresh. Okay, let me get some drapes so we can see it um, in context. Oh, wow. So fresh, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's really obvious when it matches. Mm -hmm. And, and you can see the better it matches with the fan, mm. the nicer it comes up on your face. So this is why almost like the scoring system is really helpful because you can hold that in your mind thinking, okay, you know, this is like a proper 10 out of 10, you know, kind of experience. And that's what it will look like on the face. Like it's plenty pink, it's plenty colorful, it's plenty soft and, you know, like it's everything that your coloring needs. Yeah. Not overpowering and it allows your face and eyes, everything to glow over that and your lips kind of disappearing, right? Mm. That's lovely, right? I really like it. <laughs> Let me just get a pink as well because I think there's, there's I've got a pink drape just like that. Or similar anyway. Did I? I think I did, yeah. This one. <laughs> oh wow. Look at that. <laughs> so nice, right? Yeah, it's really nice. Mm. Look how like radiant the face is. Mm. Yeah. And all of that redness, everything just kind of settles. Of course, we're a bit hot here with the lights and everything, you know, but it doesn't pull up this sort of um, disconnectedness type of um, red, which yeah. is what we normally struggle with, isn't it? When, yeah, it just blends in. Yeah, so nice. And it, you're in the full glow, you know, like your radiance is what we're focusing on, you know. Nice. <laughs> Okay, let's try another one. So I think you should write the name of this one then. This, yeah, I like this one. Yeah, you should definitely pick this up. I, I think it was relatively cheap as well. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. Yeah, I can get a pencil right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, if you write it next to the colour, then you can probably just take the sheets. Which one is it? Uh, uh, peach on the Beach. Yeah, Peach on the Beach Bourgeois Colour Boost. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we done those two. Okay. Let's go even more orange. <laughs> I'm doing a system here as you can see going from the cooler to the middle to the warmer end, because this way we can kind of like also jumping mm. um through the, your range to see like what's going on. So why don't you swatch that so it's not quite as light as that? You know, yeah. it's a little bit more similar to that in terms of darkness and intensity not as intense and strong as that can you see mm. so this is kind of like the sort of milkier lighter less intense version of an orange this is basically like an orange for you okay let me get someone there for you this 
see the Revlon, Revlon brand. So again, just from the high street. Yeah, it's quite nicely. Yeah. So it's not overpowering like that one is. Yeah. It has a kind of gentler look. Shall we see it on your face? Thank you. <laughs> A lot more muted than the other one. Yeah, yeah. And it looked it with the fan, do you remember? Yeah. So it, it will correspond very similarly of how it comes up on you. So that should give you a good indication of like how the feeling. Yeah. And it's nice when you're not wearing like, you know, the brightest. And especially, I think people are often looking for a sort of like slightly understated kind of option for lips. Mm. So let's see. Let's see. were wearing some kind of a peach outfit <laughs> oh, that's really nice. you know just kind of like it's enough for it it's not like you need a super bold lip to go with something a bit more gentle and I'm just gonna take your hair back so we can really see just the colors yeah it's nice isn't it yeah. so this is your warmer and any warmer than this and you're gonna start like jumping into probably true spring mm. and that might start to bring out yellowness you know so you just kind of need to be careful that it doesn't look overly warm this is basically like the limit yeah yeah it looks plenty warm enough like but it still doesn't read orange on you it still looks like a nice pink, pink yeah. yeah yeah but this is your sort of your version of um i don't know how you would combine it i'm guessing like I quite like it with like maybe something a bit icy or something. Mm. How's that? You know, just kind of ge a gentle look, isn't it? A bit more elegant. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is, this is a bit too tropical, isn't it? <laughs> to <go there. laughs> you look like a, a fruit, you know, <laughs> leaves and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I reckon sometimes like reds often go nicely together. Like you can probably do an orange and a pink like successfully like mm. that what do you think yeah that's probably a nice combo yeah okay. whoops that is the bag <laughs> yeah i love this color it's mm. gorgeous yeah it goes really well yeah and here you can see it's like real color here we're seeing a little bit of your dress but mm. if i fold it like on your skin it shouldn't show mm. the dress through so it's actually quite a nice tone it just looks a bit gray where you've got your dress because yeah. you can't really we can't really ask you to take that off for this. <laughs> that would be ultimate, but it will be a little bit more <laughs> uh, intrusive. <laughs> yeah, but that's lovely, isn't it? Mm. And now that we're seeing the colours come together, can you see that the hair is actually a little too bright? You know, the, mm. the, the dye shade that you're using. It's probably a good temperature, but I feel like it's strong, like almost bright spring or something, mm. you know, like really intense looking. Yeah. Because every time I pull it back, suddenly that's really helping. Can you see? It it's just really, off. yeah, it really allows the face to kind of feel and breathe. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have a look at that after the makeup session. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So. These ones. Yeah. So we've done the very cool end, bang in the middle, the really warm end. So I probably now just have some kind of, do you want to write this down, the, the color? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> because then we just have a look at sort of like the in-between, the diff again, different ones. I like to, I like to... Ironically, I think I actually used to own this. Oh, did you? I really recognize the packaging. I don't think the color was the same though. I think I had like an orange version of it. All right. I think the color is um, written on the bottom for that one. Yeah, I don't think I had this. Which one is this? Oh, Rendezvous. Hmm. All these French words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of their naming is French. Yeah, is think... Revlon French? Possibly. I think it might be. Yeah, yeah. so that, that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see what I've got here. I'll put it on this end. 
<clears throat> that's gorgeous. So it's not as warm and as orange as the, e the edge that we just tried. Mm. And of course, it's not as sort of in the middle pink, like the peach on the beach from Bourgeois, which is normally like the standard, everyone can wear it from light spring kind of color, you know, because it's in the middle, you know. Um, this is sort of in between the two. Can you see? Yeah. But but not as light as this. So I would say it probably has the darkness level of the one that you just had, but just a little bit pinker. So this will be an interesting one to see. I reckon this is possibly more um, in your like in in this in where you're centered. Okay. Oh yeah, this suits them really well. Mm -hmm. Okay, here you go. Thank you. Mm, nice. Would you like some more in there or is this enough? Um, that's lovely, right? Yeah, it's really nice. Wow, I think that's the right amount, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm, wow. Back on there. Thank you. Yeah, it's oh, a wow. really nice colour. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's get some drapes on you. Actually, let's do these ones. It tastes really nice as well. I don't <laughs> it's like a really nice smell to it almost. Lips. Yeah, so this one is from Mary Kay. Have you heard of have you heard of Mary Kay? Okay, so it's it's like a cat it's like Avon, a catalogue brand. Mm. But they do have a web shop. So Avon, normally you just have to have a consultant who brings you the things. Yeah. With them, I'm pretty certain they have a web shop. I'm not sure. Mm. I mean, I, I got them like meeting with the consultant, but I was getting a lot of them for my, my consultations, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you, I'm pretty sure you can just... Also mm. online, they have a list of consultants, so you can just contact them and say, oh, hey, can I have one of this? You know, and they yeah. just post it to you. So it's like super... Oh, wow, look at that. It's a really nice shape. Yeah, you definitely need to go with that one. <laughs> okay, let me put the hair back. Wow. It's the perfect pink for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. Mm. Yeah, like bright enough without it looking overpowering, not, you know, like it just does it like in a really nice way. Mm. How do you feel about your face with all this niceties? Yeah, I really, this is my favourite one, I think. Mm. Mm. It's really nice. Yeah, let's write it down, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mary Kay. And I think the colour name is again on the bottom. Oh, okay, it's Tangerine Pop. Tangerine Pop, yes. It doesn't look very tangerine. <laughs> Very nice. And the bullet is, I think you would just press it from the top oh. in case you don't know. Like I was thinking, how do I open this? You know, it's like pressing it from the bottom. Like yeah. You just press on this glass part. Oh. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, what else? Okay, so I've got another Mary Kay one. This will be an interesting one to try on. I'm going to do it at the bottom here. is a little bit brighter and more colorful but this might be a bit more of a party color more on the pink end but not as pink as this so this is kind of in between these two can you see yeah yeah so I'm just jumping through the range with you <laughs> okay it's quite nice applying product with lip brush isn't it yeah it is yeah you just have better control isn't it okay these are a little bit sort of denser so it takes a bit more to get it off oh okay and i'll probably need to give it a, um, a sharpening okay i think i've got enough on but have a look we can always put some Thank more you. Nice, right? Yeah, it's nice. 
So that's obviously more pink than the one that you just tried on. Mm. Looks a lot more sort of ballet, right? Yeah. But in the light spring way. So more I'm like nervous. girly. Yeah. Kind of like a date night type color, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Shall I find you some date night colors? <laughs> Ooh, maybe. Like you could possibly wear something like nice and dark with it, like a bit more sort of mm. elegant, like that. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> wow. Very date night, right? That one's really nice. Mm. Wow. And this is the whole point of the color analysis, is that you get to see your face radiant. We don't have any other makeup on. We mm. literally just put a little bit of lipstick, nothing else. And we got a nice drape color, because when I remove the drape, just look what happens to your skin. Yeah. It's a little bit more patchy. The lipstick lifts it, but not enough to kind of counteract the reflections from the dress. But as soon as we put your colors on, shh. Yeah, it's so nice. so strange that I don't have makeup on, but it does kind of look like it looks I do. nice and even, yeah. And I feel like once we sort out your hair as well, so let me just flip backwards a bit so we see a tiny bit more of your roots just so you can see how, how much brighter that mm. your hair adds to it. I feel like it's just a little bit bright. But if I'm pulling it right back, look how much more it's lifting the face even. Can you yeah. see? Yeah, because your natural color is a bit softer. Can you see? Mm. So growing it out, I feel like will really help. That's so smooth. You might need, this is also a Mary Kay one, so maybe get both of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at your teeth as well, just so pearlesque, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy how everything starts shining. Mm-hmm. Really nice. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is the fun part at the end, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really enjoying the makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Okay. Very cute. Yeah, it's like the cor corally colours. Really mm -hmm. pretty. Like that one. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, the only colour that I've got left that I wanted to show you, it's the name of it is Sheer Natural, and the colour is super interesting, like unusual for springs. It's a nude. Ooh. Have a look. I really like that though. It's really nice. Can you see? But it's got that sort of clean look about it. Mm. So it's like a red that has been really paled, right? Mm. And some people like the sort of nude lip look. Some people don't like the nude lip look. But it's an interesting one to try on anyway. Yeah. And it's not so easy for springs to find a nude that doesn't look too grey. Because most of the nudes are very sort of autumny, sometimes summery, like the Movier ones. Mm. So hard to find spring ones. So I really like this one. And it's also a natural brand. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, it's fragrance free and all that. I can't really exactly remember the specifics, but I just thought, oh, it's a nice brand too. Yeah. So let's, um, if you swatch that with your fan, just to see, see how you would, see, how you would find a nude with, the, with your colors and see how it looks next to them. I'm going to put some on your brush. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Right? Yeah. Because it, it has the warmth without it being overpowering. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, dependent on how dark your skin is, like this might not be the right darkness of nude, you know, if it like makes your lips disappear too much. But it's an interesting one to try on, I feel like, because this kind of gives you the permission to not discard or discount looking at things like that, you know. But it's definitely been a trend, hasn't it, the nude lip? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for springs, it was like a no-go. <laughs> But when I saw this, I was like, this is this is not an autumn nude. I'm going to see what yeah. this is doing. I've never had a nude lipstick, so it might be like an instinctive thing to just be like, no, nah, that doesn't suit me. Yeah, it might be like that way, but it's a, such an interesting one to try. And so I normally just offer it just, just as an exploration. <laughs> I think it's a wedding trend, isn't it? The nude lip. Mm. 
Is Clement quite pink on me? Yeah, shall I have put a, a second layer? I might have to, yeah. yeah. I think my lips have gone very red as well from... Yeah, and this is a off. paler colour than... Yeah, mm-hmm. so we might have to do a few layers of this. Yeah, I can see a bit of it there. Is mm-hmm. What I can see is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm always hunting for, like, unusual for different seasons because, yeah, like, for example, rustier colours, you know, that are clear enough for spring, you know, like, Mm. because that one was a bit too strong for light spring, you know, but Mm. that's kind of like your version. Mm. So, yeah, I'm always sort of trying to look out for the the unexpected. Yeah. The nude spring. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's good. You can now see it. Oh, wow, I love it. It's kind of like a wedding lip, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a, a pinky nude. Yeah, well, on you it comes up like that. Oh. You know? <laughs> yeah, because you're, because you're warm enough. Like, on, on a cool tone person, it might come up brownish. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> How's that? I love it so much. Okay, let me get some drapes for you. To see it in color. context. <laughs> it's an interesting one. I'm a one bit in try. love with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been like that with every single lipstick. <laughs> every single lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Except maybe my own vampire one. <laughs> yeah. No, that one was... Even the orange one, the one that you brought, I think it was too much. Yeah. Okay, let's do red and white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's a nude lip, you know, so it's not colourful like your um, other colours. Oh, I love the yellow. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just... Kind of like a, a fresh light spring wedding colour. You know, little flowers, the dress. And of course, this is a little see-through. So we, we're seeing your greyish dress, which is not optimal. But if I fold part of it... Mm-hmm. Sorry magic this together like you can now see the color yeah and then let's pretend these are just flowers <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just gonna move your hair back again just so you can read because it's quite a delicate color so we don't want anything too bright in there what do you think I love it Nude lips it's so really nice. Without it looking grey. So that's mm. the whole point. Not not everyone will be into it because people don't like when the contrast reduces between mm. their lip and their skin tone. Your skin is relatively light, so I think it's still your lips still show up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that really kind of pale, delicate look. Yeah. Certainly if you're applying a like layering light colours, this I think this works. Yeah, it shows up really nicely against mm-hmm. the white. Yeah. And still no other makeup, just that. Like, yeah. It's weird to think I don't have foundation on. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but the right colours will even your skin tone enough that you don't have to worry about like so much time putting on makeup. It mm. might be literally as much as, as little as putting some good colours on, throwing a little bit of lipstick. Maybe if you've got any like breakouts or anything, like a bit of concealer here, here mm. and there, or even just like a translucent powder to kind of just like even a slightly bit the skin without any concealer or foundation, you know. And then out you go. Yeah. That's cute, isn't it? I really like it. <laughs> and now I'm going to let your hair down just so you can see how strongly it comes in. Can you see? Mm-hmm. It's overpowering everything in the picture. Yeah. So this is probably a good time to talk about the hair. Uh, I'm going to get some hair charts out. But because look, can you see the stern look kind of entered a little bit? Uh-huh. So I reckon that your hair colour looks like it's it's a nice warm shade, but I feel like you might have gone a little too bright with it, like a bit too dancing into bright spring space. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll use the colour fan for, to swatch some clothes, but my recommendation would be to try and grow out your natural hair colour if you can, or just balayage into it, you know, just like strips so it's not a full coverage because if you... if if they get it wrong you know even if you have a consultation and you explain to them exactly how you want it it may not still show up like hair hair chemistry is not as simple or straightforward you know like different hairs you know kind of react to the same dyes differently and people most people don't do 
patch tests, do they? You know, mm. you don't go to the hairdresser, they do a little strip check it. That's uncommon, you know? Yeah. So you can. I think you can ask them, like, can we do a little patch test, like, here, so you can then... Luckily, your hair is long enough. You can bring it forward, yeah. hang it in, and see if you like it. Like you can have one shade here, one shade there, and then just check, you know, before you actually get the whole thing coloured. So that's definitely possible. You just you just have to ask. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, lovely, right? Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Why don't you write the name of that one down as well? Okay. And then uh, yeah, and then I'm gonna get the hair swatches. color it's on the I think it is yeah I think I've got autumn sunset yeah 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 because yeah the sheer natural is just the finish isn't it oh uh, yeah. yeah and then autumn sunset is the um the color the color which yeah. is ironic because it's light spring <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it does have the sunsetty look isn't yeah it? it's more like a spring sunset if oh, you look take it, it off actually yeah if you're looking at it, it it looks more like a spring sunset doesn't it than an mm. autumn one an autumn one would be like more toasty and yeah heavier spicier yeah it's just incorrect naming <laughs> <laughs> okay so that was all the lipsticks so that's basically the makeup front. So you can you can see what they have in common on this bottom half, right? Yeah. Like that one there, the first one that you've got, plays together like it wants to work with the rest of the space. space. If I'm covering these up, you can just mm. see that it's part of the same set. Yeah. But they all have that sort of ice creamy look, right? You know, that yeah. sort of whitened down look. And if I'm holding the fan pages up and I'm just looking, you know, that those are the colours that want to walk directly on the fan. These ones here, they're mm. saying, oh no, that's way too loud, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So would you like to keep this sheet so you've got oh, all the yes, references? Please. Yeah. All right, I'll give you a second sheet as well so that they don't get, like, they don't colour each other. Here we go. So if we put another one on top, then you can fold it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah them sort of colouring each other. They're mostly dry now, but yeah, so you can now fold it to however you want to transport it. So that's all the makeup. Now, shall we have a look at the hair stuff? Yeah. So with hair, same as everything else that we've done, we're using the colour fan to swatch and see the relationship that's forming with hair colours. I've got a Matrix brand um, hair swatches or dye swatches kind of book it's quite old you know but it's just to kind of teach you the um teach you the methodology you know of how i use it so it's got different types of neutrals and colored undertones let's say and um what i do with the fan is exactly the same way i get a couple of pages ideally not very sort of yellowy or reddy colors so things like a blue and a green or a yeah well the yellows are problematic in such a way that they're too similar looking to the type of pigment in the hair so I normally like to kind of create a contrast you know like with colors that the hair isn't normally mm. you know if you had red hair then of course I would hide the reds as well but since you don't and none of these look so red you know a pink and a green or a pink and a blue some of these will be kind of useful so you take you take a pick with the colors that you like the look of the most I'm just going to put these on the table See what it would go with and um, then um, what I tend to do so let's look at the neutrals first which pages do you like uh, so we're here uh, I like the pink and green I okay think. cool so actually maybe this green mm -hmm. and then as you experiment and you figure out where you sit then you can use those and then I basically do exactly what we've done before just borrow your uh, hair consultants or hairdressers swatches for the brands that they use so this is just what I borrowed from my hairdresser, but every hairdresser will have a corresponding um, hair dye swatch book for the brands that they use. So you, 
when you go to a salon, you can just ask, hi, have you got one of those hair swatch books, you know, for the for the different dyes? And they might try to talk you out of looking at it because, because people like to give them ideas, I want my hair this color, and they know yeah. that that's a difficult thing to achieve. But just say, look, I'm just trying to get some ideas, yeah. you know, to discuss with you. Um, and then you use your color fan, you walk to the window because the lighting in most of these places will be much too warm. So you don't want to accidentally, you know, you know, kind of, harmonize to that basically because you might end up with true spring or bright spring hair you know (laughs) but then you pick out a couple of pages from your fan that's not too similar to the type of color that you're swatching and then you go down the whole palette so we've got neutral ashy violet ash warm neutral mocha double mocha on here Mm. it'll be different namings and different brands this is quite a basic set you know oftentimes they have a lot more you know Um, and I just go let's say we're looking for a blonde shade Mm. So I just go, is this a nice, effortless, elegant looking hair tone on this woman? And I woman is the the spring pages. And it's a little strong, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I move down. How about that? That's a little bit pale. Mm. Okay, how about the violet one? Nah. Okay, how about this one? Much too orange. Mm. How about that one? Better. Starting to get better. Let's see a darker shade. it's, it's sort of grey, isn't it? It's almost like this is good but a little bit cool. Yeah. How about this one? Oh yeah. That's quite nice. That's starting to nice. And even when it's darker, it's still nice-ish because it has a bit of warmth. Let's look at the mocha gold. That's quite nice too. That's so we're like comparing differences now. That's too much. Okay. So let's look at some of these copperier ones. Too strong. That's interesting, but still too strong. And then on here, I've got a few more. <laughs> it's a bit dark, and these will be too light. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna go back to the ones that we liked. Because basically, when you go to a salon, and if this is all the dyes that they have, mm-hmm. that's all they can work from. Yeah. So you're just looking to identify the the best undertone. And sometimes I go darker as well a little bit just so that I can see how far away I am from this color group. Mm. So like, you know, that is way too colorful. Yeah. That's already more comfortable, right? So like this is probably a comfortable range. That's also more comfortable. So we are in the mocha and double mocha kind of ranges. That's possibly a bit too colorful. So it will be... For you, from this brand, if that's what your hairdresser did, mm-hmm. it will be it will be you know mixing balayages from like these kind of ranges because everything else would be a little bit too colorful or cool toned. Mm-hmm. That's a bit too disconnected and heavy. Yeah. Much too gray. So yeah. So this is what you want to do. Maybe even visit several hairdressers mm-hmm. because they'll work with different brands. Yeah. So you might find a range where there's like a nice wide range with the warm tones and you might find sort of closer dyes, basically. Um, in shops like Boots, of course, they sell the, bo- the in-the-box kind of hair dyes. Yeah. So they often paint the color on the front of the box, but you can't swatch based on that. So they have namings, color namings. So you can go into a salon <laughs> and then just trying to like See if you can find those colors but based on the name sometimes i've seen on ebay like a l'oreal, l'oreal hair swatch book or something you know mm-hmm. so you can see if it contains the same names if you know as like the mix it yourself dyes you know if not then i think that's a hit and miss and the only way i would use out of the box like high street dyes is if i did some patch testing you know so like you can do one bit here another bit there you know just underneath places you know where like you when you tie it away it won't matter yeah. if it's incorrect you know don't like test the whole thing and like oh yeah i hate this <laughs> so yeah and then let's have a look at your hair so brassy right yeah just too strong so almost anything from here would be nicer yeah, put it further over here mm-hmm. look how brassy it is yeah super super strong it's even brighter than it's very similar to this the warm neutral Mm. but even brighter can you see it's not quite as smooth as that just even more vivacious Mm. so even if it was just softer a little bit like this it would be already kinder 
and then maybe mixing like a little bit of that and a little bit of these cooler ones like together you know sort of like a two-tone thing might kind of bring it to the right warmth and the mm. right kind of intensity but as it is right now it's a little bit strong mm. and so it, it reads quite loud on your yeah. face can you see yeah very bright yeah I don't know how you can tone it down I'm not like so good with you know yeah, what you can do with your hair maybe you can try a sort of silver shampoo or something like that that might kind of just fade it back a little bit without mm. taking it too cool but test it on a small area not yeah the whole just a bit of silver shampoo maybe yeah or there's one whole strand you know like like make, make sure that you pick a bit that's really bright you know yeah and then just like do a strand and then t and then wash it with it and then tie your hair then around it so you can identify it later you know yeah. like, you know that that was the strand that you washed so that you can just compare it to like the strands next to it and see yeah if it sort of lightened it you know because yeah in in, in behind here it's even stronger more brassy stuff can you see mm. look how much stronger that is than the top bit that's yeah. super brassy it's very brassy and really overpowering yeah yeah so that's the it's the same approach for hair so this brand will obviously be working better for cooler tone people because there's a lot more i feel like cooler options here mm -hmm. um and especially for light spring it's not going to be every brand that has good hide, ha hair dye options yeah so it might require a little bit of hunting around yeah but it's worth it because you'll eventually have a really nice hair shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you've seen the difference exactly. it makes. I mean, growing out your natural is, is the easiest thing to do yeah. because that's already going to look great, you know. Mm. But if you do want to do go down the blonde route, just yeah. do some more research. Yeah, something a bit less brassy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, less sort of like glowy because it will take all the attention mm. i mean for now what you can do is just keep your hair tied backwards you know yeah. pull it away from your face so then the color doesn't reflect so much and interfere with everything because if you have the hair down so let me just get a drape oh, sorry um, let's say you find yourself a nice pretty dress okay so here's our lovely dress i mean that's already going to help you know so that's really nice but let's say you want to hair, wear your hair down which is maybe how you like it you know Mm. But let's say you've got it down. Can you see it's kind of it's taking away and it's doing the severe look? Yeah. So we've got the color on. This mm. is how you look with the hair down. Yeah. Especially down here, you can see that it's overpowering the color. Mm. Now keep it your face, and I'm going to take all this hair away. Look how it clears up the face, right? Mm. And you can see from your brows that it's much softer, not so vivacious like this color, you know? And your hair shade looks like maybe a shade lighter than your brows. Can you see like the natural, there's a tiny little bit of regrowth, not very much, but I feel like that will just look so nice with everything else that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So maybe experiment with like certain hairstyles where you can keep, where you, where you can, even if you just wear it in a way where you just have a few bits down, you know, yeah. but sort of like tying it up or something, you know, that feels comfortable so you don't feel like, oh, my hair is not styled, you know, but allow the colors to work with you because it will just counteract all the job, all the work you're doing, basically. Yeah. Can you see that? <laughs> so yeah, that's something to figure out, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. But such a clear face as soon as we've, we've got it all together, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it looks so much better when it's tied yeah. back. And if I bring the brass in as back, da, 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 especially the bottom bits here. Yeah. That's just so intense, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, well that basically is about the hair. So, have you got any questions? <laughs> um, for the hair. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't think of any right now for the mm -hmm. hair. Yeah. Yeah. I think we covered it. Basically, you just need to experiment, use ha use your swatch book. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and try my best to dim it mm -hmm. down a bit. Exactly. Home. Probably silver shampoo. Yeah, try that first because it might be enough to kind of control what's going on now until you allow it to grow down a little bit and, and when the next time you feel like it needs a dye hopefully by then you would have had time to research your best option you know the best you know you might think oh l'oreal has loads of like nice looking matches you know but not some other brand mm. i can't think of color dye <laughs> brands because i don't really do that you know so yeah. i just 
so, sorry if I can't give you examples. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm yeah. willing to try. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> thank right. you. You're welcome. So thank you for agreeing to do a little Q and A on camera as well. Um, I had like loads of questions uh, throughout the session, but um, I was trying to keep like a mental note of them uh, so that everyone could like kind of uh, hear them be answered on camera as well. Sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the main ones I had was um, how can anyone watching kind of incorporate this into their lives at home? Like how, if you can't have a professional like color uh, consultation like this, do you have any tips or like recommendations? how someone can try out to try this out themselves yeah sure definitely um so you can just experiment with things that you've got in your wardrobe already so most of us have different types of colors in our uh, wardrobes i mean oftentimes people wear black and gray and white and you know sort of neutrals the best ones to experiment with are definitely the colorful tones but most of us ha have a few of these things, right? Like you had a few different shades of blue and it doesn't matter if they have patterns. It's a little bit easier if they don't have patterns, like plain colors. But even if all you have is black, as you remember, each black yeah. was still creating a different effect. So even if all you have is black, you can still kind of put a couple of them on top of each other, peel the top one off, put it back on, put it off, on again. And as you're doing that, you're just staring at your face in the mirror ideally set up by a window where you've got natural light um, and then you're just looking for the you're looking for the optical illusions that the different colors are reflecting onto your face so even if you don't know if this is a cool tone black and the one underneath it is warm or this is darker this is lighter or this is gray or this is more colorful because it's black it's too hard to kind of reconcile how it, how it might harmonize yeah you can just create a pile of like okay i compared like 10 blacks to each other and here's the order of how good they are and how bad they are you know you, you can put them in order because you can still make the observations um and then once you do that with different types of colors like say you get all your reds out from a cupboard and by red i mean pink purple peach you know these are like red categories and then you can get out your blues which are teals blues um like the royal blues, navies, all this kind of stuff. So same color families, even purple leaf blues, as long as it's not fully purple, you can just get them out um, and then compare them to each other and then trying to find the ones that illuminate your face the most without casting redness, yellowness, grayness, um, too much shine or sort of texture like the muddiness that we've been seeing with the autumn colors. So you're just comparing them even without trying to label them you know because even if i didn't tell you whether this one we, we're comparing cool or warm we were if we were just comparing like two colors to each other we could still see the difference like do you remember the time when i couldn't remember which blue was which you know mm -hmm. i just co collected some springs or something like that and they're like oh i forgot which is the bright spring and which is the light spring or something like that yeah it was almost helpful because we we couldn't like pre um preempt what we're going to see we literally had to just trust our observation so yeah 100 percent, you can do that at home and once you created yourself some piles like this was my best blue or these pinks looked really good and here's the black that looked good or here's the whites that look good and then here's the stuff that looked bad or worse you know or the really bad stuff like you can still create little piles within the stuff you've got yeah and then you can start analyzing backwards like okay so my better pile whether it's perfect yet or not it doesn't matter but within your wardrobe already you can probably start creating hierarchy just like how we did with the clothes that you brought we started seeing differences and creating some kind of hierarchy like the scoring system you know because that helps you sort of navigate your scale of you know like your your um dimensions color dimensions um, and yeah, I, I reckon you can do that without having to know. And then if you have a pile and it looks, oh wow, all my best colors are really soft and gray and muted, then you can kind of explore maybe the soft seasons or if it's the really clear ones or really, really vivid and dark ones, you know, you might start to get clues, but I wouldn't try and pre-guess it because you've seen what happened when I tried to yeah. pre-guess it between the three springs, you know, the springs were saying, mm -mm, you got it wrong, <laughs> stop guessing, keep testing, you know, so yeah. Testing is the best way and you don't need to have labels for you to like just start gathering data and learn something about your colouring. 
Oh, thank you. That's really interesting, and I'm sure it's like really helpful for everyone watching. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Um, so another one I had been thinking of is like, how do you train your eye to see all the the colors so quickly? Mm-hmm. Because like, I mean. I did find it a lot clearer when we were looking at it, like seeing the redness on my face and things like that, but it did take a while for my brain to almost catch up Mm. to see these differences. Yeah, it's quite a lot to take in in one session. And of course, my sessions are really long. They normally take a good half a day. Um, So it's like a mini crash course, you know, so it's a lot of computation for your brain. But uh, yes, it's, you know, the neural pathways are just muscles, you know, so, or they are like muscles, you know, that the more you practice, the more they uh, understand the kind of exercise they need to do. Um, and then the faster you get at it, basically. But even just during the four hours or five hours we had together, you picked it up, like you got better and better and better as we went. So the session is built in this way, you know, that you, you get good at it by the end, because, you know, towards the end when we need to do the swatching, is when it's really important but uh, yeah you can also do exercises like um, I definitely did some kind of um, color like eye test color test type of exercises the one that I really like and recommend to a lot of people is called uh, Farnsworth Mansell 100 test Um, and it's basically you've got 100 colors um, and you order them um, sort of like uh, they are equ- equally spaced out, so the differences are sort of equal di- visual distance, and you they all scrambled up like mixed up, and you have to put them in order of how they transition from like purple to red, from red to green, from green to blue, from blue to you know yellow or something. So it's like a full spectrum on on a medium gray intensity, so it's like sort of their fixed intensity, but it's a It's a very useful test because when you do it at first, it gives you a score. It tells you if like there are certain colors that in between you different, you can differentiate a little bit worsely, you know. Uh, And then, yeah, I think if you do it a little bit more, you know, it shows you where you've got it wrong. Yeah. Uh, And then you can kind of, you know, look, look at those differences a little bit harder and see like, oh, oh, okay, you know, those two are the other way around. And then you know, you, you can you can probably spot it that, oh, okay, unless you're colorblind, in which case there might be a little bit of gaps that's difficult to overcome. But generally speaking, it's just a few practices and then you get better. And swatching, I feel like the more you swatch, the easier it gets. Yeah. yeah. yeah Thank so. you, that's really interesting. Yeah, okay. hopefully I can train myself to get a bit better. Yeah, um, I think the more you use your swatches, the better you will get. Yeah. 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 Right, so I'm trying to think of another one I had. Um, does, uh, like, say, for instance, tanning mm-hmm. or maybe, like, ageing, like, affect your colour palette at all? Um, yes. Um, tanning is a, um, like, a facult- facultative, I think that's what they call it, sort of um, change to your skin tone which means it's temporary, you know, oh, okay. it just like you tan, but then it fades back out. Mm. Um, and it does actually change your darkness level because the more melanin you have in your skin, the darker your skin appears. Um, that normally, in my experience, just um, influences your contrast levels because of course, you know, when you tan, your skin becomes darker. Yeah. So that changes the contrast, you know, between say your brows and your face facial skin you know your skin and your eye color your skin and your lip color you know the contrast levels sort of shift a little bit and you might want to adjust how you wear colors like on your lips for instance and also when, like near your face you might choose to wear slightly lighter or darker colors from from your palette normally like you don't sort of suddenly become a lot warmer just because you have more melanin because you, you're still producing the same type of melanin in the same type of ratio. Mm. So it's not really going to kind of, uh, unless there's some kind of medical problem, it's not really going to kind of um, uh, change how warm or cool you are in terms of your undertone. But it will change your darkness level, which in turn, I think, influences how, how you kind of manage your contrast levels. 
So in my case, I can speak from, from my experience, I tend to wear lighter colors from my palettes when I get a bit darker because the contrast level decreases in my face a little bit more, you know, like my lips become a little bit um, you know, more blended in with my skin tone because my skin is fairly medium already. So I just wear sort of slightly lighter, they're still very colorful colors, but slightly lighter options from my palette than what I would wear normally when my skin is a little bit lighter. But for different people, it might be different. Like if yeah. they already have a really dark skin or I don't know, it, it it's probably a little bit personal, but I would say that you definitely uh, notice a difference and then you would adapt kind of like colors maybe you enjoy like your pink shades more when you're really pale and your warmer orangey shades more when you're darker but that could be personal to you it yeah. won't be necessarily true for every single light spring um coloring or or yeah and not even a general rule so <laughs> that's really interesting yeah. so does age affect it as well or yes yeah, so age is similar um in a way that as we age, we, we, we produce less collagen in the skin. So that means that it's less kind of plump. Um, and as the sort of collagen starts going away from our skin, the, the, the skin becomes a little bit thinner. So it, it starts to show a little bit more blood vessels. So we start to become a little bit more pink. Maybe we see more under eye circles, more veins, things like that. At least in the areas where the collagen is disappearing the fastest. So of course that puts a little bit more color on your face. So yeah, you, that will, you know, maybe you start losing less blusher or, you know, maybe, yeah. So maybe you're a little bit more careful with, you know, exactly what colors you put near your face, you know, because you want to focus on the ones that really smooth out your skin and, you know, prevent under eye circle appearances and things like that. Yeah. So I would say that's to do with collagen. So yeah, if you kind of manage your collagen you yeah. know, production, make sure that you keep doing it, then your skin becomes thicker and then it's, uh, then it, yeah, then it's less fluctuating in terms of the overall uh, mm. skin evenness. Yeah. And medication and medical conditions can actually affect your skin tone as well. Mm. I'm just going to throw it in there because um, occasionally I have clients who have sort of melanin mm, type of, melanin related um, uh, conditions like medical conditions I know smoking can kind of gray your skin and teeth okay. and things like that so these things and then some medication can kind of really change the appearance of your skin color so yeah. these things can actually influence and sometimes make the analysis harder but it does influence your appearance a little bit so normally it, all it means is it restricts your palette even more so it just reduces your range within your palette you know mm -hmm. because you just have to be a little bit more precise and, and neat and kind of careful mm -hmm. uh, at least in my experience but yeah I don't I don't think I I haven't studied like specifically this stuff so yeah oh, it's really interesting though mm -hmm. like I like how there's so much science behind all of it mm -hmm. um yeah I'm trying to think what my other one was oh yeah, so what is your colour? What's your palette? Ooh, <laughs> good question. Um, it's guessable, but it may not be your first instinct, so I'll let you have a guess. I know it's not guessable in terms yeah. of, like, I don't recommend guessing seasons, but just for fun. <laughs> what would you guess? Hmm. Light spring? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, I can actually, like... <laughs> yeah, you can have a look. I feel like there'd be bolder colours, though. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, hold it and see it in my context. See if you yeah. think it's enough or not. No, I think they'd have to be like strong, like more like stark colors, more. like the ones that weren't matching you, probably like more winter. Mm -hmm. but Good. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good direction. <laughs> winter, autumn, and yeah, winter. But I'm not sure, like, within winter, which direction it would mm. be. Yeah. Yeah, it is, my colouring is winter and I do look a little bit stereotypical winter because I've got dark hair, fairly good medium dark skin, dark eyes, you know, so that's that's definitely sort of like up into the sort of starker colouring. But and most people would guess um, that I'm a dark winter because I've got so many dark features, but I'm actually not. Oh, okay. Let me show you. Um, here we go. This will be interesting. So these are bright winter colours and these are the type of colours that I wear. Oopsie, I'm making a lot of noise. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but this I top can. that I'm wearing actually is not a winter colour, but I like to wear it behind clients. But you probably haven't even seen me with my colours, have you? <laughs> oh, wow, well, yeah. 
I can see it all popping instantly. What do you think? Yeah, I love this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. really goes. And I normally wear fuchsias. I test with this, but I normally wear uh, the fuchsia, the cooler range in my palette. Oh, that one's lovely too. Mm -hmm. Like a dress like that or something. Yeah, I can really, <laughs> really tell, like, compared to when I had this one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like and this even one. this one, this one that I have, I think is a summer colouring, but I like to have this behind clients when I'm testing and analysing, so I basically sacrifice my appearance, but it's very important for me that I control the environment because that can also influence, um, you know, how easy the consultation goes. You know, if I put mm -hmm. a really stark colour, because winter colouring is very stark, so if I'm wearing a grey that is from winter, you know, behind you it might have been so stark that it might have been too distracting, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could have, maybe it would have been too hard to reduce all of that um, redness, you know, if I'm always projecting it from behind. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's <laughs> nice to see your colours as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that leads me very well into my next question, which is, if you look at people, can you kind of guess their season quite well, having done this for like many years? Mm, good question. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> As you saw earlier, even when we were so close to your, you know, like to your result, when we reduced all of the options down to the three springs, I always, I wanted to discard the one that you ended up being, you know, I was like, oh, we're going to lose light spring, you know, it's going to be so easy to lose, let's compare it to things, and it just didn't, it just said, no, I don't think so, you know, mm -hmm. and we could of course see, it, and luckily we are here to kind of listen to the drapes, you know, they are the ones telling us what we need to see and showing us what we need to see. So it, it's good that we've been able to sort of override any um, preconceived ideas that we might have collected along the process because as we are processing, of course, the mind wants to jump ahead and guess things, you know, so that's why we were thinking, oh, yeah, we, you know, we'll compare the three springs, we're going to lose, lose light spring and then we will do this, you know. That's not how it went, did it, you know. Yeah. So, um, no, I don't know. I can't normally guess. It's because um, it's because people people aren't so straightforward, like... First of all, you know, like, let's say you walk into the room, your, your hair is dyed, you know, that's affecting your appearance. Then you're wearing a dress that's affecting your appearance. Mm -hmm. So immediately I'm looking at you and I can see that there is some, some, some kind of stuff going on because the dress and the hair don't even go together. I don't know which one is working better for you, you know, yeah. and I don't even know how close they are, you know, to your colouring. Mm -hmm. So the guessing would be just so much computation, you know, for, for my mind. It would be too difficult to sort, I think. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't guess it. <laughs> Not well enough anyway. Occasionally I make little like mental bets, you know, like, uh, you know, halfway through the, the, you know, like when we were like looking at all of the cool tone seasons, comparing them to warm and, you know, I could tell that, oh yeah, she's going to be warm tone because every time we're comparing warm and cool, it's always the warm ones that are doing better. Not every intensity level was sort of equally wow yeah. you know but we could we could see a consistency so like i was not super like if i had to bet money after like seeing two lots of cool to warm comparisons i probably would have put a little bit of more money on the warm you know yeah so i can kind of make little guesses but especially near the end i find that very difficult because we are now so close and the differences are so little the yeah. only way to just get it right is to really look yeah um so that's probably the place where we shouldn't be guessing and I tried and it didn't work so you know <laughs> it's just a reminder that like don't rush it don't guess it you know like test 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 you know keep checking comparing you know like, it's like a game isn't it it's just a little bit of exploration fun and then the colors will tell us what they want to say so yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do find it easier to, to see if something is off. I, I won't be able to necessarily then extrapolate that all the way to, oh, yeah, because their season is this. Mm. But I have had clients walk in, you know, wearing a, some kind of jewellery. Uh, like I had one soft summer client and she was wearing, I don't know, like maybe a bright spring kind of really strong gold necklace. And I could just see that it's set so separate from their neck, you know. Mm. So I could tell that, okay, she's definitely not going to be super warm because that one is sitting on top or if she's going to be some kind of warm, not going to be bright because that one is too bright for her, you know. Yeah. So I could kind of see something happening, you know, mm. because of the things she already had on. But if she didn't have that, I wouldn't have been able to see it, you know. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. so like the clothes and like the jewellery is like a signal. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like for example... 
uh, your hair and your dress weren't necessarily in the same type of intensity, mm. same type of category. So, you know, one of them's got to be better than the other, you know, yeah. or, or maybe they're both off or something, you know, but, you know, reconciling, like, which one is working better for you and which one isn't. My guess was that your hair was too bright, like, that yeah. was quite a lot in my face. Uh, and I think we swatched this dress to soft autumn and your hair was something really vivid. So, yeah, yeah um, it just kind of set, set better, I thought, you know, um, it just felt a little bit more comfortable, a little, little grey, but yeah, it just felt a bit more like your intensity. But they were both off, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think finally, um, I can tell like you're really passionate about all mm. of this and like I've been really enjoying like also taking in like your energy for how passionate you are oh, about it and thank you. making me even more interested. Um, but like how did you, at the, at the start of like your colour consultation like journey, how did you get interested in it? Oh, wow, this is a, this is a good story. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm going to try and sort of summarize it because it is a longish story. But basically, my background is in set design for film sets, music videos, this kind of stuff. Um, and when I was working in that industry, um, I was often dealing with characters as well, you know, because of course that wasn't necessarily my job to dress the characters or deal with their makeup, you know, there were specific departments for that, like the costume department, the makeup department. But as production designer, as sort of like designer for the whole thing, I need to bear in mind what each of these visual departments were doing, including the lighting people, you know, because they were lighting my set, you know, mm -hmm. so I wanted to see, I wanted to know what everyone's plans are so that I know that it's going to come together nicely. And uh, yeah, it was one funny story where I had, um, I, I went along to a... Um, like a, a trying on like dresses for one of the main characters for a, for a I think it was a short film and the costumier brought like loads of clothing options along you know and I had this idea in my mind that this guy at the beginning he's gonna look a bit scruffy and a bit like frail and lost and sort of you know given up you know kind of because the film was showing his kind of growth journey you know like sort of like his hero's journey of becoming like wow everyone's everyone's like best friend favorite guy kind of thing so I had this idea that we blossom him through the clothing for everything you know through yeah. the whole whole uh, visual of the of the sets um, but the clothes that I had in mind for him from like for the beginning uh, you know all the sort of pale colors and more drabby gray down washed out colors yeah. looked very good on him you know <laughs> so he was some kind of a soft season I can't remember if maybe soft summer or soft autumn possibly soft summer um, and so I, you know, the costumier had a few of these soft summer looking clothes and me thinking, oh, wow, they're going to look really drab. He'll look frail, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, but he looked great. You know, he was like glowing, radiant. And we were trying it on and I was like, you're supposed to look bad. What's going on? <laughs> and then he was like, oh, yeah, these clothes always look good on me. And I was like, oh. Okay, well, I need to find colors that look bad on you. <laughs> and then I, and I explained to him the story that I was going to put you in these drab colors at the beginning and slowly we're going to increase the contrast and I'm going to make you dashing in these beautiful bright colors for the end where you're like glowing. He said, oh no, those colors look horrible. Lo and behold, I put it on them and just like with you, uh. those wintry colors, of course, I was basing the whole color idea on myself you know yeah. because for me that's the order of process you know the really drab colors look worse and the really vivacious dark stark colors look best yeah um so i just you know took it from my own exp self experience and what tried to apply to him well that didn't work but luckily i learned loads on on that um on that sort of session and i thought right i think i need to figure out how people's coloring works because they're messing with my plan yeah. <laughs> i can't plan like this <laughs> So uh, yeah, and that's what got me sort of researching on people's coloring, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then I stumbled up on color analysis and then I did various trainings and yeah, and here I am. I never actually stopped. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, it's lovely to hear the journey of like how mm. you got here and like how like you can always just like encounter it one day and it can have such a big impact on mm -hmm. your life yeah and I enjoy it so much I, I would have never guessed that this is what I'm going to be it's not a sort of thing that you you know in high school and you think oh yeah I'm going to become a colour consultant you know you just don't, it's not a thing that you think all right <laughs> it's so niche <laughs> yeah yeah but sometimes life just puts you on your path isn't it so yeah, yeah I just yeah 
I just kind of went, I just went with the flow. Yeah, and I can tell you're like really passionate and oh, happy yeah. when you're yeah. doing it. Fairly obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I will be too. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> we need more obsession on this. Yeah, it's... hopefully people watching have taken inspiration as well and maybe if this inspires them they might go get their own session or as um, follow some of your tips to try at home. And yeah, yeah, it's very fascinating and I think it's honouring the self to be mm-hmm. able to kind of just put yourself in a better light, right? Like all yeah. these colours that are creating these optical illusions that are not us, you know, it is an illusion on your face, the redness, the starkness, all that, that's not even you, right? So that they sit on top of us, creating a confusing, uh, untrue impression, um, that's not even us, you know? And yeah. imagine if you're like the receiving end, like, you know, I just met you and talking with you, I don't know that you're wearing the wrong colour, that's why you look a bit stern, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I just think, oh yeah, she was a bit stiff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that would be my impression of you, you know? Yeah. Had you had showed up in one of those wintry colours that we swatched, you know, from your pile. Yeah. And maybe you do come across to some people when you're wearing those colours, you know, without knowing without and without them knowing, them knowing. yeah. Mm. So spending a little bit of time, like getting to know, you know, your vibration, you know, how intense you can go you know how light and dark you can go with colors how colorful and gray you can go with colors and how cool and warm you can go with colors i just think it's really worth it you know even if it's just for fun a little bit like you don't have to go full obsession like us you know (laughs) but a little like little steps made a big difference even at the beginning when we were just comparing cool and warm we could just say it doesn't matter what was the intensity we could still see oh yeah that's worse that's better you know so tiny little bit of adjustments already going to make an improvement yeah uh, I, I just hope that everyone will give it a little bit of a go. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you too. Thank you for answering all my questions. It was so nice having you here. Thank yeah, you. it was lovely to meet you as well. I hope so. you keep me posted on your progress. I will. I'm going to have this in my wardrobe and I'm going to check all the rest of my clothes. Yeah, so. if you find any more light spring colours, great. And especially if you find good findings, like new stuff. Uh, new clothes and you, yeah, when you feel really shoes. good like a dress that's just perfect you know and then you put it on with a lipstick that's just perfect you know and then or maybe if you find like a nice silver shampoo or something that mm. that, that just really helps the hair where you really see like wow I'm applying it and it's coming together and I'm feeling it I can just really be myself yeah mm-hmm. I love seeing that because people just feel so relaxed in their skin once once it's just done isn't it yeah more confident as well yeah. 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 well good luck with everything thank you